<coughs> no streams next week? Yep, no streams next week. No. No streams next week. It's uh, one of the kids' birthdays next week, so um, I was going to take one of the days off anyway, and I feel like I could use the other two off as well, so we're taking the whole week off. All three days. It's loud. Uh, hi, J -J Joe. It's not not like I came to watch you or a anything, Baka. Oh, that's the real weep speak right there. You were really teasing the Zero Escape streams that stream now? I would never do that. I don't even know if we're gonna play the, uh, the Zero Escape streams. I don't know if we're gonna play that. Bernie Sanders is streaming. Is he playing the School Elysium? What happened in Ayaya? America seems to be um, not doing too great lately. I wonder if that's true or not, or if it's overblown. I try to make that my default reaction, or anything like that. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if this is sensationalized. I'm tired, I'm sorry, I'm tired today. I'm very, very tired. But do you think you think Mick Jagger skips a show just because he's tired? No. So why would I skip a stream? Who? I don't know. I, I, I hear he's some singer. Are you feeling good? I'm always feeling good. Always. You're an okay boomer. Boomer, are you okay? Boomer, are you okay? Are you okay, boomer? Can we go talk to Everart at 11? I'm gonna guess no.
I don't think Zero Escape are gonna be some fun streams, man. And they're gonna be bad streams. Again, no way. They're not going to be anywhere close to as good as Dangarampa. Stream seems choppy. Does it seem choppy for anybody else? Not choppy, nope, seems fine. It was choppy in the crane area. Well, that might just be the game. Kinda, yeah. Uh, well, we're still in 1440p. That might be why. I'm gonna have to restart it, actually. Eh, it was fine yesterday. He's gone. What are your options for watching the stream? Fourteen forty, seven twenty, seven twenty four, eighty three sixty, one set one sixty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if it's choppy, I suggest um, going down to seven twenty p and seeing if that fixes it. But it doesn't exactly run smooth for me in some areas either, so it's the game. But you said some of the things with Dangarampa before playing it. I was actually pretty intrigued by Dangarampa before we played it. I, I, I was put off by the anime side of it. Um, but the, the concept of Dangarampa was immediately appealing to me. I thought it was going to be different though. I, th I thought, because the way they explained it, they said to me, Hey, it's, it's, it's an anime game about a bunch of high schoolers that are in high school. And then um, they're forced to kill each other. And no one, no one said anything about them being like trapped in the high school, or there was only a few of them in the high school. You know, it, it made it sound like it was like this, this high school TV show where you know they still get to go home at the end of the day, and, and then when they show up, it's just like alternate reality time, and they kill someone, and then it's like, okay, we solved the mystery. You know, and so that part sounded kind of bad. Okay, so I don't know if we should sleep, go see Everett, or if we just just go to the end. Seems like going this late is a bad idea. Um, yeah, let's go sleep in the Whirling for the last time. No, what if we need the money? And then we get to check all the the traps again in the morning, right, to see if there's if if that um if that progressed. Uh, that seems new. There was no like, poor locusts this time. Maybe I should check them right now. It 
It's choppy for some people now. Mm. Well, I'm not losing any frames, and the connection's fine. So... Is it still choppy at 720? If it's still choppy at 720, then I'll restart. But it was fine yesterday. Maybe it's because, uh... Because it's nighttime and it's raining? I don't know. Maybe it's on Twitch's end? Seems like a cop-out just to, just to blame Twitch. I'm fine here, it's 1442. That's the, that's the thing, if, if... If it's not everyone that's having the problem, then there's nothing I can do about it. If everyone's having the problem, then yeah, it's on me or it's on Twitch. But if it's only some people, then it's like, okay, there's nothing I can do. Trap is still dead. Still can't see a phasma. All right, let's go check the other trap. But I shouldn't stream at 1440p anyway. I just forgot to set it down. What if some people are blind? They're blind to the chop. Just dead and dying locusts and the slow swaying of surrounding reeds. Oh, this thing works? Oh, it's over there. Let's go rest in our shack, then we'll see Everard. I don't know if we can check the traps again. I think I want to, because it said that any any cryptozoology bullshit can't can't be finished, so I know that might be a waste of time, but we'll do that and then we'll go and um, conclude with the Ruby, however long that's gonna take. Apparently it takes a while. Well, let's go sleep. Good night, Kim. I love you. I refreshed the page and it's better. Okay, so if you're having problems, maybe refresh and maybe turn it down to 720p. That's still a lot of P's. A lot of fan art for um for Disco Elysium. My folder's full up.
There we go. I saved it to our own folder. Sorry about that. Damn. Looking, looking swag, as the Zoomers say. Look, look at the swagginess. Super swag. With his gun and sword. Ready to take down, uh, take down Ruby. I'm drying behind. Yep, drying behind. And is that a hidden a yaya in there too? Well, thank you very much, Q2. Um, unless something goes wrong, this is this is the last Disco Elysium stream we're going to be powering through today. So, um, I, I would just like to say a, a a formal a formal streamer thank you to Q2 for keeping this up for um, every single stream. So, uh, congrats. Um, Q2, I don't know how you did it, and thank you so much. These have been very, very entertaining. Uh, I think this one might be my favorite. I think it might be. Um, if I'm awake enough by the end of this, then we'll we'll put them all on the screen, and we'll we'll decide which one uh, is was our favorite. But I think that it might be this one. Thank you so much. These are fantastic. You are very talented. And thank you for sharing your talent with us. It's it's the last one that we're that we're replacing. Do 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 do. There we go. All right, so before we get into it, um, does anyone want me to restart the stream in 720p and see if that fixes it for some of you? Like, how many of you are getting the choppiness? I am, I am, seems fine now. Walk around a bit so we can turn. Well, we're inside here. Well, it shouldn't really matter, actually. It's only in the big area with the rain, even at 720p. I refresh that seems smooth to me. Might be to, might be to do with the bit right. Well, the problem is, is that if if it's not everyone, then putting it down shouldn't help. Choppy, but it's real bother since this. But it's if it's real bother since this has text space, you're okay. I, I understand what you mean. Okay, well, let's sleep. Let's just keep going. Maybe there's going to be some big action at the end. Go to sleep. Okay, it's the same thing that we saw last time. It's easier this time, drifting off. Your head has found a comfortable indent in the pillow. Your legs and your torso feel like lead weights sinking to the bottom of the sea. Until they're suddenly light. Sing along in silent communion. Blackness, blackness, blackness. The ultimate disco. The ruins of your life behind you. Still smoldering. Ashes rise. But you're not looking. Lizard Blaine Chan. For now, a little while, you can. Sleep without words or images. Oh, God. When the pictograms like? and the hieroglyphs of the world return. They seem silent somehow. The alarm rings quietly too. You're ready.
When was the last time we showered? Hey Kim, how's it going? We're gonna go check the traps again, okay? This is a dead end. I don't know if this is gonna do anything. But I'd like to try. Can you give a summary, short summary of the game so far? Uh, someone got shot in the head and we're trying to figure out who. The end. Is it possible to investigate the last um, potential shooting spot? Uh, if it is, I don't know how to get there. What do you think? Who done it? I don't think this is the kind of game that you're supposed to try to figure that out. Maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't feel that way to me. How's it going, Lily? Okay. Thank you for the tea. You're welcome. I need another drink. Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? Hmm, I thought maybe if we spoke there, we could use our boat to get to the island. But no. Alright, no more Phasmin hunt, that's it. Where you done? Alright, so let's go talk to Everart and then we will um We'll go to Ruby. Do 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 I like this music. If I don't watch anime but never shower, am I still a weave? I don't know, you might be a hippie. Do you do a lot of pot? Way worse, that's a tough one actually. Would you rather be a weeb or, or a hippie?
So, the ship has sailed. Did you see it? I know you did. Tell me, what did it look like as it grew smaller and smaller when that mainsail dropped behind the horizon? Does it mean a little light in his did eyes? Did it look like a germ? Did it look like a piece of bacteria? His tone is totally different now. The jolly man of the people is gone and so is the smile. You get a sinking feeling. Oh my god, you've been played. Yes, it sort of did look like that, a bacteria growing smaller and smaller. No, it looked like a boat sailing away from the coast. No need to be overly dramatic. I don't understand. What do you mean? You wanted me to deliver that message to her. Oh, I don't understand what you mean. Don't worry, Harry. He does. He nods toward the, towards the lieutenant. At least I think he does. You wanted us to relay all this information to her. That this is a takeover. That I want a war. He nods forcefully. God, I hope you also told her about the drug trade. They absolutely hate getting their hands dirty with that. You can kill a million people, but if you do something the police doesn't like, well, then you're out of the yacht club. A vein on his forehead is pulsating. Goodbye, you inhuman fuck. Now I know why you've been so forthcoming. Let's shoot him. Now I know you've been so forthcoming. So this was your plan all along for me to release her information to her. How do you know she left? You used me. That's wild how you got me to do all that stuff. Now I know now I know why you've been so forthcoming. No no Harry. What we have here what we have is real. We're working man. This here, he taps his chest and points to you, is real. So it's your plan all along. Harry, he exhales slowly. I can't see into the future. We're all playing by ear on this planet. I had no idea she'd react so strongly. But did you want me to relay the info to her? I did. I knew the negotiations would go better with police officers telling her horror stories from inside the harbor. It's scarier this way. Turns out it was an, it was a magnificent strategy. I never thought it'd be, it'd be it so f thought it so fundamentally fuck her up. Okay, there we go. How'd you know she left? Harry, I bugged her cabin. I bugged her whole boat. I had cameras surveying her boat. Hell, I even wanted to bug that thermal cup, but my boys advised against it. They must have done it while Joyce was busy questioning the locals. So you've been listening to our conversations all the time? Not me personally. He stretches his arms like a discus thrower. I had guys recording and processing this information for me. The Hardy Boys? Hell no, he exclaims. They'd fuck it up. They can't do anything right. I mean my real boys. My special task force boys. Where are those boys? Or though these boys? They sure as hell aren't hanging out in the open with beers in their hands for the cops to question, he bursts out laughing. They're pros, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's wild how you got me to do all that stuff. Harry, you made a conscious decision to relay that information to her. You could have kept it to yourself. You used my intellectual curiosity against me, but she told me a beautiful story about the discovery of the Insulinde. But she said she's insane, like me. Well, he already knows that. He bugged it. Use my intellectual curiosity against me. Against you, he's taken aback. Oh, Harry, I think I used it for you. Hmm, it was interesting. No arguing against that. Beautiful story. Of course she did. Rich people have the best stories about all the interesting things they've done and seen, all the beautiful places they've been to. It's just sentimentalism. She can afford to be sentimental, and she can afford to lose as well. But she said she's insane like me. She's not insane. What did she tell you? His expression betrays extreme skepticism. She told me she's over-radiated from pale transit. No, she's not. He scoffs. She's a sentimental alcoholic. They all are. Never take a drop and you'll be eight laps ahead of those upper-class winos just like old Mr. Clare here. Try it. You'll be a real super detective. Or a supra detective. I've actually walked the path of sobriety for a while now. I can see that, Harry. He studies your face. Alcohol has left its marks, but you're doing better than when I first saw you. Rich man is shitting himself. The working class, sober. So what's going to happen now? What was going? What was always going to happen? We take the harbor and she fucks off to Ozone, uncorks a bottle of wine, calls her partners, and says they need to distance themselves from this nasty business before the big shit spinner splashes everyone. Only difference is the Union doesn't have to lose 2,000 men to machine gun fire. You could have just told me I would have been on board. Damn, Everett. I was hoping I'd somehow get to fuck you over in the end, not the other way around. But I swore fealty to her. She was my beautiful lady. <laughs> I have a bad taste in my mouth. You better make sure this ends up saving lives. Look, I just want to do police work. Number four. That it will, Harry. That it will. A sincere smile crosses his face. As to the bad taste, please. You're, you're not a sommelier. You're a cop. 
you knew something, something big, and you wanted to see what happens when you tell someone. So you told her. Anyone who's ever been close to power will tell you inside information is the sweetest thing in the world. It's better than money. It's better than pussy. Money only makes you special for some salesman. Pussy only makes you special for yourself. Information makes you special for all mankind. It's the ticket to history. Hmm. My thoughts exactly. No, 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 no. It does make sense when you word it like that. Hmm. Right on, Harry. What you did was participate in history. When history calls, you have to pick up. You had no choice. None of us ever do. A hard disco cop like you, I knew you weren't one to resist temptation. You know what, detective? I'm going to leave this out of my report, and I suggest you leave it out of yours, too. Damn. Kim, Kim breaking the rules. <laughs> he chuckles. Just look at the three of us. The three careless... Boy, Dieros. Good times, good times. Okay, so what now? So, what the fuck now? Spread your arms. Now let... Now we let bygones be bygones because there's work to do for me and for you. I suppose there was a reason you came here, so let's have it. What can I help my best friend and comrade with today? Look, my gun. Show it to him. Please shoot him. My, my, he lets out an appreciative whistle. She's quite the looker, Harry. I can't imagine how pleased I am the two of you are reunited. Tell me, was it difficult to convince the big man pauses to tap on his chin, the pigs, to give it up? You could say that. She tried to kill me. Not at all. The important thing is I got my gun back. Not at all. I knew you could handle it. I knew my special police. I know my special policeman. Anyway, I'm glad you're all right and armed again, Harry. Now, what can ever Claire do for you? You can die. You can die. You are nitpicky and biased. Bye bye, and then shoot him. Come on, come on. No one will know. We have two bullets. We can fuck up a shot even. Interesting thing that in this game, because you don't have to go talk to Joyce, that if you pick up on that, then you can just decide, like if you pick up where you have a feeling that Everett wants you to do that, that you can decide not to. Whereas most games would just make you go back and talk to her to progress the, the story. That's interesting, I like that. And just like we didn't have to go back and talk to Everett either, we could have just left it at that. Cool. Walking around with my gun out and my sword. Okay, so I think we're we're done, right? We didn't find the figurines, which sucks. I'm I'm sad. Uh, we can get some booze and drink it, but we're we were sober cop. Uh, race Enigma makes us racist, so we're not doing that. Um, we're looking for the firearm. I'm guessing we're going to find it with, with Ruby, but we'll see. The turn where the shot came from, I'm guessing that we go to the island at some point. And look for Ruby on the coast, so this is what we're doing. No, Union Cryptozoology business might end when you do. Alright, cool. Alright, so let's go. Let's go for it. <sighs> I wonder if we did almost every side quest. Seems like no. Seems like there's a lot of thoughts that we missed. But maybe a lot of these are from, um, uh, skill checks. So, so maybe not.
Okay, so, um... We have a lot of skill points, so let's leave two just in case we have a chance to upgrade some of them for, for a check somewhere. But I think I want to level up my logic. One, subsidization one, volition one. Empathy's so low, we're not probably not going to get much out of it. Inland Empire? Sure, why not? Physique just seems like a lost cause. Reaction, hand eye. And, uh, authority. And shivers. There we go. That's pretty good, right? We leveled up a bunch of stuff. Save the rest. Are we even going to have a chance to use them? You can't, you can't level up your skills in, in conversations anymore. So I'm just worried that we're going to have a bunch of, um, skill points that we never use. Here we go, we did this. There's a secret if you want before Ruby. Is it a good secret? And will I be a Redditor for, for finding out from you guys? Instead of finding out myself? Reddit core, do it yourself. Ignore chat, just play please. Level up Empire to six and put on tie. Go see Idiot Doom Spiral. Um, I can't remember who Idiot Doom Spiral is. Is he? Is he one of the drunks? Let's just go. Let's just go. If this playthrough has taught me anything, it's that you're already very much ready. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on Reddit. I'm not gonna lie. I wish I didn't. It's a really good content aggregator. But I hate the website. Well, that's not true. I'm for the website, but I'm against the users. There you go. Okay, so what have we got? Empathy is minus, minus one. I like that hat. New or old design though? Um, I think I prefer the old design, but it just, it, I think, wait. Yeah, it's the old design I think I'm still on. Interfacing, half light. Thought we had better gloves than this. Electrochemistry. We need better pants. Minus one, two reaction speed. Oh, there we go. We can just get a reaction speed up on that. All right, it's pretty good. Let's go with this. Okay, and before we get into the end here, let me say thank you to some subs. Top Lolly, I'm not doing it today, man. I'm sorry, I'm too tired. I'm too out of it today. I'm not doing it. I'm gonna take a rain check. I'm not doing it. I 
Oh, I didn't get rid of the bits. I need to get rid of the get rid of the odd bits reward. There are requests pending for this reward. Please mark them as complete or reject and refund them to continue. You can also, wow, I can just refund all these mono coins that you guys did? Wow, I didn't know I could do that. Damn, that's gonna be a good troll to do um, for a Yaya refund at some point. <sighs> Thank you, Zephyrox, for the five month resub. Thank you very much. Thank you, Unpossible Car, for the six month resub with Yo Dude Sup. Not much, how about you, Unpossible Car? Trat has resubscribed for 27 months. Thank you very much, Trat. 936868149270F has used 500 bits to say, did someone say zero escape? We'll play zero escape at some point. I'm not sure if it's gonna be this year though, because we have a lot of um we have a lot of games that we're gonna play this year, and some of them are probably gonna take a month. But if we have time, we'll play it this year. We'll try it. We shall see. I'll play it for sure. Thank you for the bits. Thank you, Stuart, for the new sub. Welcome to Prime Time. Welcome to Pout Patrol slash the Pickle Jar. Thank you, Stuart. Discord has resubscribed for 12 months. Welcome to the One Year Club Discord. Hey, Joe, hard to believe it's been a year already. Even crazier that some people have been subbed for two. Uh, though the person you should really thank is Naughty Walrus for gifting me the sub in the first place. Well, thank you, Naughty Walrus, for getting Discord uh, hooked on the sub train. Naughty Walrus still around? Thank you, Naughty Walrus. And thank you, Discord. Tater Toga, that's a cool name, has resubscribed for two months. Thank you very much, Tater Toga. Micrologist has resubscribed for 21 months. Thank you, Micrologist. Top Lolly has used some bits. I've grown up with days, games, and systems from five years old to now. Yeah, I have had 27 years playing Mario games, which is why it's such a wet down that Supu Mario Odyssey has been so disappointing. Ooh. -ooh. I have my what? Is that supposed to be <laughs> Dowies? That's supposed to be theory for for why that is, but we've get to damn waiter for now even though the length of this video should already be enough this is chew spoiler warming we've going through through the whole game with this one so jump carefully if you are planning on playing it to self anime intro there you go you got you got angry tired lolly speak and that's it it's banned i'm not doing it again i'm not i mean it i mean it we got through the first page it's banned i said you would you wouldn't do more than five you did more than five or whatever you won top lolly you won that's it it's banned i'm not doing it again i mean it if if you give more bits with it it's a waste of bits i mean it it's banned no more this is one joke we're not going to run into the ground for once. That's it. You win, Top Lolly. You win. You win. <sighs> Fuck Top Lolly, says Dark Fly. No, no, Top Lolly wins. Jissy Joshi has resubscribed for 26 months. Now, not watching these live as I'm playing through myself. Hope you're enjoying it, though, Smiley Face. I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little sad it's over. I'm also relieved because it's been such a long game, but we'll see how it goes at the end. I hope it ends well. If it ends well, it'll be one of my favorites of last year. Even if it doesn't end well, it probably, um, it, it probably still will be because it's been such a unique experience. Thank you, Falzer25, for the 26-month resub. I'm really busy lately, so I can't watch the streams. Hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, we're doing all right. No, no, no big complaints, you know? 
I'm lying, obviously, but uh, thank you, Falzer25. Uh, thank you, Ariel Stannis, for the 26 month resub. Hey, Joe, just dropping by to say hi. Back to work for me. Uh, see you on the VOD. Well, I hope work goes well for you, Ariel Stannis, and I hope you enjoy the VOD. Hope, hope work isn't too bad. Reese Polar used some bits to say fuck Top Lolly, as is tradition. Top Lolly's used some bits to say Chad is going to jail for wanting to fuck Top Lolly, cop. As is new tradition. K Roniverse has resubscribed for 16 months. Just checking in to sub. Hope the game's been good. It's been really good. Um, we, we messed around a little too much on this playthrough. Um, but I recommend it if you um, if you can skip ahead um, through some of it if it bothers you. I think it's still worth worth seeing. Or playing yourself. Like that, That's um, preferable, right? Shabab Raweeb has used 147 bits to say, Fuck Ayaya, enable top lolly. <laughs> uh, and the last on my list is Jode Lodi for three months with a pickle. Three months in the pickle pile. Thank you, Jode Lodi. Or Jod Lodi. Top lolly, you're doing two next stream. No, no, it's banned. It's banned. That's it. It's banned. I mean it. I mean it. It's banned. Dalmec has resubscribed for two months. Hey, Joe Brony, you won top lolly. Hey, Joe Brony, my brain is a traitor, so I've been haunted by the words Uwu Tang Clan. <laughs> and now we are all two. Thank you, Dalmec. Thank you for sharing with the class. Thank you. Thank you, iRulery, for the 3 month resub with the message fuck top lolly. Poor top lolly. Can't even enjoy his, uh, his victory. Thank you, iRulery. And Isolated Spaceman says, Joseph showing off his Brooklyn accent. Right? That's how I feel it comes across, too. Yeah. I'm so horrible at accents. All right, let's go. Here we go. It's time. Oh, wow. It just happens. Ruby the Instigator. Suddenly, your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the static, you hear a woman's voice. What? It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once, but her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. She says, says the shadowy figure by the machine. Does she have one of those like military, like, like noise riot machines? Riot control machines? What the hell is this? All right, Ruby Soho, let's shoot her. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance, but here we are. The voice coming through the whirlwind of pain is not malicious. She doesn't want to hurt you, but she has to. Not the biggest fan of her voice acting. Doesn't wish to hurt you, not according to your ear canals. Wait, no, not even your ear canals. This is going directly into your neural pathways. It's going up your ass, cover your ears. Oh, we're gonna die. No, buddy, that's not going to help. You can't shield yourself from this. It's an entirely new type of experience, way worse than all the previous ones. It's too hardcore. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. Yell through the static. You're under arrest. What's happening to me? Are you gonna kill me? Help, Kim. Kim, help. My brain's on fire. Yell through the static. You're under arrest. Really now? Check this out. She turns the dial in her hand. All right, well, GG. You overwhelm with a, with a new surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploding in your brain. What's what's happening to me? Are you gonna kill me too? Help, Kim, help, my brain's on fire. Mm. The lieutenant clutches his head as his eyes roll back into his skull. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing, it's the ULAN frequency. Blasted from the pale emitter, Fat Angus mentioned. I saw your equations. It's the ULAN frequency. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? Well, I expected as much. Though I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. Her voice doesn't match what's going on here. H Zeus one th okay, we don't need to read it. You should probably check on Kim. It doesn't sound like he's doing too well. Look back at Kim. Right behind you. Right officer. behind you, officer! Eyes closed, the lieutenant's doubled over. He's still alive and breathing. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. 
With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pail, literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. Um, All alone out there in the pale. People lose their minds in just a few years. You, you're, just, you're just talking like this now? So, what we are experiencing is a, a concentration of radio waves. He gestures towards something with great effort. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. Literally. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you might be hearing some numbers, but you might also hear or think you're hearing local radio chatter. Okay, so this is pretty bad. I think this might be the only part of the game so far that I, I would say is bad. Like this, this feels awkward as hell and it's just out of nowhere and she's just like talking normally while we're apparently dying and being like screeched to death. Can we shoot her? She's been holed up here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking and you might get an opportunity to break loose. How did you get your hands on this thing? Will I stay like this forever? Have you experienced the compressor yourself? This is all great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Please turn it off. I can't take it anymore. Have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. How did you get your hands on this thing? I built it myself. She nods toward her torture device. That's illegal. I'm getting this patented. <laughs> Do it beyond that, aren't we? <laughs> Kim. Kim, what the hell, Kim? Oh, yeah. Way beyond. She studies her death rate and the law officials trapped in it. Will I study this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like walking out of a very confusing dream. Walking. His three four two four five five seven nine seven tier callus his palun ara oli ometi ni pelis ometi ni pelis mutudruk his his one one zero three seven his this is all great. But let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not cops, and of herself merely as prey. Please, could you turn it down so I can ask you something, move on. If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. If you're looking for a deal on mattresses, shush, 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 speed for oh, Rosaline, oh, Rosaline. Damn this! Lieutenant clutches his head, grimacing. God damn it! She regards you and Kim with sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. She steps reluctantly out of the shadows. The pain lessens. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, not like the murder weapon. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Just keep her talking, you'll get through this. There's only three meters between you and the machine. If you keep her distracted for long enough, maybe. Be careful when you make your move. That'll be it for questions. Bide your time. Pain threshold. Just destroy the machine. Okay, I just wanna I just wanna destroy the machine. How did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while by hiding bullets under floorboards. So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. She didn't she didn't write you out, by the way, Isabel, the washerwoman. So nice, she smiles a little smile. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. As opposed to the other knives she's finding there now, hardy for one. Preparing for the worst? You're desperate, aren't you? You don't need that, preparing for the worst. I was before I caught you in the pale latitude compressor. I'm fine now. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Did you shoot Lily? 
No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching, though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. So she says she didn't do it, and she doesn't trust you. Is it you specifically, or the citizens' militia she, that she distrusts? Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, she hesitates. He wouldn't have broken first. You're right. Classia was the first to share her suspicions. When I threatened to arrest her, Classia broke. She told me everything. Let's go with number one. Oh, she smiled sadly. I knew the kitten had claws, but not like this. It didn't help her. She was a fugitive. We took her in. We arrested her. Consider yourself avenged. Say nothing. Say nothing. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Your first guess wasn't entirely off. Your own boys told us you were on the coast. Size told me it took some convincing. Ah, fuck. Took some convincing my ass, and those guys liked me. Don't bring up ass in front of the- I know it. If this is what happens to people whom people like. This is what happens to people who people like. A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck do I do the rest of you get by? <clears throat> Wait, wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I opened them up. Ah, oh, that's good. I did, didn't I? And now you've come for me. She scoffs, but fuck them all the same. I do it by asking questions, and I have some for you. Honestly, I don't know how I do it. I just stumbled in here. Can you please explain this shit to me? <laughs> like what? She adjusts her grip on her grip on her gun. I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Would you say that Lily was a likable person? Do you have an alibi for when Lily was shot? You have a gun. You liked Clashia a lot. Do you like to hang out on rooftops? You're running. Drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. Okay, let's take a step back. Would you say Lily was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hard mercenaries aren't particularly likable, likable types. You don't feel sympathy for Mercs? It's hard work. <clears throat> There's nothing more personal that you had against him. Perhaps his way with women. Did you feel protected of the Union? Number one. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. You think I was envious of his conquests? Look, pussy's not a problem for me and definitely not a reason to off someone. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure, and I didn't like Wild Pines sending in those foreign hirelings, me and a fuck ton of other people around here. I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but I don't think she's perjuring herself. Thank you, Drama. I have other questions. I'm listening. Do you have an alibi for when Ollie was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. There were ten minutes they couldn't account for. They did say you left to take a really long leak. Fifteen minutes. There was like half an hour missing. You went out. I think it was ten minutes, wasn't it? You mean the length of a toilet break? That wouldn't have been enough time. You went to the toilet for ten minutes? Hold on. No one takes a fifteen minute leak. It was ten minutes. Our investigation went from the pain has shown that fifteen minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Look, fuck you, man. I might have also stopped by the bar. She speaketh truth. Our investigation went from the pain has shown that fifteen minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Wow, now I'm curious. Please explain. Play pinball much? <laughs> no, not since I was fourteen and hang out at the only diner in in Dardane. Haven't been into a low into low risk, no reward game since moving into the city. Why? There's some mysterious pinball machines in some in some pretty mysterious rooms in the whirling. Yeah, and probably some ghosts from the time of the Sue's reign. I'm not really interested in supernatural mysteries. Wait, wins from the pain. What kinds of mysteries interest you then? <laughs> not murder mysteries either, if that's what you're thinking. She looks at you in the eye impassively, making it clear that she's not planning to comment on the matter further. Okay, never mind mysteries. There's a secret way from the whirling bar to the roof. Don't know it, but also, she frowns, studying your face, evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all, all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned. The pain stops him from finishing the sentence. That didn't go super well. You gotta lay something better on her. You have a gun. And where did you get it? I see it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? I can't quite tell. What kind of gun is it? Do you collect guns? Maybe old rifles. <laughs> sure. No, they're not practical break too often. Where did you get it? The gun store. What gun store? Trigger Happy Jacks. Really? Trigger. What do you think? That I'm going to squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, I'm not that kind of gal. See, it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. A breech loader? No. This is such a wipeout. Yeah, I can't quite tell. What kind of gun is it? A Notchway 80 front loader, two barrel, not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. This isn't it. There's other evidence I want to talk to you about. Yeah, evidence. You like Clashia a lot. I consider her a good friend. Yeah. Are you a girl liker? What the hell, man? She laughs. Yeah, why not? I've gotten worse. Her hand slipped from the dial of the compressor for a moment, almost turning it down. Then she put her hand back. Not yet, not yet. Is peeping one of your hobbies? 
Wow, pissing pinball now peeping. I'm just not following your ins insinuations, detective. There's a hole in the wall. You can see into Clash's room. I wouldn't blame you if you use if you've. Clash said you may have used the peephole in the wall to spy on her. It's just the hole in Clash's wall is pretty suspicious. Look, I'm not aware of any hole in Clash's wall, and if I had been, I would have told her to get it sealed. That's what friends do. So you haven't been watching Clash through a hole in the wall. Nope. Look, she has an effect on people, or had before you sent her off in your moral intern meat grinder. It's impossible not to look at her when she walks into the room and very difficult to look away, but travel enough and you realize, for the same reason that she's er that she's everyone's type as an object of desire, she's not irreplaceable. Right on. Why aren't we healing our, our, our physical part? God damn it. We want to be more than just friends. Oh, so that's where you were going with this. She said you, you wanted to run away with her. That's a very sentiment, sentimental way of putting it. We both had past we didn't want to catch up with us, and we enjoyed listening to music together. Why not go on a road trip? The lieutenant watches her expectantly, occasionally t shaking from the pain. Okay, fine. She rolls her eyes. I was into her. Classio was into me, too. For a time, I know it. We even fooled around once, and yeah, after I thought maybe we could... And after that, I thought maybe we could make a go of it. Classio only said they maybe kiss. Someone is lying here. Wait, Classio said you only kissed. Hold on, Classio only likes truly buff men. Then what happened? Wait, Classio said you only kissed. She rolls her eyes again. If that's what she wants on the record, so be it. <clears throat> I'm not about to go into details for you to jerk off to later. Seriously, just move on. But I do want details actually cringe from the head-splitting torment. Then what happened? She rejected me with some wishy-washy bullshit about how she was confused because she felt so close to me and valued my friendship so much and how guilty she felt for leading me on. I knew that wasn't the whole story, but thought, fine, I'll take it and move on. Classy said you got very angry when she, when she started seeing Lely threatened her. Yeah, one time when we'd both been drinking, I said some heated things about how dangerous her patterns with men were. I was a little worried she'd blow it out of proportion in her head. All the drugs she was doing could make you feel like you're living in a DeLorean tragedy. And despite everything, you helped her by staging the lynching? Yeah, the girl seemed terrified. The Merc was beyond caring what happened to his immortal coil. It was a no-brainer. There are other things I... Uh, there are other things I ask about. Go ahead, it's your body. Her... And mine too, he thinks. But keep on. This must be done. Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Classy's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? What's so great about our antenna? <laughs> it's very. This seems like a waste of time. It's very powerful. I used to tune it to the R, into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew you knew to be prepared for your arrival. Eight five one zero two three nine three three. Come in. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? The views. It's been. Hey, did you kill her? No. Are you sure? Yes. Ooh, do you like to be on the roof? Yeah, I guess so. Did you shoot her? No. Do you have a gun? Yeah. Is it the gun that killed her? No. <laughs> oh, darn. She answered no. The view's pretty bomb, too, but you might say the antenna was the main attraction there. Yeah, along with Clash, yeah. So, you're sure you didn't shoot the Merc from the roof? Move on. Yes, I'm sure. Anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. You're running drugs to the Union. I've been through your lorry. She shakes her head slowly, so hard to go, Tommy fucked me over too, never trust a musician. It's almost like the game doesn't want you to click every single dialogue option. The game told me to get her talking, so she, so she stops her machine. The game specifically told me through a skill check to, to, to get her talking and see what comes of it. She shakes her head slowly, so hard to go, Tommy fucked me over too, never trust a musician. Maybe twist the, the knife just in case, make her more desperate. No, he didn't. I found my own way in. A lie. Yeah, I made him talk. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I made him talk. Yeah, that figures. She shrugs. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? She's more upset than she lets on. You're a criminal. I can't trust anything you say. You had a financial incentive to kill the Merc. She scoffs. That's your prerogative. You had a financial incentive to kill the Merc. That isn't really true, though. Most of the time, the game doesn't want you to click everything. It's only occasionally allows for things that, that you shouldn't click. Yeah, I, I understood that very early on in the game. But right here, like, you know, like, it made it pretty clear. Hey, get her talking. See what, see what will happen before you hit the button to, to break her machine. Man, it's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock, my previous employer for the union. This is the only time that I feel like exhausting uh, most of the options has, has felt kind of bad, too. 
Probably the lieutenant is unable to articulate his question. She deliberately avoided naming the mob she worked for. You might be able to find, out, to find this out later. She turns the knob down just a millimeter, then continues. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. The, this gun, she glances at it, has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. But you're threatening us with it. I wish I could use my gun right now. <laughs> you're threatening us with it. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. She responds, holding your gaze. Okay, let's take a step back, conclude. Yeah, where? Alright. Okay, so we can we can get to we can get this down. More more shit questions before doing anything. See? Who killed the mark if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him, and there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes, her tired voice, she's been staying up late listening on it, and on the conversations crisscrossing in Martinez. Wish we had more healing juice. Maybe we can I don't I doubt we can go buy some right now either. Police radio, you've been following the case? Who hasn't? She shrugs, you know. I can still see him there, in Clash's room, lying on the side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. What happened Sunday night? Tell me your version. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. She's refusing to adopt the demeanor of a cornered animal, a leader with no one to lead. She still wants to retain some control of the situation. It's okay, we just want to... <laughs> struggles to finish the sentence. Alright, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers. Like always, then Classic comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Wait, did she also seem high to you? Oh yeah, super. Supra. But I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. Classic said... Classia said you knew something was wrong immediately. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be the first for her. Wouldn't be a first for her, sorry. But no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah, you made it look like he'd been hanged. Classia said you, you seemed to have a plan prepared when you got there. Classia found it weird you came up with a plan so quick, quickly. Number one. What? No, faking and lynching was her idea. Her idea? Yeah, in cold blood, it really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. You can see it. Her lips, though still white, don't seem to tremble as much anymore. She moves with focus and deliberation. Alright, who, who was right to arrest her now, chat? Who's laughing now? Who's laughing now? Damn. Damn. All you compromised 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 she asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could win wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity then she dressed him while i went to get the hardy boys like i mean it's possible that she's lying too um but like if we if we like let Clasia stay i'm pretty sure she would have fucked off by now Plus, you knew exactly what she was doing. You can't remain calm under pressure otherwise. She lied to you about that, too. Showerhead, resourceful. That's bad that she'd be so calm. I don't believe you. Showerhead, resourceful. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed Lully herself? As I keep telling you, cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, the lieutenant forces himself to finish the sentence. Weren't you worried this lynching might lead to... War, she purses her lips. The thought crossed my mind, but the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way, although the way things are going, she doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide, she doesn't want the guilt. She shrugs, eh, fuck it, I'm not responsible for, the, for these people after what they did to me. If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town, I wasn't going to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. So this is what she was scared to tell Titus, this cop, this cop. What do you mean, la puta madre agent? She looks at you qu quizzically. Quizzically. Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> you feel something in your chest and a natural, sort of, a natural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm, your jaw. So I'm guessing this is bad. Very, very bad. This is the end. Try to remain conscious. The attempt of the tenant of the RCM passed away yesterday. His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to those who do. That's great. All right, awesome. 
That's kind of shit. That's kind of shit. You got more healing? Yeah, I'm gonna go get some, yeah. Is it? Yeah, it feels pretty shit to me, yeah. This whole interaction is pretty bad so far. I'm, I'm really not a fan. Like you said in your videos, is one bad part of the game ruin the whole experience? Of course not, no. Does Pain Threshold give us, um... Give us more life? Didn't we have something that gave us more life? Does the, doesn't the armor give us more life? We're wearing the armor. Um, what what is it that gives us more life? Do we have an endurance thing, or is it more um, or is it more morale that we had? I thought for sure this gave us something. Oh, uh, it's morale, okay. Because of volition? Raincoat for health. Ooh, you're right. You can get you can get a health from a raincoat. Nice. Oh, I buy drugs. Um, is this No, it's over here, isn't it? Plus three health. All right. Well, that's um that's overkill because we don't even have health. We don't even have three health. Uh, so let's just buy a bunch of them. Oh, these are so cheap. All right. Okay, that's not so bad. I forgot how cheap these are. I should have stocked up a while ago. But still, um, kind of shit. Maybe Kim should have said, hey, you know, maybe you should go get some Nozafed or something. But, you know, it's not a big problem. The big issue about the interaction is that um, that it's just it's just really, really weird and boring. And it's weird in a bad way. Like, the game is weird overall. But, like, like oh, here we are. We're just going to have a conversation while this sonic blaster is, is killing us. It's pretty bad. Buy the raincoat. Why buy the raincoat when I can buy 15 extra lives? Do, 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 do. Save scum. We have to save scum. We have to. Yeah, we're meta gaming right now. But once you've died in the game, it's impossible not to metagame. Would you prefer if she just held Kim and you at gunpoint? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen the end of the scene yet. Maybe it'll make sense. It just seems too strange. 
It's not necessarily what she does, it's that we stand there and have a big, long, protracted conversation at the same time, that's the problem. And she's the one that starts it. Like, she has this completely at her mercy, and then she's like, time to, time to expedition, ex exposition dump, you know? Did you not play this before? Nope, this is my first time playing it. I've never beat this game before. Citizen Mono, oh man, with you getting your Mono coin, Citizen Mono, has resubscribed for three months. Hey Joe, happy to contribute for another month. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Citizen Mono. Glad you're enjoying it all. All coins are Mono coins, this is Citizen Mono. Thank you so much. Feels strange. All right, okay. Get out the gun. Get out the gun. All right, here we go. Uh, thank you, Zelante, for the 18 month resub as well. Thank you, Zelante. Damn. Saying thank you within a couple seconds of the sub coming in. What a good streamer. Thank you, Zelante. All right, so I'm gonna skip through this as fast as I can. Make the I same know choices. you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Um, Don't move too ears. much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Uh, you're under arrest. Really now? Check this out. Kim, how my brain's on fire. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. Okay. You and your saw my equations. You've been sniffing through a pale latitude. Signals are so precise. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. Your hands I built it. That's I built illegal. It. Oh yeah. That's illegal. Way beyond. Yeah, I stuck my head in there before you know. Forever. Once I shut. Yeah, let's not talk about that. If you've got something really. Damn. God damn it. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. So, in case you just got here, we've already seen this conversation. We just died and we have to go get some health pots to get through it. Um, it doesn't also. It also doesn't help that her voice acting is. Um, Probably the worst in the game, maybe. I'm always hesitant to say something like that because I'm sure the voice actress was was doing her best, and maybe it was bad bad direction, or she didn't have context of the lines. Like I, I don't know. But Helen puts on the floorboards. She didn't write she, she didn't write you out. Prepare for the worst. Did you shoot Lily? Say nothing. Titus told me. Human can opener. To ask me questions. Was he likable? Feel sorry for Marks. Pressing with the union. How do the questions? Do you have an alibi? There were 10 minutes they couldn't account for. No one takes a 50 minute leak. Our investigation. Play pinball much. Um, this secret mysterious pinball thing. Kind of mysteries interest you then? Uh, the line. Okay, I think we're like almost there. You have a gun. Where'd you get it? The gun store, really? Front loader. Do you have another gun? Are you a girl liker? Damn, this is so much faster when you don't have to read everything. Damn. What a, what a shit game. Not much content when you don't read everything. Hmm. I should have thought of that. Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Heal up? Yeah, why not? Wow, this is a long conversation. Okay. 
Okay, so I think this was the last one we did, right? If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. All right. Yes, everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. All right, there we go. Through sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something to himself. Fucking hell, and why me? You hear through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. It felt like a vein exploded. Who's everyone? How do you know this bullshit? You're trying to wince grotesquely. Throw me off. No one says that. Who's everyone? How do you know this? Everyone in Jamrock. The cops, the criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name too. Tell me, what's my name? If you know <clears throat> that about me, you must know my name. Fuck yeah, I'm a La Puta Madre agent. You better let me go. La Puta Madre. I've heard of La Puta Madre. He's dangerous, right? Harry Dubois, she replies quickly. One corrupt motherfucker with a disco pants and the funny tie. Agent to La Puta, Puta Madre. So she knows your name. That doesn't mean you're on the take. Criminals make up boogeyman stories uh, about cops all the time. All of this... All of this just means that you're effective. Criminals know you and are scared of you. La Puta Madre, I've heard of La Puta Madre. Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. No, that was a real question. I'm sorry, I know I'm supposed to know all about this, but I lost my memory recently. Sorry, cop, yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. I'm sure La Puta Madre himself will explain it to you. Explain it all to you soon enough. <clears throat> Why did you do this? Why did you do this? Why did you do to the... Sorry, what? It's not why. Oh my god. Sorry. What did you do to this Madre anyway? You've been to my Lori. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? She pauses, and now I have Harry can opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. I thought we had an agreement, she thinks. This was not supposed to happen. She's not going to change her mind that easily. She still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. When I came into town, was there anyone with me? Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them anyway? What? I don't know what happened to them. Sure you do. I bet they're just outside waiting. She looks into the tunnel behind you. I guess I'll take my chances. Who was in this squad? Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. She nods toward the lieutenant. You had two guys and a lady. The guys looked pretty buff. Lady, lady wasn't bad either. What else can you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him, and the woman, the woman was the only one in uniform, all were carrying. She narrows her hand, narrows her eyes, that sound about right. No idea who these people are, literally. Satellite officer Vikamer looks out of the window grimly, then puts his coffee down and turns to patrol officer Mignot. We can either tacky a room here in the whirling or go home for today. Let's go home, Jean. Nothing's going to happen today, she responds quietly. Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Heidelstam. He can, he can give us a ride. I think I know them. They're Martinez. Yeah, that's right. I was just testing you. Um, they're right outside with guns. Not disarming any bills. If she thinks the death squad's outside with guns, like, what? Yeah, I know. I think I know them. They're Martinez. Friction lock sense. Don't leave me here, please, Celise. Fantastic. I've got to get on the road. Then you can go find your friends, unless you have anything pressing to ask me. Do you know about the bunker next door? What bunker? The communist hideout back there. Just a place some comrades stop. Some comrades stop through a revolutionary bunker. Just a bunker. Have you been there? Just the communist hideout back there. Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I got since I set up camp. But I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to her voice trails off into white noise in your head. It feels like an aneurysm approaching. God damn. Should have bought even more. Keep calm, breathe in. After the pain recedes, it's a little clearer. All right, time to fail a 92% check. Okay, is she just she's just letting us do it. She's just letting us do it. She uh, did. Did we go into stealth mode? This is really bad. I'm sorry, I really like this game. I would even go as far as to say that I love this game, but this is really bad. You did it, the compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but you're under arrest. See them fireworks, Kim? Glance back, Wish, whisper over your shoulder. You okay, Kim? Lieutenant Hunch is recovering. All good officer, be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Ah, fuck it. She puts the barrel of the, barrel of the gun into her mouth. What are you doing? Rhetoric challenging, convince her to put the gun down. 
she tr she's truly desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What options? You know, maybe I can still talk her out of it. Please put your hands up. Just walk away. I wish I could let you go, but I have to follow protocol. Maybe I can still talk her out of it. This is how you t this is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. Please put your hands up. Just walk away. I wish I could let you go, but I have to follow protocol. She stares at you frozen, the gun still in her mouth, her eyes filled with dark intensity, and then something shifts in her. Her neck and shoulders relax, and her grip on, on the gun loosens. You don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Just fucking go, okay, before I change my mind. Number one. Day of miracles, she says, pulling the gun out of her mouth, her eyes still fixed on you. Then she turn, then she turns her gaze to the tunnel behind, behind you. I'll take it. Wait, could we have convinced her to shoot herself? Because, oh, she's going out to where the death, where she thinks the death squad is. All right, cool. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the dark, into the darkness of the tunnel. Could we convince her to kill herself? Because after what she did with the machine, you know, I think that's the best decision. Good call, lieutenant. Is still unsteady on his feet. Is it? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. He has to catch his breath. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. He couldn't take it, take it, like you. It irks him. Then he gets over it. What if we just let the murderer? What if we just let the murderer go? I think she didn't do it. I think she did it, but I didn't want her to die. I think she didn't do it. He looks around, then points to the back of the cavern, her tent. We should check it out. We should check it out. Who's compromised now? I mean, like after what she did to us, what are all these paintings? Maybe I'm just angry that that the, the game just had its big first stumble at the conclusion. Dark water chills into the distance. There's no way out. Oh man, some health shit. Cooking utensils. She has prepared herself porridge with bananas. Ah, oh, eight real. Nice. Plain tent stands. Plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practice hands. She's used to camping out. Look inside. The tent looks old but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Look at the books. Oh, what if she has um, the Dick Mullen book? A copy. A sorted soft cover is mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. Lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder. See anything? Sift through the magazines. Riga Monthly, Journal of Material Science, More Technological Digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook. Take it. You pocket the warm brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately, like right now. Hey, Kim, you want some Nosafed? Do you want some Nosafed? Do, 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 do. Ariel Sanders, she's five minutes to say, all right, I'm here to catch the last bit of Disco Elysium. Responsibility is for chumps. P.S. Please don't tell my boss. I want to go back to being a chump tomorrow. <sighs> damn. You playing hooky, Ariel Stannis? God damn. All right, I salute you. I salute you. Good luck with it. And thank you so much for the bits. I hope the ending's worth it. Ash Ashuala has resubscribed for three months. Thank you very much, Ashuala. Thank you, thank you. Pucker Starfish she's 100 bits to say, this game with this ending, worth a single moon. Oh no, not a multi-moon. Oh no. Oh, not a multi, just a single moon. Uh, Utter Sloth has used subscribe for six months. Hey, hey, Vohio, how's this game coming along? Is that the one with the, with the little wrench arm? How's this game coming along? Haven't been here in a little while. Uh, we're right at the end, so if you want to play this yourself, this is not a good strain to be, to be at, Utter Sloth. Um, we're at the end. So I wouldn't recommend it unless you don't care about spoilers or anything. But the game's really, really good. So I do recommend the game. Parker Star used some more bits to say the necktie ending is better. The necktie ending is my favorite. Did you get the necktie ending? Top Lolly has used some bits to say if you're reading this, we're, we're dating now. Good morning, baby. Aw, oh, man. But you're a lolly, and I'm not a lolly. It can never work. A thick journal, the cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. Unwind the strap. 
The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently, perhaps too confidently. Many phrases in the paragraphs have, that have been crossed out with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins slip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kinds of logistics? Hard to tell. Exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We, uh, if we have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? personal. Short, wry observations of people and places, probably a way to pass the time on the road, also what appear to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues, always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? First entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did she write the day Lely died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's about to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except that's another matter entirely. She's referring to betraying her previous employer. Does this suggest she did it in self-defense? Anything about La Puta Madre? That name isn't mentioned as hard as you can tell. Let's ask him about it. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M, though. La Puta Madre. M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from North Point. March 9th first. Great. M's peon is coming to town, no doubt to investigate the lynching, but also I feel in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break, while I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? Did M call her personally? Why? Were you supposed to find her, even apart from the investigation then, on M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a, mis a, a mistake. Am I sure this is a mistake? Look at me. Whatever you may look like, you don't feel like a hired assassin. But maybe this is part of your process. Maybe you just show up at, at every at every job and get yourself blackout drunk, lose your memory, rebuild your skills slowly, and then go in for the kill. Read the entry for March 12th. I've been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best of people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me... Did M tr feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people. They they take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. The call was a courtesy. He must have held her in high regard to personally tell her he knew about her plan to run drugs for the competition. What's the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads... Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run? Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. Lieutenant taps on the page. It looks like she might have been framed. That would be a first or a fourth, but who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her. Kim, am I really a La Puta Madre agent? He looks at you straight straight in the eye for a moment then sighs no i don't think you are ask someone in the precinct if you want to be sure he truly does not believe you are perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting his trust is well placed you aren't you can feel it turns out we're a laputa madre agent boom 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 if she didn't do it then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her i wouldn't go as far as to say that we have other reasons to arrest her he frowns besides i'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than, than with us especially if she has problems with with, Mod with the madre if kim dies we riot then who do you think killed the merc Classio was the only one who pointed the finger at ruby perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself or he stops to think seems plausible i don't know but no one heard the shot Maybe she had an accomplice. Either way, we should, we should go back to the Whirling, see if we can find out more about her time there. One thing is for certain, we have business back in the Whirling and Rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Oh, we're... Oh, okay, I thought like when we came down here, that would just ride it out to the end in a, in a linear fashion. But okay, alright. Let's go search the, the, the Phasmid traps! Phasmid traps. All right, so we got one skill point. What should we level up? 
I thought we'd come down here, we'd end up going to the island. I guess that's where the shot came from, because there's n there's nowhere else to look. Ariel Santa says, hey Joe, just got here. Can you summarize the plot so far? Sure. So um, we we wake up and we don't have any memory of, of who we are, or how we got here, or, or where we even are. Uh, it turns out that we're an alcoholic and probably a drug addict. Um, so we get up and then we, we turn on a light and you can die if you lose that check. But it turns out that, you know, you can just not do it or you can succeed in the check. So this is going to take a while. It's probably going to take me an hour to explain all this, by the way. All right. So after you do that, uh, no, um, I can't, I can't summarize the, the, the plot so far. Sorry. No, I know it's a joke, but, uh, if anyone else is here actually wondering, no, I can't. Our tent. Stop, just up ahead, danger. High voltage, you are prepared. Don't put away your friend, your weapon. Raindrops slip from the barrels of your barrel. Oh yeah, it's got three barrels, right? Villiers and nine millimeter pistol. Kim, there's danger up ahead. Yes, I hear commotion. He cups his ear, let's go. I'm ready to do this. Good, be ready to take, to take damage. Is it Western time? The good, the bad, and the ugly intensifies. Let's let's arp slow walk in. Duh, look how cool we are. I'm all out of shit to give loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Oh man, there's a butt. This armor looks weird. Put your goddamn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right. Shut up! You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck! This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. Say nothing. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The gift is merciful. Willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Her tone is frighteningly emotionless. You all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fella? He's facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful! Who the fuck are you? It sounds like the armor figure is weeping. Nest in your abdominal cavity, like a little wild mouse! The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's the third one. How did we miss something like this? Lieutenant points to the helmeted figure. We're out of time. This is. What do we do? Whisper. The big one is the, is the mercenary at the gates. The scab leader. <laughs> Yusuke, we know that already. Stop. This is the police. Get between them. Let's walk away for now. We're out of time. This is. The mercenary tribunal. Lieutenant nods. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. He doesn't want to, but he must. All right. What the big one is mercenary at the gates? If this turns into a firefight, 
we should take him out first. A sound strategy. He's the leader. Let's walk away for now. <laughs> I need to go buy some drugs. <laughs> Stop. This is the police. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd, losing his balance for a moment. He staggers backward. Hey, fuck! Is the only word you can make out. Oh man, I didn't even see him. He 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 just blends in. Huh, look at that rifle. Hmm. I can see you're drunk. One wrong move and I'm taking you out. Easy now, no one needs to die here today. Say nothing, cross your arms. I can see you're drunk. Oh yeah, welcome to the fucking party. You're probably gonna get killed too. I don't give a shit if you're cops. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. She doesn't seem to understand the severity of the situation. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. Leader gives a small nod to the helmet of man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand. It feels like it feels like it's saying, "Do it." No wait, It's good that you have. It's good you have that gun. It really is. Just soften him up with. Soften him up, fist. Present an argument. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out first. Get under his skin. I don't know about this getting under his skin. What if he gets under yours? I'm barely keeping your hand from trembling here. <laughs> Who is that? Points to the man. I didn't know you had a third guy. <laughs> Rhetoric. Hand, hand, eye. Shoot, coordinate. <laughs> Distracted by memories. <laughs> Talk about hanged man. Who is that? I didn't know you had a third guy. Run. Rud. Rud. Rud is the killer. The armored woman smiles a vicious smile. Rud the killer. Han, Han Cloen, he doesn't talk much. All of you fucking cunts inside out! Was that. What was that run? The killer. It's the killer, do not die. Rip you open. Perhaps it's for the best, him not talking too much. The killer. The gunner, he gestures toward himself. The raddest, he nods towards the, the woman. The killer, he points to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. What do you think he does? There, on the rim of Han Cloven's helmet, you can count little stick figures, 19, 20, 21. How's it going? Thanks. How are the kids? They're yeah, okay. Kids look just shocking considering Leo's making so much noise, but I'll take it, right? There are the of Hong Kong and so many you can list stick figures. 19, 20, 21. How many? About 50 little stick figures, all of them black, plus two little white ones in the end. Kills black people? Uh, tends to the stables. <laughs> what? <laughs> You think you're real tough, huh? This killing is meaningless. I'm a killer too. Good. I kill killers. Alright. None of these are good options. None of these. Uh, tense the stables. What are we waiting for? She turns to the leader. Let's blow that big fucking mouth off his face. Hold your fire. He licks his lips. Wait for my command. He has chewed his lips bloody. This man has been under severe emotional pressure recently. He's not used to commanding or leading. He feels uncomfortable. He'd rather shoot the kill. Listen, they didn't do it. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah, who did then? Wait, I just need a little time to figure figure this out. Point to Titus. I think it was Titus. Point to the roof. It was Classia. Point to the coast. It was Ruby. Point to yourself. It was me. It was someone else. Someone who's not here now. 
How fucking convenient. He gives you a drunken stare, then puts his hand on his on the gun. His fingers are twitching. There's a draw. That's a draw reflex he's about to draw. He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. A lot of people could have gotten onto that roof. Actually, they are here. Point to the enemy. It was one of you. I've changed my mind. I can still change my mind, right? It's... <laughs> You shot from a great distance, a sniper did it. You think I'm a fucking stupid cop? There's a dangerous gleam in his eye. What if I just shot one of your pals here right now, huh? He points his gun at Elizabeth. How about how about the kip to tell me it was a magic fucking sniper one more time? Listen, please, she raises both hands. This cop and this drum head court martial won't decide who. Say nothing, just stand there. Think, think, why doesn't he believe me? Oh no! <laughs> Oh shit! Oh no! Oh no! Alright, let's take a million off of Yaya. Let's take a million off of Yaya. Wow. Wow. I can't believe it. How many times has that happened? In case you guys haven't picked up on it yet, I'm 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 literally Nagito. Extreme luck either way. Your mind grinds to a halt. All you can see is the revolver in the man's armored hand, swaying and pointing at her. You move your mouth like a fish gasping for hair. She's a woman. Don't. I'll kill you. No, she wasn't even there. He pulls the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle. The shot rings in your ears. A low tinny ring. Then the hardy boys yell something. The woman grabs her left side. She's down. Her white shirt soaks a blood red around her. Soaks a blood red around her abdomen. She gasps for air, repeating, I'm okay, I'm okay. Fuck this. The man starts pulling something out of his pocket. There's a coarse shuffle against something. Is it a gun? Gene, the big man raises his hand. Tend to Lizzie now. He'll be ripped apart. They all will. The moment the third man opens fire, and he knows it. He wants you to open fire on the mercenaries before he does. He's waiting for you and your partner to be the shield. Gardner is dying. Talk about the hangman. Okay, I think talking about the hangman is a bad idea. I think that's just gonna get them riled up even more, even if we succeed. Think of an argument. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Crenel would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. Really? None of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. You only have time for one argument. Choose wildly. Just a question. Who's in charge of the unit after the death of your colonel? Colonel does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. You were called down well once. What happened? Gulp and say nothing. Let's go with three. What always happens when you get good at your job? The name meant night raids. Fucking extra judicial... Judicial... Can't say that word. Funky time. Burn villages. Shit like that sounds bad on the radio. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Krennel for much longer either. He looks around. The woman has grown silent. She draws shallow breaths. Not after this shit. Okay, it's not much, but he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Okay, I guess we have to go with that one? Stand there quietly. Hope nothing bad happens. I guess we have to go with that one, because like uh, shooting him is not going to be good. Dangerous. Ask him... Ask... Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Okay, alright, so we're, we're actually being smart about it. Okay, I knew you weren't a goddamn scab leader. Who are you? Who are you, Cordy? Sergeant Major Rawl Cortinaire reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. He points at the whirling in rags. As he moves, the interlocking piece of his armor clicks softly. Click, click, click. The realization comes to you like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raul Cortinaire. The dead man's name is Ellis Cort Cortinaire. He's he's brothers with the deceased. No, probably foster brothers. Ellis was put into, the, into a foster home, remember? And then he bellows for killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer. You're all sentenced to death by lead. Cortner, I know that name. His parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. Listen, <clears throat> you're Lely. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Ba okay, that's interesting. Maybe go that one. He had blue eyes, didn't he, your colonel? Let's go with number two. Who, Lely? Yeah, when he was small, just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the insane clown posse and looked at his birth records. That was in there. 
and other things. They put they fucking put Lully in a leaf compactor, and now these cunts finished the job. He waves at the at, at the gang huddled by the doors. It's a mind fuck, Cordy. <clears throat> he wasn't putting the put he wasn't put it a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. She glances at a major permission to open fire. We can't have that interfere now. Cordy, I know that name. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. Rawl and Ellis Cordonier, look at him in the eye. I'm sorry about your brother, Rawl. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into the into place by the same sick fuck. And then went to the same military academy in the same unit in the same war. You were foster, foster brothers, I know that. You don't know shit, Lance Corporal. Lance Corporal, why don't you? He turns to the radio officer on his right. You lost him, quick. Don't let him finish the sentence. He had blue eyes, didn't he? Listen, you're Lally. Everyone says he was, things about him. He's a good talker. Uh, let's go three. What do you mean, talker? We heard testimony. People said say he was charismatic, a nice guy to be around. Yeah, he liked to chat up the natives, share leaflets, squeeze a bit of kipped ass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. He points toward the yard. If Lally was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for show, but me, he points to himself. I'm not a big fan of public affairs. Clay monkey. Whoa, I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major, at your command. Uh, blue eyes seems pretty bad, but then talking about something that happened in the war also seems pretty bad too. Fuck, man. I don't think these are good options. I'm gonna go with six. Your brother did not deserve to go out like that, I promise I will find this killer. Find this killer. Copy's killer stands right there. He waves at the men behind you, shitting their pants, and you're standing in the way protecting them. They they didn't. The woman holds onto her side, teeth rattling. Shush, she squints at her. Blood's all gone out now. Not so long not so long ago when the rattle starts. One down, girl, seven to go. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. You're all drunk, look at yourselves. The well pines rep does not approve of this. All right, so am I just building? I'm just building up like points to to take a shot. Fuck it. A small explosion expels from the bullet. What if I didn't have any? Oh, close. What if I didn't have any um any bullets? A small explosion expels the bullet from the chamber with a puff of smoke. It hits the man square in the chest, producing a soft clicking sound in the armor, like dice rolling. <laughs> The kinetic energy of the 9mm front-loaded bullet is distributed evenly across the chest piece and into his hands. The man doesn't even try. He smiles and says, go ahead, give it a, go ahead, give it a try. Alright. <laughs> Another soft explosion like a fire... Kim, shoot him! Another like a firecracker goes off in your hand. Another soft click from the gleaming white queer ass. They teach you to shoot the chest in Copland? Stupid fuck. The man shrugs and turns to his left and says, kill him. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. He move, His moves are slow and steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Kim, where is Kim? Alright, if we dodge, does that mean Kim gets shot? Hold on, will this, will this progress it? I want to see. Kim, where is Kim? From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rudd. He's trying to, f to find a straight, line, a, a straight line of sight before the rifle can take you out. It's not easy. He has 0.6 seconds to do so. He won't make it. You're on your own. Blink. Think. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rudd's mask behind it. His eye in, in the slit of the helmet like a camera lens focusing on you. Absolute destruction. God, you're so frail. Too frail to think further. Time's around. I love that we built our character to be an extreme kind of like like talker who 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 like understands people and nuance and everything. And we had a 97% chance to, to talk our way out of it. And we fucking failed that. So now we have to like go down to the shitty fucking physical fucking roles. Because we lost our 97 chance that we built our character to be able to do. Reaction speed, character 12, dodge the shot. You leap left, a swarm of angry le lead, that's wrong, passes mere millimeters from your right, tearing fabric off your coat, feels like the lightest of tucks. Joy, I am alive, I cannot be stopped, I have become immortal, Joy, I am alive. The man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot. Watch out, to your left, the Paul is about to take a shot too. 
At Kim, Lieutenant Ames, face pale, without trembling, he quietly utters, God, please. He's aiming for the ice slot in Red's helmet, an extremely difficult shot. Then two shots ring at once. Oh, Kim! Oh, holy shit! Then two shots ring at once, one from Lieutenant Kitsaragi's pistol and the other from DePaul's. It's aimed at Kim, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Kim, did he hit the rifleman? Who screamed? Was it Kuno? <laughs> Oh no, it's Glenn! Glenn dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geysers. Oh god, watch out. You see two cold eyes looking at you through all the smoke and the panic, and a pistol raised aiming at your chest point blank. Then the man squeezes the trigger. <laughs> Let it happen! Wait, aren't I wearing the armor? I have the armor on, don't I? It's gonna bounce off me. Look him in the eye. Only on your chest. It's aiming at our chest. Look him in the eye. A look of happiness. His eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear in the fear must distort him somehow. He's evil and yet Okay, I wanna let it happen because I'm wearing I'm wearing the chest armor, so it shouldn't maybe it has to be completely interlocking to, to work properly. I don't know, that seems kinda weird. I'm going for it. Nope. Oh, kind of close. You can't, there's no time, something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire. Oh, okay, so he misses the chest. Your entire lower body, I wonder if we hadn't dodged, it would just hit our chest. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too, in too immense to scream it pushes the air out of your lungs everything goes dark a distant blur as you recede into it listen through the darkness and the pain touch your lower body try to open your eyes what do i see listen through the darkness and the pain the hardy boys are yelling someone is running jumping over you in the background you hear gunfire shatter glass and then a man in pain a familiar sound it's titus with a splat like meat you hear bullets rip into him his voice still giving orders grows fainter or gurgle He's not going to make it. Touch your lower body. Feel slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened here. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you got. What parts of me are missing? Most of what's down there. Oh god. I don't care. Fuck me. It's all gone. Open your eyes now. You have to see what's happening. No, no. It's just a fear. Even if who cares? No one wants, no one wants you anyway. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them like a hellish play. Out of it, a silhouette appears, crutching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. You're bleeding out. No one wants to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. Of course, I get gunned down and die. Sorry, fuck. Live fast, die old. Wins from pain. Kim, I lied about not remembering who I am. I made it up. I remember everything. <laughs> There's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. Stay with me. You feel burning hot tears streaming from your eyes. I can't forget it, even when I drank so much. It said I have a vast soul. Do I have a vast soul? I shouldn't have called her. Now she hates me. She would have started loving me again, but I called her and now she won't. I can't forget it, even when I drank so much. Yes, keep talking. Lieutenant pushes down on your wound hard. You hear me? Stay awake. Give me some nosefed. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sound and the sound's ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. Kim, too, is somewhere far away, almost gone. When suddenly you sense something behind him. A shadow towering, someone stands there, raising his pistol at him. Lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately, he's gonna die. Authority, medium 11. No, Kim! No, you scream behind you from your bloody lips. Your eyes are full of fear. There's no room for hesitation. Lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on, falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure too is gone, and so is Kim, and the whole world fall into total darkness. This is death, one more this door, is baby. Death. Oh, one more door, baby, one more door. Will I be a ghost now? Good, I want to die. No, let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost, a 
thousand years ago, you have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours, hurting, moaning in his sleep, and rotting, and being disinfected, and smelling of drugs, and feeling saliva in his mouth, drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his warm sleep. He can't go, not before the case is solved. There's a radio in the distance, a radio of the world, playing sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion core. Engine of a Cooper's Kinema. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets worse. Life gets hard, but we go on. The smallest church in St. Science. Oh, they cleaned up a little bit in here. Nice. You see Kim's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple from the pain. Kim. Sunrise, Parabellum, the lieutenant says. He's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room with a fan above his head like a halo. His, <laughs> his face is covered in bruises. Ouch, the room, it's clean. What did you say? Sunrise? What happened? How bad am I hurt? What did you say, Sunrise? Sunrise, Parabellum, Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary saying. Isn't that written on your, my gun, it's engraved on it. Cops like it. Is it war today? He looks out the window. The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt. I am relieved to say. I think we may have held it off for now. He unzips his bomber jacket. Barely. Good. A pity. Ouch. That's right. He nods in agreement. Ouch indeed. Ouch. It's not, it's not ouch time yet. You just got a draw a mean a draw a mine draw a mine probably pill an hour ago wait until it wears off the room it's clean mr gart cleaned it it took him an entire day how long have i been out two days in and out you've been oh, it's day nine now oh shit it really is day nine in the bottom two days in and out you've been up enough to take draw draw a mine and curse and drink water what happened what happened you shot the, the major unsuccessfully a firefight ensued what happened then as retaliation their rifleman tried shooting you he missed or you dodged I dodged, he nods, and I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. Glenn did not survive. There's a pause. Titus found Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo died before they made it to intensive care. Titus died in the hospital. Yesterday, Elaine and the young musician, I forget his name, they're all that's left. Titus is dead? Yes, nod. You were bleeding out. I think you said something about your wife, and you warned me. I was able to disarm the major before he got the jump on me. Alright, so I'm a, I'm a little annoyed, but I'm not annoyed in a way that the game is bad. I'm, I'm annoyed in in, in a way that the game has engaged me, I guess. So it's it's a good thing. It's not criticism. I'm a little annoyed that, that again that we built our character around this person that that's really intuitive and and will and will be able to talk things through, and that completely fucking failed because we rolled snake guys. So I'm I'm a little I'm a little annoyed, but I think it's a good kind of annoyed. I don't know. You were bleeding out. I think you said something about your wife, and you warned me, and I was able to disarm the major before he got to jump on me. Thank you. Although, I was not able to kill him, as I should have. Crennel took him. The lieutenant takes a cigarette from his coat pocket and lights it. A bitter smell fills the room. A straight bullet killed DePaul, though, and that's what happened. Titus is dead. Yes, he pulls on the cigarette intently. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. 
and the Major is in a private hospital across the river. Crennel claimed him from the local butcher shop where Titus died. Turns out he's insured. We won't get him any won't go to him anymore. The good news is he's not coming here either. I did some damage. How many casualties on the Union side? Total. Six. Glenn, Theo, Shanky, Angus, the fat one, and he took fat one, he took a lot of bullets. There's a pause in Titus. And Elizabeth too. Elizabeth Beaufort was was her name, the gardener. She did not make it? No. She bled out before Everett's surgeon could help her. Everett sent his personal doctor, but he shakes his head. A costly loss for the union. She was being trained for leadership. If I would have presented the theory better to their leader, she never had a chance. She should not have been there in the first place. There was no way to convince them. Stop this line of thought now. You're too broken for ghosts. And that's conclude all. He nods. An absolute disaster. It's a total shit show, Kim. Not that bad, all things considered. Absolute disaster. Yes, officer, he says calmly. Seven people are dead. It's not a, it's not a success. But what's done is done. The violence is, is cordoned, cordoned off. The hornets did not get into the beehive. <laughs> the bees hive. He rubs his swollen chin. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And smi and he smiles. We're still we are still alive, both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you step between those two armies. How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your thigh. The other outer side, thankfully. No major arteries were necked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. Can I walk? We will see. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycholocomotor. Psych I'm a psycholocomotor. Good, you'll need to be, whatever that is. <laughs> so he's just like, yeah, fuck it, I'm just going along with it. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in front of an armored motor carriage. The, the woman is driving, the man lights a cigarette. Jean... Jean Vicomer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that a back to that shithole, he says. They don't care about me at all. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they sent officers to join you on the site. Odd. You haven't seen any, have you? There's a pause. I'm sure they're worried about you. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? If they're so worried about me, where are they? Better not agitate yourself further until it already hurts. Rhetoric. Sorry. <laughs> he may have some idea, but he's not going to get into it with you. That's between you and them, he thinks. If not my station, then who treated me? I did. I didn't know you could do that. It's part of a detective's task chain. You can do it too. Actually, you can. You can even remove a fractured bullet, it seems. Are you hurt? Not very. He rubs his chin. I have a concussion from the major beating, from the major beating me with the butt of his gun. I try not to move too much. Things would be much worse if you didn't warn me. There's a pause. Thank you. I did not see him coming. Stupid of me. Okay, get up. Do 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 do. Easy now. The lieutenant turns double again before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. How are you? Uh... Uh, please don't spoil what what would happen if decisions were made differently. I think people might want to play this themselves and see, and I might want to reload and see too. So try not to spoil it in chat, please. I understand that you that you want to share, and it might be interesting for people, and some people in chat might even want to, to read it. But yeah, please don't. Gah. My disco days are done. I feel fantastic. Let's rock. Who cares? Who cares about me? It doesn't matter. I'm very bad, Kim. Things are very bad. Gah. Lieutenant looks at you, teetering on your feet. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. You don't know? We can't talk to Everard. The harbor is on lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grass. Joyce is left too, thanks to our meddling. You don't think it was a good idea? I don't know what to think. It might not have been a bad idea. There is a pin somewhere in the machine. Something is keeping Crennel from sending in the death squad. He looks out the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her end. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classia, well, at least she's safely locked away. You think she could be of more use to us? Locked up? No, she would be She would be of more use to us free, honestly. But it was the right thing to do. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hangman? I don't know. I think our theory... I think the theory you presented, it would, it's someone else outside this, our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. Yeah, I agree. His voice is a calm matter of factly. I mean, the, the biggest suspect I have is, is the sniper that was on their group because he could make the long distance shot. 
This is because I'm a La Puta Madre peon, isn't it? The fucking Maybells, Kim, the flowers. What about the hole in the ouch wall? Someone was checking her out. The goddamn footprints. There's still a 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. An antique bullet from a Bell Margrave, 44.6 millimeter. How hard can it be to find one? How hard can it be? There are all these old bunkers and weapon caches. Revolutionary era. You know what I'm. Th you know what I think. About you don't only think about solving crimes, let's go one by one. Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revishall West are his peons, even if you are. It's not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. Fucking Maybells came the flowers. What? They were on the roof. I did not I did not catch them. Fucking butterfingers. <laughs> That's coming back? Holy shit. Wow. I'm so impressed. Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to catch everything. He's wrong. No, Kim. Every piece of garbage in the city is connected to the case. Okay, he concedes. Clearly not meaning it. What about the hole in the ouch wall? I don't know. He rubs his neck. That's been there. F that's been there for years. The goddamn footprints. Yes, he says. God cursed the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Ad diable. Ow diable. Ooh diable. There's a, still a twenty percent possibility shocking from a distance. We should go upstairs. Rethink the ballistics in situ situ in situation a light nod through some pain I'll, i agree i agree with this what else see there's that you can do ballistics an antique bullet from bell margrave it's extremely easy there are thousands lying there are thousands lying comma around we found one all completely unusable it's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless wait bullet there are all these old bunkers and weapon caches a revolutionary area we could find thousands more if we wanted all of revishall is full of them but they seem so mysterious. I can't believe they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. You know what I think about? Solving crimes. He arches his brow, the ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard. Solving crimes is almost impossible. Solving crimes is super easy. Actually, I want to talk about this crime some more before I tell you what I think about its hardness. Solving crimes is hard. It, it really is very hard. You're not ready to give up, are you? No, there's a short pause. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good, there's a pause. Where do you want to limp? Lieutenant did mention doing some more ballis doing more ballistics. We should check Miss Mrs. Catazine's allergies room upstairs. Let's just aimlessly wander until a clue presents itself. I don't know. Why not? He extinguishes the cigarette on the sole of his boot. Another sh another look through the window, perhaps the one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. Damn, we were we were holding uh we did have the um the armor on see gleaming white enamel oh they fixed the sink look the door is open you can walk right into kim's room <gasps> my god i didn't think we'd get to oh <gasps> Medicinal supplies on the cupboard. Mercurochrome, a scalpel, antibiotics. The alarm is set for 6.50 a.m. God damn it, Kim. What a fucking psychopath. Oh, we can run. Nice. Um. Alright, well, that's a mistake. These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork half finished. You make out notes on this and other recent cases. Ariel Stannis says, damn, you got me. What a chump. <laughs> After you asked uh, um, about summarizing the uh, the plot. Uh, thank you, Trash Puppy, for the new sub. Sorry, we were in the middle of a big conversation there, so I didn't see it until now. Thank you, Trash Puppy, for the new sub prime. Welcome to Pout Patrol. Please enjoy our pouts. Drew Carrymore has resubscribed for 20 months. I never thought I'd see blatant trolling as I have in this chat. Step away from the computer, drop the ham sandwich, and back the frack off, Gaijin. I hate to use that word, but you've made me that serious. Oh, God. Oh, no. You've angered Drew Carrymore. Chat. How the fuck do you find all these fucking bugs? I swear I didn't have the dialogue matching to each other. I'm I it's I have a, a special um, ability to find bugs. I'm not even kidding. I really do. I have a superpower to find bugs. It happens to me in every game. 
You should have seen Jedi Fall in Order. Thank you again for 20 month, uh, 20 month resub and the message Drew Carey more. Wuggy Not has resubscribed for 24 months. Welcome to the two year club, Wuggy Not. Hope you're well. Thank you, Wuggy. I break things. Adgard opened the door to your room. He closes the notes. You were running a low back, low bacterial fever the first night. Thank you for keeping this thing alive a little longer. Point to yourself. It would have been easy were, were it not for my concussion. We both got lucky considering the odds we faced. There's a pause. Let's go. Luck, lucky. Look, Kim. Kim. I had a 97% chance to succeed. Okay? And we lost. All right? And you know what? That's the third time that's fucking happened. Okay? Wow, they fixed the window. Newly replaced glass shining in the morning light. Your traffic outside back in back in the world again. Did we break the window or was that like the first shot missed and came through our window? Maybe there's a bullet somewhere in here. Hey Gart, did you find a bullet while you're cleaning up? This stereo eight player has been reunited to the, with its uh with its right speaker. You did the, the shoe. Oh yeah, we sh we threw our shoe out. Yeah, that's true. And the glasses broke on the other side. Yeah. Ouch, that leg hurts. Maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay. All right, let's RP walk. Okay, I didn't think we were going to be able to wander around again like this. Interesting. Cool. What is the point of our origin, damn it? It's not the roof, and you would have found it if it had been on the coast, and either prime, either B prime or B double prime, which leaves the island in the bay. I think the shot might have come from the islet. He nods, it's not impossible. There is a narrow opening between the commercial area and the collapsed tenement north of it. There are ruins on that islet, a sunken sea fort. I saw it through the coin-operated viewer. I remember, he looks out the window and onto the bay. This is also the only point of origin we haven't ruled out yet. Proceed, so it is. For a second he seems tired. I don't like that that was in the, that was in the quest log as if you could have gotten there before. But that's all right. For a second he seems tired. You seem unenthusiastic. I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep these past few days. He doesn't really believe this will yield anything. Maybe we need to go to that island. Lieutenant sighs, looking into the cold distance across the water. He's trying to justify it to himself. The lead is flimsy. You might as well go go around Martinez, looking under every rock and talking to every person. But what else is there? There, across the gray water, a mist crumbling concrete, a birch tree, and the half-sunken ruins of a flak tower. I don't have anything to say. This is just something we have to do, Kim. What else is there? I remember an anti-aircraft gun or the, or the ruins of, of one on the island from the coin-operated viewer. Could be the makings of a sniper's nest, he nods. It's just something we have to do, Kim. I understand. What else is there? Not a lot, no. Kim, let's go to the fucking island. I'm going to the island. Are you in? Actually, yeah. Let's not go to the island. Wait, do we just go? Kim, let's go to the fucking island. All right, let's go to the fucking island. He takes a second to gather himself and says... How do we get there? Joyce Messier had her sloop, but it's gone. Lillian, the net picker, she's tarring her boat. Ah, yes, of course, the village, let's go. And I have a rapport with her, because we, we went on our walk date, remember? Nice. It was her. We could use our boat. My instincts were right. Do, 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 do. Why couldn't we have done that earlier? Because this game sucks. That's why. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Thank you, Xerxes, or Xerxes. I think it's Xerxes, though, for the Uniso Prime. Welcome to Prime Time. Welcome to the pickle jar. Please enjoy our pickles. You know, I haven't seen in a while. I haven't seen Trash Chan in a while. Can we get some Trash Chans in the chat? I haven't seen Trash Chan in a while. I miss her. That train wreck personified. There's our girl. There's our girl. <laughs> oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. I did, thank you. Big improvement. I could have used more work. After all, I just took a bullet for this place. You did? I was too distracted to notice. I did, thank you, big improvement. 
You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. I give credit where credit is due, and that, sir, was an honest effort. I was watching until it went down, crawled inside then, bullets start flying. Anyway, he clears his throat. He really wants you to realize that he was also on the balcony looking by in the danger zone, so to say. I wish you a quick recovery. Also, he raises his finger. You and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. The stay is free. The drinks are not, he adds. Just felt I needed to specify that. Where did everyone go? Oh, you know, he looks around at the empty place. People don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. What happened to the man with the sunglasses? He shakes his head. I don't remember everyone who comes here and many people wear sunglasses. Sorry, I don't remember everyone who comes here and many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. By the way, where were you when it happened? Where was I? How do you think I know the crazy shit you pulled off out there? I was there, on the, out on the balcony, protecting my establishment. That's actually true. You remember him from the corner of your eye right behind you on the whirling balcony. So yeah, he looks around, aloof. I guess I'm what you call a badass. It really took courage. Don't pick at him. Yeah, I guess you are a badass. Just nod, stoically. <laughs> he nods back at you even more stoically. Make that three. Lieutenant is nodding too, hands crossed. Aw, oh, man. Let's make out. Do, 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 do. Oh, you don't care. There's nothing new. This guy's been suspiciously here the whole time. Maybe this is the killer. Huh. Someone's graffitiing in German again. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for her masterpiece. Lieutenant Crouch is touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it, yes. Still fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. I smell heavy fuel oil and blood. Some of it is even yours. Heavy fuel oil, isn't that flammable? What are you trying to imply at, Fingers? You could buy some smoke, slide up a ciggy and throw it in there, you know. Just see what happens. See if it's flammable, it's better that way, safer. Oh, fuck yeah, we're doing that. Mon dieu, officer! It is worse than I thought! Believe me, I know all about that kind of pain. I've had heat trouble for the past week. Oh, baby, it's time to slow down. Anything I can do to assist you? Yeah, give me your sandwich. Everyone was, uh, the room was empty, right? In here? Oh no, there's there's some people in here, I didn't see them. Seeing you approach the bruised man raises his beer can and welcome. Oh, it's you! Didn't think we'd see you walking anytime soon. Elaine, look, it's the cowardly cop. Huh? What? Cowardly cop? What are you talking about? I shot twice for you guys. He looks up, his eyes full of confusion as if he'd just woken from a deep sleep. All condolences for your lucky. He says with a little nod, but the remaining hardy boys don't seem to register his words. Is he okay? Point to Elaine. Does he look like he's okay? He does not. His unshaven face is almost gray, and he reeks of piss, sweat, and booze. How badly was he hurt? He wasn't. That's the thing. He sighs heavily. Titus, Theo, Dennis, Angie, Lizzie, they're all gone, but he got away without a scratch. I just... He seems barely able to keep his head up. There's nothing left. Nothing. He has lost the will to live. This is terrible. I don't think I could go on living after this. <laughs> The eyes looking back to you from the narrow face momentarily lit up and his lips move without sound. He said thank you. This sh that shit ain't helping anyone, asshole. The fuck you want with us anyway? What's gonna happen to Hardy Boys now that Titus is dead? T -t -t -t. The spit flying out of his mouth is accompanied by a painful grimace. T -t 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 Titus is fucking dead. 
What's gonna happen to the Hardy Boys? Look around you, man. This shit is done. There are no more Hardy Boys. You two are just gonna go back to hauling containers in the harbor? No, man. I don't know. I guess the Union will still be policing the neighborhood, but he looks at his day's companion. Who's gonna do it now? I am you, Eugene. Does Titus have a brother, Tibbs? He will. Point to Elaine. You just need to sober him up, that's all. You should just disband. Let other better people take over. You, Eugene. Me? No, man. I'm not a leader. He smiles suddenly. You know Titus only recruited me because I can play because I play the guitar, so the team could use the morale boost. Oh, you're the team bard. If any of them had leadership capacity beside Titus, it's him. Keep encouraging him. You can do it, Eugene. Eugene, boys. Has quite the ring, doesn't it? What? Fuck no. If I'd stay, we'd keep the name to honor Titus. You're right. Eugene Hardy doesn't sound bad either. That's a noble thought. You're going to be alright. No one is born to lead. Titus was. His eyes meet yours. But thanks for the vote of confidence. If I don't stick around, it's all over. So I guess I gotta... So I guess I... So I guess sorta... Okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, man. You know, his he slaps his hand on the table in a sudden burst of drunk enthusiasm. You know, you got this. You got this. He looks off to the side, eyes filled with worry. I haven't got shit out. There's something there. A germ of determination. He knows his... He knows he has no voice but to rise to the occasion. That sentence was fine, was it? So I guess sorta I have to now? Really? I don't think that's fine. I think it should be... I guess I sorta have to now. I mean, it's not... it's not... completely wrong it just seems wrong to me maybe it needs a comma i guess comma sorta comma i have to now or just a comma after the sorta would do it too i would comma both of them off to have the pauses in the speech This is not completely ludicrous. Him and Titus were the only detectives of the bunch. Titus more, but Eugene at least knew how to think along. Take care, guys. Leave. Yeah, you too. It's a rough world out there. He shakes his head. It's not easy being a cop. We were too hard on you. Both of you he turns to Kim. We shouldn't have fucked with you like we did. You got between us and a lot of bullets in that fight. Martinez owes you one. That's kind of you to say. Lieutenant closes his eyes. Take care of your friend, okay? I will. Take care of you. You take care of yours. He nods to you. Sharp pain shoots up your side and into your stomach. You must not look too good. Luckily, it passes. Sound. We've been attacked. I repeat, Lieutenant Kim Kutsuragi, and something is wrong. Only static is the speaker. Hello? No reply. Only the mindless drone of, static, drone of static crawling through the air. It's been that way for a while now. Lieutenant shrugs. My guess is the, the Union is listening in on our conversations and jamming outward communications to protect themselves from Krennel. It only happens when someone mentions the attack. The rest is unaffected. Our best bet is to carry on like nothing happened. That is, if we don't want us... Don't... If we don't want us cut off the grid completely... Um, can't we just talk in code? Isn't that dangerous? No more dangerous than stepping between three armed mercenaries and eight union men, I hope. He glances over his shoulder. I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. The street seems safe enough to me. If anything, taking out the marks made things calmer for now. He flicks off the radio. Silence. You can try calling again. Just don't, just don't mention the tribunal and remember they're listening in. Alright, that's weird. Everything sounds okay. No drum beat of total war yet. If anything, everything sounds too okay. How did you know it was me? Didn't, but I now I now I do. How's the drinking going? I decided to stop completely forever. Great to hear it. Stop by some time when you're done with your case. I'll draw some blood, run it through, let you know how much forever your liver is going to give you. Doc, someone broke my heart. Look, pal, getting pumped and dumped is not a disease. People live through it all the time. We sh you should be happy for her. Wait, pumped and dumped? That's what you guys say, officer. That some chick pumped you and then dumped you, threw you away like an empty juice carton. 
Do you know who this person was? Have I told you? It's an excuse to why the rest of the dialogue trees work. Yeah, I get that, but I think that they should just not work <laughs> at all. This seems really awkward to me. You must have me confused for a close personal friend. I am not. I am a medical professional with a constant idiot emergency on my hands. What needs tending to right now? He thinks, looking around the room. God, these apes. You hear someone whining in the background. My eye, doc, my eye. I've been shot. Uh, to you walking talking though yes but great any other complaints i've been bad and i want someone to abuse me oh it's you i know a woman skilled at that sort of thing over in jamrock but you wouldn't but i wouldn't want to inflict you upon her best of luck detective oh nice I have to report that i found my badge jules 10-4, sir, glad to hear that. I'll write down that there's no need to issue a new one to you over then. Listen, I've actually lost my gun too, but then I found it again, so we don't need to do this. Jules, I heard some people think of me as La Puta Madre's peon. Do you think I'm corrupt? Corrupted? 10-4, sir, there's a pause as he seems to mull it over behind his enormous radio microphone. Well, there's been some talk, sir, he finally says reluctantly. Some talk? Why does it? What does it even mean there's been some talk? Do they think I'm corrupt or not? Does it mean... It doesn't mean people know that I'm a dirty cop because I am. I'm the dirtiest, most dangerous cop in Revishal. My reputation precedes me. I want to, you to know that I would never, ever do anything like that. I'm not taking bribes, Jules. Some talk. Only meant there's been some talk in the station, that's all. But there's always some talk in the station. You know how officers in Jamrock are. Actually, I don't. But then again, some of us are truly on the take. It's unfortunate over. Listen, I've lost my gun too. 10-4, I know, I already wrote it in the in a report, but he hesitates. I will, it will stay on my desk for a few days, over. I have successfully located my 9mm Villiers pistol. It's on me now, and I won't lose it again. 10-4, sir, roger that, and very glad to hear it. All right, cool, that was fun. All right. Oh, shit, what's going on? Roger that, 10-10, over and out. With those words, the radio cabin becomes silent again, the radio microphone resting on its hook. 18 kilometers south in the 41st precincts relay booth a small crowd has gathered around communication officer jules old boy Pidu, around a dozen cops the small room is filled with cigarette smoke as with laughter when officer judith menu enters her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short what's going on here did something happen she asked startled jean v jean vikimer turns to her and says what happened is my partner made contact it's not good he's lost his badge and his sidearm he seemed confused delirious even he stops to think mac the torso torson is finger fucking his fist laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner chester mclean near the entrance oh lizard blaine Something interjects, yeah, Mullen was fucked alright, sounds fucking drunk to me. Tall Ginger on his right still has tears of laughter in, her, in his eyes. Yeah, Max right. That was some gnarly shit there. Solid officer, Vicar Mary bites down his knuckles. Enough, he shouts across the room, the commotion dies down. All eyes turn to him. None of this is funny, it's fucking sad, that's what it is. He's a cop, he's one of us, god damn this. Mino looks down at, at her neatly polished black shoes. There, there's a quiet firmness to her voice. When she speaks, we must help him. When she speaks, we must help him, yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off to drink? Go jogging with him in the mor morning? And get him on carrot juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. The crowd in the room has started fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to slip out unnoticed. Mac, man the door. He gestures towards him to block the doorway, then turns to Mignot. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his, his words. He sighs heavily and turns to address the room. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain or anyone else. We'll give him a couple days to pull his shit together. Old boy lights another cigarette and says, I guess I can hold off hold off the report for a few days. Good. Vikamir turns to the others. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. That was cool. Are you aware of character skiing? Says so Puckered Starfish. I found that either either that or turning around and walking in the opposite direction from the spawn position breaks a little bit in most games. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. Can you do it in this game? I think you used to be able to do it. It was more like moonwalking. You used to be able to do it in World of Warcraft. I used to like doing that. Alright, I need some cigarettes. Thanks. Did you hear about the, the shooting? Um, it's- No, okay.
What game do you stream after this? Can't watch the stream this because I want to play it myself. Um, I don't know what we're gonna stream after this. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know yet. We might just stream some um, some roguelikes for a little bit, like Slay the Spy or something. I don't know. We'll see. Disco Elysium Run Two. Oh, yeah, of course. Step back, Lieutenant. Set the graffito on fire with a lit cigarette. Nice. The fuel oil catches fire immediately with an ominous hiss. A bright orange flash across the surface of the letters. Black smoke rises from the burning message. Disco Elysium, you've been police, Martinez. God, I'm on my way. Say nothing. Stare grimly into the flames. The lieutenant has taken a small step back. He looks at your face illuminated by the flames and nods silently. Then the fire falters. Let's go to that island. Yeah, let's just go. Let's just go. I was gonna go talk to Cindy the Skull, but no, let's just go. Phasmid. No. Officer Harry, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. You're not limping, you're you. She sounds almost disappointed with you, reprimanding you for falling and hurting your knee. You seem angry, why? I got shot in the foot, it was pretty badass. You would have liked it. I'm a cop, I don't merely exist in this world. I live in the between, in the between life and death. Some people hurt me. Is this from the shooting in town? Weird gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint guilaine It's nothing to be worried about, madame. Rue de saint Ghislaine, Kim. God damn it. Learn to speak. You didn't only get shot. I thought it's a second shot. I can also get not shot. Well, good for you. I have a question for you. Of course. Can I help you with something? We need to get to the island. Point to it. That won't be a problem. It's wind still, and the tar just dried. She points to her skiff next to the jetty. We got two days of relative sunshine ahead. I mean, that's why we couldn't use her boat before because she was preparing it. Can we borrow your boat? If you promise to bring it back, and no scraping in the hull. I just got it nice and yellow, and no drinking on the boat. Her eyes narrow, and no joyriding either. Of course, ma'am. It's only f for a day or two. Official police business. Aye, she nods, nod along attentively. The crowd seat disappear from the corners of her eyes as she smiles at you. Two days of sunshine. Sh sunshine. I just got a bacterial infection. I'm sad to hear that. Take care of that. Take care of that with other, will you? Don't get too many RCM men around here. Be sad to lose the first one. Damn, everyone's nice to you once you get shot. I should go get shot. What's on that island? I saw some kind of ruins through the backyards. Oh, that reminds me. I didn't tell you guys the story. Uh, one time I got shot. Um, yeah. Uh, a couple years ago. Uh, got shot, shot in the leg. Um, um, uh, coincidentally, got shot in the leg. Yeah, yeah. Big scar. Through and through, it was fine. So be nice to me now. What's on that? What's on that island? I just saw some kind of ruins through the binoculars. What the fuck? I love Joe now. Mm hmm. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. For the communards, an anti aircraft gun, I think, bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always steer clear of it. Hasn't been there but herself? Who has then? You say you haven't been there yourself. Who has then, if not you? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know, my mother told me. She looks around. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do on rafts. I tell them not to not to but they bring back old bullet casings and such which kids the twins 
Really? She points to the two kids playing on the concrete yard. God forbid they bring the girl along for this on bring the girl along some rickety barge. Can we maybe can we maybe ask her twins about that place before we go? Would that be alright? Be my guess. She looks at the boys. They have a strange way of talking. See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Is there anything I should know about getting there? Well, most of it's sunken underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Aye, aye, Captain. Thank you. We'll use your skiff to get there then. She nods. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? I just filled her up, but it's a small tank. Wait, are we going to be able to control the boat? There's no way. It's just going to be like we hit a button and we just teleport there, right? Hey, old lady, I got shot. Our yeah! King, the policeman. Uh, I even hope I can the see that. Don't keep you up at night. I told you not to bring How your trouble with you, policeman. You? We've got troubles of our own here. Though I suppose you took the worst of it. Turns out you were your own ill omen. The woman chuckles to herself. This is no time for jokes. Can't you see I'm in pain? I guess you're right. The men with guns were coming for me after all. She nods. I'm not sure those were the last of the men with guns either. There will there are always more coming for your kind, officer. Alright, so if there's if there's a disco Elysium too. And there's not that's not that's not a a a certainty. Like I, I think that they will make another game like this, but it might be in a different setting. I hope I hope it's the same setting though, because I like the setting. I think there's some to, stuff to explore. Should it be Harry again, or should it be someone else? <sighs> Assuming we don't fucking die. <sighs> The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other while the other watches him do it. Okay, kids, you've been to that island, right? Hmm, seems seems mostly someone else, but some people want want um Harry. On that island, the one the one who's busy kicking his stones points to the bay. Yeah, that one. I need to I need to know what's there. That there, that's um nothing. The boy pauses, I think, with his finger in his mouth. It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can take a raft there. It's great. And and the other one butts in. We make a fire. We make a, we make a fire. Mhm. Mm his brother nods. Gather the sticks for fire and bullets, or not real bullets, empty bullets. Bullet shells. There are a lot of them left over from the war, but this could be important. Wait, you mean shells? I don't know what those are. What then? There are lights. The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. Your nerve endings sting from the mention of a guy. They must be a human being on that island, but it's cut off. Someone lives on the island? No, the boy answers, shaking his head vehemently. His brother looks at him, then at you. Yes, he says. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows and whips out his notebook. Let's go with yes. Why is he the fire guy? Because, because, the boy pauses to think. Because he asked to put the fire out, the other explains. Why does he ask you to put the fire out? Um, I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. Yes, the other one adds laconically. Laconically? 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 Yeah, I think that's right. Standing with his hands glued to his sides like a little tin soldier. You mentioned something about lights. I, one of them, it's hard to tell which one now starts. I don't know. Lackadaisically, did you mean there are electric lights? He points to the street light. Um, yes, the boy looks at his toes. Is there anything else you can tell me about the guy age? Does he live there? No, he doesn't live there, I don't think. No, he lives there. The other nods. He's been there twice, two times. Huh. The first one pauses to think, then comes to some kind of conclusion. He doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know. They say almost in unison. How come? We we ran. He just yelled. We shouldn't be there. Your father used to go to the island too, didn't he? Our father killed himself. Don't say that. He didn't. His brother punches him. The boy's eyes well up like he's about to start crying. Your father did not kill himself. He killed himself, all right. Say nothing. I can't remember. I don't think he did, right? Your father did not kill himself. He went out, he went out drunk in the boat, right? Yeah, I don't know. The boy who made the claim finds himself unsure of it. He looks around. The other watches him, brows knitted. It doesn't even have to anything doesn't even have anything to do with this, you. Father isn't the fire guy. What if it is? The two things are unconnected. Your question didn't make sense. Is that all you know? Is there anything more you can tell me about the island? There is, uh, the boy says, rubbing his eyes. It's clear that he has no intention of finishing the sentence. Lights, fire guy. Lieutenant looks at you. We should check up on that island. You must be Lillian's twins. Mm-hmm. Lily's our mom. This is one of the twins. All right. 
Okay, so uh, we're finishing the game today, and it's been almost three hours, so I'm going to go um, take a five-minute break. I'm going to use the bathroom. We're just going to walk around for five minutes. If you've been sitting around, I suggest that you do the same. Uh, it's not good for you to sit for too long. So if you've been sitting the whole time the stream started, I suggest you go up and walk around. Go brush your teeth.
Alright. Time to finish the school museum. Thank you, Dudes Rock 2020 for the new Cyber Prime. Before we went on break, sorry, I just thank you before I went away. Thank you, Dudes Rock 2020. Keep rocking like a dude in 2020. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. The boat's belly in a shiny yellow color, sorry, is a shiny yellow color industrial paint over fresh tar. You see it reflect off the water along with the factory number A72. Once you get in, that's it. One pull from the starter handle and you're off to the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? Have you made all the necessary preparations? Close all your accounts. Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. You take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boom box. <laughs> what? What, what? How else do we blast Sad FM on our way to the island? Fine, he gives you a resigned shrug. Let's blast Sad FM then. Sad FM is a radio station specializing in sad, slow rock songs. You seem to know its frequency by heart. Get in and ride to the island. Wow, that sucked. The boat comes to a slow stop. Kim turns the engine off. Then there's silence. In the silence, a sputter of wings. A flock of quails takes off in the distance. Let's go, he whispers. Climb out.
And it would be terrible if there was just nothing important over here after all that intro. Let's return to the mainland. Can we just go back right away? That was really good. I'm being sarcastic. That was really good. The rest of the chain trails off into the ocean. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot on the coast. This leads to the depot on the land's end. Lieutenant looks at the mechanism overhead. Ah, yes, so it seems. What do you think it's used for? For bringing munitions to the island, maybe, and supplies. You could also lock the bay when you raise the chain. As a defensive measure, locking off that side of the bay. Lock it from whom? From enemies, he looks up ahead. Enemies of the commune of Revishal. This, this sea fort was a revolutionary fortification, I believe. Finish lot. Finish game. Thank you, Sovereign Snake, for the 2713 sub. Moon 2 Pregario, Moon 2 Kum, Moon 2 Pregegi. Thank you very much for those uh, crazy moon emotes. Ooh, excuse me. Thank you very much, Sovereign Snake. 27 months, goddamn. Makeshift bridge, the bombs were powerful enough to break the foundation. These tires are falling apart, they're at least 50 years old. Some fuel is leaked out of the barrel, black, viscous. There's a lingering trace of mazet in the air. Attention, inflammable. Oh man, that's like that's like the opposite of flammable. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. What's that? What's that flutter? The flock of quail departs. Now more than a hundred meters away, a hundred and two, hundred and five, underneath the flutter on the islet. There's. <clears throat> is almost no wind, just the light movement of air through the reeds, bulrushes swaying on the waterline, long dried leaves chafing against each other, like a silent orchestra tuning at the beginning of some major work of great importance to the, to the few who attend. To the west, a silent hiss, sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree to the east, the faraway roar of the city distant like today's dream, before it the sound of sand, the low tide filtered through its grains, a bird tending to its feathers. What if there's just like a crazy sniper that's here and he's just like, yeah, sometimes I just shoot into the city. Oh, did I kill someone? Oh, whoops. Sorry I caused you trouble. <laughs> what if someone's like put it, putting bullets into a, into, a, into a fucking fire and they just like shot out when they get hot and they just like, oh, one, one just happened to just fly across the city and kill this guy. Oh, it was a complete fucking accident. Ahead. A low hum, the air moves sl slow the air slowly moves through a concrete box through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow, a big building beyond that further north. Air flows out of a pillbox window. There is there is very little there. The air co cossets flowers on a meadow, absolute silence, reeds motionless, bull rushes motionless. Below that silence. Call du Mamadaka. Oh nice Kim. Yes. Momentarily the sounds are swept away. Pain shoots up your right foot and into your groin. It's pretty silent on this island. It is. It is. is that why we're stopping? Mm -hmm. Wait, I've listened to one more thing. Kim. Who knows how quiet it is? I have. Is that why we're stopping? Open your eyes. Stop listening. It's the barrel says insane clown, uh, mossy. You see a star with something. I didn't read it in time. ICM, this feels familiar somehow. RCM, it sounds like RCM, Revishal Citizens Militia. It does, why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. Was that a mistake up there? Hmm. Maybe not. It's impossible to say he looks toward the darkened door doorway. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revishal West was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. It's gonna be hard to say them. Carrying around all that weight on the busted crutch is making you pant. Oh man, we're failing everything because of endurance. What I'm hearing is we descended from the glorious revolutionary army. There were all sorts of groups and group usles back then. It doesn't really matter. 
he vows to inspect the, the barrel. Kim, what is the ICM? Insulidian Citizens Militia. It's the official name of the Communards Army, the Black and White Army of the Revolution. Sounds an awful lot like, okay, a, a white star points to the star on the label. No, he looks at it, an upside down star with its horns in the sky, the symbol of the commune. Are those spec stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean area symbol of the of Insulindi, known as the face in the sea. Looks old. What is it still doing here? After, he thinks, 44 years, there's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Yefrider. One of these barrels is still, it was leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. A little birch from the coin-operated viewer is still holding on. <laughs> oh, they got up there. The stairs are gone. All right, here we go. So we're going to go through here and come out there. This was once an armament rest. Twin cannons were attached here, medium distance, large caliber. Careful, these stairs have collapsed. Careful, Snake, that corridor is full of microwaves. Microgrid generator, an old cylindrical generator is nested above the ammo lift with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel checking for warmth. It's cold now, he concludes, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. What do these, where do these wires lead? What kind of generator is this? Tap on the side. What does this mean, a generator here? Where do these wires lead? He looks at the wall socket downstairs somewhere. What kind of generator is this? Liquid carbon. I would imagine it takes Mozat. He points to the open fuel cap on the side of the dynamo. The kind that's favored by vagrants and fuel thieves. It's been a long winter, long and cold. If anyone stayed here, they need a generator. Tap on the side. A hollow ring. The canister is empty. Dust falls from dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift. What does this mean? A generator here? I don't know. I am not a philosopher. <laughs> this is his idea of a joke. Let's laugh. I am. This generator proves the universe is material. Kick the generator. We're going to hurt our foot. He nods approvingly. He even smiles. I meant, why is it here? Someone with basic electrical skills has restored it in order to keep the room warm. Maybe it's the fire guy. The wind outside picks up suddenly with a faint howl. Inside, it's warm. Books, mostly fantastique and historical fiction. Oh, does he have the Dick Mullen? Dishes stained with sauce and fire. A survivor's kitchen. Fallen hour shirt. Nice. We got another one. Empathy for the scarf. Now we're just stealing this guy's clothes. A moth-bitten bedsheet keeps the wind out. You see candles planted on a broken rangefinder. Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor on a and on a makeshift cupboard. They are not particularly well organized. Most are soft covers, serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate d digest includes the classic animal adventures. Adventures. Among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine, Cathodique. Cathodique? I don't know that. For electrical engineering, then it's Back to Pulp, Light Erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Someone's made themselves a home. The lieutenant inspects a soft cover. Heroic, does anything stand out as unusual? Oh yes, under the bed there's a rather extensive collection of critical theory that is dour, life-non-affirming left-wing literature published by small imprints such as Abator Firm and Ousia. It's not exactly light reading. Look, Kim, powerful communist theory, rigorous and truthful. Look, Kim, deranged commie ran ranting. Look, Kim, downbeat dribble for people who can't get shit done. <laughs> Look, Kim, a book, left-wing. I have no comments. Do you? <laughs> Ousia, you know... 
enunciates the word diligently. Humanitarian sciences stands out. Not a lot of critical theory around in Revachal West anymore. Your incendiary remark has failed to provoke him. Wasn't there some in the, in the communist student's room? A student in the apartment's building seemed to have some as well. Well, yes, that one student did. The little, the little books seem inconsequential next to the big pile of frivolous entertainment covering them. Critical theory books, what do you think that means? Again, I am not a philosopher, but whoever has lived here, they have some education and a certain set of interests. Interesting. There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. He, 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 Lieutenant, inspects the bed. The linen is fresh, recently washed. How recently? Really? A flash of pain interrupts you, making you wince instead of letting the words out. Damn, this is like feeling the effects of this bullet wound. I like it. You know, officer, he looks at you with a touch of concern. You can rest here if you're feeling tired. I will keep watch. You can use some rest for what's ahead. Maybe a little shut-eye, just an hour, go to sleep. Yeah, let's do it. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe? The sounds of the sea beyond, beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close until, until... You feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. Where'd Kim go? Maybe it's all a dream. It's all a dream. It's all Wait, that's illegal. <laughs> that's a great expression. Uh... Oh, wait, we can't replace Kim because Kim's gone. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do we still put it there? Q2's final gift to us. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. You do? Aw, thank you, Q2. I like that you got the halo in there, too. Alright, let's put it down there. And let's hide it for now. And then when when it comes back, when Kim comes back, we'll we'll put it there. I'm guessing this is a dream. The tenant is no longer here. Go outside to the beach. Oh, it's Karl Marx. The door is still here. Closed. Feel strange somehow. You can't get in. All right, what do we do? What do we do? Must have missed something down here. Oh, you can go under this, okay. Makes sense, actually, I should have tried that. I propose that that's legal, Kim Emo. Hmm.
I really like the music in this game. Go down to the chain, there's something there. to the water now. Oh no, is it Kim? Kim, no! You see your footprints on the water. Oh, it's not a dream. Oh, interesting. Further. Cool. Dolores Day, Dolores Day, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship, airship bag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. Okay, don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. That This way you're already talking. But you don't even want to talk to her. She would only be cold and mean. Let her go. Let her go. This is the holy queen of the territories of Mundi and Insulindi. Think of the historic knowledge we could glean. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win her back. Win her back? How does that fit in here? And what is the holy suzerain doing here anyway? Heh, <laughs> heh, hey. Something's off. Where are you going? What's in the bag? Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive epic showdown. Heh, <laughs> heh, hey. 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 <gasps> hey, hey. Hey, that's all I get? Smile. I mean, hey to you too. She says that apprehensively. It's Day Chan. It's Day Chan, how are you doing? I'm doing really good actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. How are you doing, Harry? I'm not doing very well. I'm dying in a ruined flak tower. Blood is dripping down my chest. In my he I'm in my head, I miss you. Well, I'm in my head too. We're all in our heads. Do you miss me there? Sometimes. Not as often as I used to. So much time has passed. More than it seems here. She stares at her feet, the zebra stripes on the intersection, the lights of the video rental glow in her hair. Oh yeah, it's the video. Oh cool. Aw oh, man. Well done, game. Well done. This is this is everything I've always warned you about. Something is off. I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to she stops mid sentence, glances to her right, then looks at her bag. Where are you going? I'm going to Morova. To live there. In Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. What's in the bag? Your heart. Just my scepter. My globe crucigere. A spare silk gown. A toothbrush. Oh, she brushes her teeth! Travel documents. The crown of immortality. That's it. I'm down. That's one of that's one of my credentials. Brushes their teeth. Nice. Crown of immortality. Aren't you already wearing one? Oh, this. She corrects the wreath on her forehead. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna, and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say, then over her shoulder. Anyway. Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive epic showdown. All right, so her voice actress is absolutely fantastic, and I'm 99% sure it's the same voice that we heard on the phone, right? It's got to be. It sounds just like her. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really? She looks at you plaintively, really. We don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us, our love, our unborn daughters. It's all gone. 
I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Revachol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell. Forever. That's just the way it is. Do -do -do, do -do -do, do -do -do. Oh god, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try it now. <laughs> okay, is that a lie? Is it actually 97%? There's no way that's actually 97%. Is it a lie? But that's not a very good way for things to be. I get the feeling you're not really Dolores Day. I brought you this figurine of a headless fallen rider. Give it to her. No, really? C can we do that? I don't want it. She doesn't take it. It looks expensive. I don't want it. I thought you liked figurines. I thought the figurines were for getting you back. That's not what the figurines do, Harry. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, holy shit. This is good. This is good. This is really good, but then the figurines don't do anything. She looks at the head. I'm so impressed. She looks at the headless fallen rider between your fingers and doesn't know what to say. The figurines don't do anything, anything at all, but I thought the historic figure she had she liked war, game, war games and figurines. Yes, I thought it would be good. A form of communication where words have failed. Yes. Why do you have the quest? For this, this is why we had the quest. We had The quest was just setting this up. Way ahead of time. It was it was setting, the, like, like they, they planned for this. They knew this was going to happen later. And, it, like, try and get the figurines to the glass, the glass fucking stained glass window. What the, what the fuck are you trying to do? You're an idiot. Oh, I guess I haven't found the right figurine. Oh, no, no. And then, then it just sets up for the oh, fucking great. That's so good. It was a good idea, but she felt obliged by the headless fallen rider to give you things in return. Things she no longer wants to give you, so she refused. That's how it goes. Your figurine rider was naive. Maybe this revolutionary figurine, then. Show it to her. Maybe you can take this revolutionary figure. It's got a little musket. <laughs> No, please, please don't give me anything. What about dice? I had some custom dice made in this place, a Doom commercial area. Harry, I don't want things. I want to go to the Aerodome. Okay, I won't give you things then. I didn't ask for things. It's too late to give me anything. I would have liked these things a long time ago, the Headless Fawn Rider especially. But now only boring hell remains. Her crown of hair is aglow with the red, red of the neon on the corner like this. She tramples her feet for warmth. It's really, it's, it's getting really cold outside. It's all coming together. But that's not a very good way for things to be. It's not, but she looks at her feet. Little golden sandals cover her toes. But what? Tell me there's something good. I don't know why I said but. There is no but. That's it? That's it, yes. She looks up from her toes. We talked about it a million times. You'll get over it just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. Where? In hell? Stop, you're only making it worse for him. You never help with anything. <laughs> Good for me where? In fucking hell? I'm not getting over it all. You're right, I don't even remember who you are anymore. Ha ha. Maybe I've reached the end of the investigation. I don't remember who you are anymore. Ha ha, see? Her eyes widen. It just takes some time for you. It will take something like 20 years, maybe? It was hard for me too. Wow, I used to think I couldn't live without you. Like the, the, the implication that we're actually going to live 20 more years. Oh, she looks you straight in the eye. Her irises are light blue flecked with green. But I can. 20 years? That's, that's so much time. So you felt that way once? That you cannot live without me? It doesn't have to be like this. Maybe we could try again. Okay then, super okay. I still have other things I need to know. 20 years? That's so much time. Yes, it only took me one year, maybe two. She smiles and wipes her brow in relief. Whew. So you felt that way once, so you cannot live without me? Yes, but the time is gone now, so very gone. Alright, but I want I want to try I wanna do the kiss. I wanna do the kiss. Maybe we try again. No Harry, we can't. Why? Well we tried again and it didn't work. Is that how it is now? We should just all try good things twice and then give up by that logic, not you two. <laughs> Volition holding the line again. What went wrong when we tried again? I can do better. I can do better. Proceed. I don't know. Please. She shuffles from one golden sandal foot to the other. In the distance, the streetcar screeches. Why? Why can't we be together? Harry, we can't be together because you're insane. Her eyes turn to sorrow sorrowful ovals. Insane how? Insane like what? Like cool insane? Like wow, that cop's crazy? I'm not insane. Don't say that. I'm the sanest person I know. Insane how? They're turning moist now, her eyes. She slowly shakes her head and tries to get a hold of herself, brushing her hands in the gown. 
What do you mean by insane? You know what I mean. Everyone gets a little down. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a cop. It's not easy work. Like some kind of academy or something. Nod. Yes, I may know what you mean. No, you don't. You've worked there for so long, you can't even talk like a normal person anymore. It's always lists with you. Questions. Questions. Did someone say questions? They're not lists. They're trees. <laughs> This is another one, isn't it? We're in a tree right now. Yes, but it's not possible to talk without trees. Lists are absolutely normal. Everyone has them. You just list list everything you want to ask. It's not possible to talk without them. It's not just the lists or trees or whatever. She corrects the wreath on her head with her hands trembling now. You get sad, Harry. Too sad. People can't get that sad. It's impossible to watch. Other people get sad too, but not like you. You stay down for too long. You only communicated with encyclopedic trivia. I was so alone. Does that change depending on our skills? In conclusion, you're ill. You're an old, insane man, and you have to be in hell until the end of your life. You And I have to go to Morova. I think like some people are like that. They just spout out facts and nonsense. I get the feeling you're not really Dolores Day. I don't know what you mean. Dolores Day, she looks at you quizzically. It does not seem like a mystery she wants to get into. You're the ex-something. Your point to your head, the morning. I've heard you before, you're the voice on the phone. Oh, Harry, you shouldn't have done that. She shakes her head very slowly, her white hair brushing her shoulders. Do what? Call me like that. You ruined it. There was still a chance. You should have waited longer. She would have called you instead. I know, you would have called me yourself if I just let you. It was I was too impatient. It wasn't me, it was my hand. Raise your right hand. My fingers called you. Let's talk about something else. Oh, Harry, do you really think so? We haven't talked in years. I don't want to call you. I don't want to hear from you. I think of you less and less every year. Weeks go by without me remembering you. God, this is brutal. Brutal months already. Soon it will be years. Every season that passes, lights get less clear. I sit there in Morova in the holy gratitude of my bliss. I put my hand on my belly and sm Oh, my... Oh, man. Harry, why are you doing this to yourself? Holy fuck. Fuck! The air gets cold around you. She looks down on her stomach, then up at you. Her eyes are full of tremendous distance and mystery. Black-eyed dogs wander the alleys. Apple trees hang their bony limbs low over the patchwork of roof roofs. Red and black. Ravishel West, the evening sun. She's left in bloom, far away from us, our vast soul. Your name... Is Dora. That's what the voice said on the phone. Dora is short for Dolores. No, it can't be that. She's Dolores Day, the innocence of humanism. Now nah, that's just how you see her, Harry. Dora Dubois. Yeah, yes, Dora Dubois. I think that's why I think of Dolores Day. Are you Dolores Dora Dubois? Why? Why what? Are you Dora Dubois? Oh no, 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 no. She shakes her head. We're not doing that again. You're the ex something. Wasn't I Dolores Day just a second ago? Now I'm the X thing. You're confusing me. Look, I have to be in the Los Los Lausanne Aerodome at 10.20 p.m. I still have a light rail to catch. She keeps glancing over her shoulders nervously. I haven't even bought the tickets yet. We all, we all told you. Everyone warned you. Who? Everyone? Everyone. <gasps> Lizard Blaine is here. Literally all of you. I should have stayed down. I should have gone even deeper to a place where I never met you because it's impossible to meet people in the abyss of the void. I'm so I'm glad we're having this conversation. I'm getting so much closure. No, you're not. I'm glad too, but I have to go. My friends are waiting for me on the platform. I can't let them wait. It's impolite. What? You know what is impolite? Consigning a lieutenant detective over the Revachal Citizens Militia to eternal damnation. Cool, your friends. Say hi to your friends for, for me then. This is so grotesque. Say nothing, just look at her. She does not look back. Instead, instead eyes her fingernails. They're bitten, frayed. The evening wind blows in. The gown wraps around her like a white flag. You are point to, to your head. The morning. The morning. I don't understand. No, I meant morning. I'm grieving, but you're but you're not even dead. Oh my God, Harry, stop! I don't want to hear anything about the morning. Morning, someone who's still alive. Any of that. I can't do that anymore. I'm not 80 years old. I'm 32. People my age are not supposed to mourn. She breathes out. It sounds more like ang it sounds more angry than a sigh. On second thought, your Dolores Day, Queen, Queen Regent of the, of the Territories of Mundy and Insulindia and nothing else, conclude. Yes, Harry, I am. Things have gotten much better for me. Now that I am the ruler of the known world, she pulls up the silvery sleeve of her, of her gown to check the time. Oh god, it's already so late. I have to go, Harry. A tiny golden watch with red straps around her bony little wrist. So I'm worried if, if I say five that I'm not going to have time to, to fail four. 
Let's go five. Let's 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 risk it. We both said a lot of things. We were very young. It was her. I can feel it. I can see it in, see it in her tender long fingers, in her wrists. Her hand wrote it, said those things. Actually, you didn't say it. You wrote it in a letter, a handwritten letter. I kept it in my paperwork. As queen regent, I write a lot of letters. She brushes a strand of white hair out of her eye. You need to recite it to her for effect. All of it. No summaries. <laughs> I have it right here. Let me refresh your memory. Let's take a pause bitterly. Trip down memory lane and start reciting. Please, Harry, I don't have time for this. Take out the letter and read. Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest. Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows, until by the time I reach the fuel station, it has, com it has filled me completely. I step on the light rail and look back, something, something, bow collector. I know it will be like this until I walk back to you. You, you, every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You are, you have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Okay, stop. Yes, she surrenders. Are you happy now? No, I'm not happy. There's more. Kisses, kisses, kisses. I'm a police detective. I've heard of writing in that hand right now, so he said. Very well, she sighs. I wrote it. It, w it was morning. You slept. There was a, a hoarfrost on the ground when I left on Voyager Road. It was autumn, the first autumn, but Harry, please understand. It was a million years ago. No. It was a hundred million years ago. I was someone else then, filled to the brim with love for you, hanging on your every word. Oh, Harry, you were the coolest, but I am no longer that person. This, she points to herself, has taken her place. It will devour you, Harry. I will eat your mind. The light of the video rental store, sorry, the light of the video rental shines through her dress now. A DeLorean figure cut in black moves below. It's still her, her legs, her breasts, her hips. I was cool. Can't you turn back to the person you were? I can see, see her in you under the gown that and that wreath. Voyager Road, I know that place, where is it? There was a bow collector, a light rail, streetcar number. I was cool. The coolest, she closes her eyes. With your leather jacket and your boot cut pants, smoking in the bus stop, I wanted you to be the rest of my life that day. And you were, some of it at least. You were my first, my first kiss, my first time to have sex, the first and worst time I fell in love. I will always have that with me, it's a fact, but that is all it is. It's like a ticket stub, Harry. It doesn't do anything anymore, a ticket stub. Yep, yeah, let's talk about that too, she nods. Let's bring it up, the zoo. Where they only have one animal, in the garden. The day we went east of the river, to the aquarium first. I was sad about my mother. I don't even know why. The shimmer of the fish tank on my face, the octopuses. Today's stream title was actually going to be uh, Widow Aqua Aquarium. But I went with this one instead. It was just a day then, but to think... Were we there now? You could touch my hair, kiss me, talk to me about, about anything. Go, she shakes her head. Virtually anywhere in the world, not like now. Now our interactions are limited to pain and regret. That's sharp and precise. You're so sharp. No, it's, it's all you. I always loved you for it, but it could not save us. It could not make me stay. In the end, your mind just told you precisely how bad things are and who would want to stay around for that. Can't you turn back to the person you were? And my crown of immortality, no. She shakes her head. You scared her out of me. With your crying, you she stops. The awful time we wound up having the awful time we wound up having in the cheap rental flats you could afford. Can't you see? I can never think of think you're cool again. I can only think of that way about new people. A cheap rental with mold on the walls and the tap dripping cheap flats, so the rich man took you took you from me. Yes, I found someone for whom I can feel the same. A copy of my love for you, only this time he is careful and rich. He will not lose me. It will go somewhere. It will gr it will grow. Your heart burns through the blackness. You feel it. Uh, triacle? Triacle? Triacil? I think it's triacle, right? Of blood on the mattress below you. Harry, do you notice how none of this is very funny? No, this is very funny. Ha ha ha. Yes, you are the least funny part about me. I hate being that. I don't want to be anything for you. I hope the decades it takes for you to get over me had already passed. God, just twisting it. It's going to take decades for you to get over me. God damn, Voyager Road, another place. Where is it? I'm here, Harry. She looks around. We are on Voyager Road at the end of it, 300 meters from the stop. We used to come here to rent videos. There, she points across the water into the darkness. You could not pay the electrical bill. It became a lightless tomb. The years you spent training for the militia, my parents' money, it was no good. Surely the alcohol didn't help either. Was I, were we drinking? No, that's not it. It's super easy to quit drinking. It has no effect on human reaction relations of this kind, sure. 
She looks down at her toenails sticking out from under the, under her under the gown. Everyone has a little glass of wine every now and then. I certainly do. It's a queen regent thing. I don't think it was the alcohol. It was inevitability. There was a boat collector, a light rail street car number forty two. She nods sadly. This is the light rail. At, this is light rail. This is the light rail that took me to Koron, to school and work every morning. It's the same stop I met you in, Harry, a hundred thousand million years ago. No human should still remember the position of atoms. Position of atoms such e e eons ago. That's fine. It must feel unnaturally sad. A sadness so ancient it is shared even by archaea bacteria. What now? What happens now? What is next thing we talk about? Is there really anything left? If not, we can always repeat one of the things we have already talked about. Talk about it again. She looks over her shoulder. If you do not feel like doing that, you should let me go to the Aerodome. Can we do mass murder? That is very contested by modern historians. She tramples her little feet for warmth and adds, very contested. Plus, oh, now she actually is Dolores Day. You're only, say eh, you're only saying this because things didn't work out between us. I have to go to the Aerodome now. I don't have time to defend myself from these accusations. Oh, but she's still herself too. Oh, that's cool. I like her. I like it, I like it, I like it. Stop making her angry. She won't start loving you again if you call her a mass murderer seriously. Would you say you haven't behaved like a mass murderer with me? You were very bad to me too. She stops. We've talked about this like 7 million times now. I don't want to do any, any of that anymore. You're not even human. She shakes her head. I am actually very ordinary, Harry. Below this gown and wreath, I have an ordinary soul and ordinary thoughts. The only thing inhuman about me is this. She looks around. This thing you've made me into. I'm sorry for saying so, but I just hate it. What is this? This is so far gone, Harry. I don't even. No, you're special. You had glowing lungs. My lungs do not glow, Harry. I am just like all the others. None of us have glowing lungs. Stop making me into some kind of... She will, once you have erected the Temple of Light. I will build you a Temple of Light with my mind, a Temple of unimaginable proportions. It will be something no one else has, no one, no one has ever done before. I will build it with computers. I can still make your lungs glow. I know I can, if you only let me. You're right. You don't have glowing lungs. You don't deserve them. Fuck. I, I want, I want to do two, but one is like, I'll go one. An immortal temple of light? That sounds nice. I do want someone to do that for me. Who wouldn't? But not you. I don't want anything from you. An apricot-scented ghost wafts out of her, her skin, the fabric, into the flow of the air around you. All the roads will miss her footsteps when she's gone from here. A completely different world. Alright, so I'm guessing that no matter what, this fails. Like, it's 97% to give you hope. There's no way, right? Oh, wow. Okay. Double three. I hope we wake up kissing Kim. With your feet trembling from the steps you took, tepid and fearful, you stand against her, her body close to you, radiating warmth. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She is not kissing you back. But I succeeded. <laughs> oh no. This is not about failure or success. She was always going to she was always going to be horror. I should not have suggested it, and you should not have listened to me. I feel her breath. Her chest rising like a pillow, warm exhalations against the side of your mouth, her tender soul moving through her lungs. Hidden, distant, kept safe from you, her cheek against mine, feels like soft fuzz, a bird covered in down feathers brushing against your broken capillaries. The world's most precious material reserved for those she lets close enough to feel it. You are stealing a touch, it's not yours to take. Cold silver against my forehead, the delicate wreath on her forehead pressing into your temple. The silver is cold from the spring evening air. Squeeze her wrist. Her hand does not return the grip, her body is rigid, a current of unease courses through it. Distrust for you, the curve of her spine, her shoulders hunched. She keeps herself stiff, her center guarded from your emotions. Unresponsive to your guidance, move your mouth. Nothing, just pillows against you, unresponsive, but for the taste of apricots. Apricot scented chewing gum, you're not kissing me back. The moment is ending, she is going to move her face away from yours. Wait, was there a line dial? Was there a line there you couldn't read? Oh, there it is. Trying hard not to look at you when she withdrew and you held onto her hand, she tried not to look at your face and see the expression there. Brother, you should have put me in front of the firing squad. 
<laughs> you should put me in front of a fighting squad. I have no words for how I failed you. You didn't kiss me back. It's okay, suggestion. You didn't kiss me back. She breathes out heavily as if something painful has passed through her and shakes her head. I thought you would. I know you still love me. You can't not. Say nothing. Stand there like a useless dildo. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that one. She shakes her head once. One, she shakes her head one more time. The evening wind rustles her hair, blowing the old newspapers and fast food wrappings down the street. Why didn't you kiss me back? Why did you do that to yourself? You know I don't cheat, Harry. I never cheated on you. You're the apricot chewing gum scented one. No. She sh just shakes her head once more. I'm just Dora. That's it then. No, Harry, not yet. There is one more thing you have to see. She slides her hands down her chest onto her lower stomach and smiles. I'm pregnant. Is it mine? It's his, the man I heard on the phone. It's not mine. Swallow. Number two. Yep. Yes, he did it. She looks down at her belly, then up into your old eyes. I terminated yours. Don't you remember? You poor fuck. You poverty-stricken fuck. Now go ahead, she wipes her palms into the silk of her gown. Ask me more questions. Let's talk let's talk about something else. More questions. Ask more. Don't go. I have to, Harry, really. I've already missed the 830. Her our fingers wrap around the bag handle. I'm gonna go now. You have sworn a holy a holy oath, Harry. She herself begged you not to let her go. Wait, can't we sit down and have a coffee first? There's a cafeteria on the corner, point east. Hold on. What are you going to do in Morova? But I swore I wouldn't let you go. You told me. You asked me to be this way. Okay, I understand. Not nod silently like a martyr. No, actually, wait. I need to see my list again. I'm sorry. Where's my list? Wait. <sighs> There's no good option here. Let's try three. There's someone else that betrayed her, overwrote her, and I'm happy for it, happier for it. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 10 to, 1020 flight, she turns. Will we ever see again? Each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry, this is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? She looks around. A year, two, five years ago? How will I see you again then? Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week at least. And Harry, it really, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. Oh fuck, no wonder he drinks. Oh god, we should've stayed an alcoholic. Harry, we should've stayed an alcoholic. I understand the singing now. I understand the karaoke. I understand why you did it. Let's do it again. We have to do it again. I'm suffocatingly beautiful and young and I smell of tutti fruity chewing gum like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness after leaving you the first time so long ago, but this is intolerably bad. Oh yes, this is real darkness. It's not death or war or child molestation. Real darkness has a love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. God, it's just like she glides away. Well, that was the best scene in the whole game. There's no way there's gonna be a scene better than that. Amazing. Oh, it glitched and ruined it. You're up quick. How was your sleep? Let's solve the fucking case. My sleep was deep and invigorating. Try to cover up the blood seeping out of your hands, out, out with your hands. Actually, it was total annihilation, Kim. Swallow the blood and conclude. Let's comb the entire island centimeter by centimeter. That's the next step in the task chain. Just spit out the blood and get back to work. You're a badass like that. <laughs> Actually, it was total annihilation, Kim. He frowns. I did not want to wake you. Perhaps I should have. Was it a job dream? No, an ex-wife dream. The lieutenant nods solemnly. I understand. We've all been through similar things. It can it can be overcome. Let's solve the fucking case. My sleep was deep and invigor invigorating. Try to cover up the blood seeping out with your hands. All right, let's do. Let's solve the fucking case. Are you sure you're okay? You thrashed around, then you bolted up, half covered in blood from your wound. Swallow the blood. Okay.
Well, hello. Someone seems to have found himself a bottle of alcohol. Here's where the magic happens. Look at the bottle. Light reflects off the green glass of the Commodore in red. The gods have been generous. Better pop it open before they change their mind. Wow, the gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open. A child could have done it. I don't know about this. Fine, we're not worried. You'll crawl back to this bottle soon enough. We'll give you another chance. Booze always gives you another chance. Yes, it's merciful that way. It's your friend. Come back to it. We're all rooting for you. Not all of us. You passed your chance to start drinking alcohol for now, but don't worry. The option to unlock the option to unlock it becomes available again in two hours. Damn, volition's volition needs 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 fucking like fucking volition, man. You've earned it here. Max maxed out volition. There you go. Fucking maxed out volition. Congrats. All right. Um, Volition Chan. Yeah, there we go. Volley Chan. No, Volley sounds like Lolly. Oh, Top Volley! Top Volley! Yeah! Top Volley. Don't fuck Top Lolly. Unless. <laughs> Parker Sofri, she's under Mr. Say. Hoping to take a break from visual novels the next game. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. No reading on the next game, please. No way. Lizard from Hell. Hey, Lizard Blaine. Use 100 bits to say the other stream you asked about the pronunciation of Mario, but everyone is wrong because you have to roll the R. Mario. There you go. Mario. Uh, Paradidly has resubscribed for six months. Thank you very much, Paradidly. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lion Shard, for the four month resub. Thank you very much. That was four minutes ago. Four month resub, four minutes ago. It's like poetry. Thank you, Lion Shard. DGAF21 has subscribed for the first time at Primal. Can I prime time? Welcome to the Pickle Jar slash Pow Patrol. Please enjoy our pickles and pouts. Thank you, DJF. And thank you, Itsarun Kelly, for the three month three sub. Peepo Pog Climbing Tree Hard for House. Is that a real emote? Is that a real emote that has that has that long of a name? Holy crap. That's a little too long of an emote name. Holy crap. So that was amazing. Uh, possibly one of the best story scenes in any game I've ever seen in my entire life. I was really, really good. I'm really impressed with that. It's not just not just the presentation and, and, and what happened. It's just like how the whole game seemed to have been building to that. Um, in a lot of good ways. I really, really like that. Rivals the Baron and Witcher 3. It's f fucking Baron and Witcher 3 is nowhere near that. And I like the Baron and Witcher 3. Baron and Witcher 3 is nowhere fucking near what we just saw. Okay, so we have three, three points here. What should we spend them on? Encyclopedia is so low, huh? You can miss out on it if you don't sleep. Wow, rip people who don't see it. This great blast storm must weigh over 10 tons. Rust peels off of it. Off it. You see a small door nested in, inside the, a larger one. A heavy steel blast door. This is There is a conventional keyhole above the handle. It is very small. What's on the other side? Another part of the island probably. The lieutenant looks into the keyhole. The lock looks like it could still be usable. How do we open this? He looks at the door. Then at his bigger, bigger brother. Then at the lock. Then at its bigger brother, sorry. Maybe this is one of those doors we don't open. How about we get in the boat and just go along and get to the other side? He's right. It would be better to open its big brother. A powerful engine hangs under the ceiling. It must control the blast door. You're right. We open the big one. Do you see the controls anywhere? I think there's a console just southeast. He shuffles his feet to stay warm. Let's look around. Getting the blast door open seems like the best plan. This hatch is jammed shut. Water rushes below, far below. Damn. Let's go in there and catch Monokuma. If you ever make a video on this, will you dare to take footage from the stream with Pickle Kim at the bottom? Absolutely. Of course. Of course. The world needs to know about Pickle Kim. 
a firing slit you can't see inside. Just never address it either throughout the whole entire video. Uh, thank you, Pingman47, for the new sub as well. Thank you very much. Welcome to Prime Time. Welcome to the Rub It Up Sub Club. Or Pout Patrol, if you prefer that. We've decided to dial back on the cringe. So far, we're keeping it, keeping with it. This mean a direct hit to take out such a huge chunk. This is the sound of cargo ships. Signal horns echo on the water. The reeds sway strangely. No, it's nothing. The ice cracks under your feet. Be careful not to fall through. And then we died. Pain in your pelvis makes you wince, then you continue. The inside of the fortress, you can make out the console and blast door. The cringe is worse than ever? No way. You don't know how far we've cringed in the past. The weather artillery map showing coordinates in the Bay of Revachal. An old medicine cabinet newly stocked with drown mine. Loom fuel canister. Oh, another bed. Let's go see her again. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits like two eyes in the wall. This looks like a good place to aim from. Lieutenant looks around. He steps closer with his hand on his gun and inspect the mattress. Single-person mattress, modern civilian use, brand name Majori. There's a fuel stain on the cover along with cigarette burns. And an empty can of beans on the ground next to it, filled to the, br to the broom with cigarette butts. Pick one out of the can. The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter, the brand Tiormotri, whatever, like the ones we found at Land's End, remember? It may have been wrong when I said it was unimportant. He stares into the can for a second. This means the same person could have visited both locations. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside, though. If people live there, they keep it tidy. This may, this here may also be the smoking spot, or the uh, smoking spot, and inspect the wall. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you like a little window. Touch the concrete first. Quite old and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. Look through the hole in the concrete. The spring screech as you lean out on the mattress. Sorry, the spring screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation, a tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of the Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you. There's a tiny like a tiny landscape painting, one kilometer across the water. It looks, the ruins look familiar. On the left, a towering skyscraper, its top floor shaved off by artillery fire, Cape Side Apartments, Rue de St. Gislaine, 33A and 33B. On the right, the red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling and rags, Rue de St. Gislaine 10, the doomed commercial area, and between the two, the box, the box-shaped silhouette of the whirling and rags, you see a small fleck of white on the rooftop, the upstairs window of Clash's room in the, in the snow, reflecting light. Motherfucker, this, there it is. Do you have line side of the window? More than that, Kim, with a pair of binoculars, I would be able to see inside the room. A pair of binoculars or a scope of a rifle? He points to the makeshift bed. You'd be prone, lying on the mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. He pats you on the back, three small pats in a row. Damn, we, like, we're in the mailbox now. I think we have it. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. Visual calculus, affirmative, finally. In our defense, nothing, nothing pointed here. Many, many leads point elsewhere. You're right. He looks north over the fortification, then at the mattress. Then again, his face twitches. Could the shooter still be here? Where? He looks behind his back in Martinez on this island. He does not answer, just nods with his back hunched. He looks around once more and says, we should move now. Turn away. Damn, we slept on his bed too. Shit. <gasps> what if it's Dora? Oh no. She wants to make sure that she's keeping us in hell. Your eyes feel in the back. Someone's watching you. You can't say where. I mean, she'd end up here. She's such an explorer. Which is broken. Russ has, has, must have eaten. Russ has eaten what remains of the chain. The depot that supplied this chain is, is long gone from the coast. Did we get a new... Um, No, we didn't. thought maybe we might have gotten a new thought. Strange feeling looking at the water. Maybe you, sh you should just wander off into the sea. Leave it all and walk in. But how did we know this is what the outside of the island looked like in the dream when we hadn't been out here before? Why? Perhaps there's someone there under the water waiting for you, where it has always been. 
smelling of tutti frutti and betrayal, but it's cold. Yes, cold and still, but love is warm like the inside of her mouth. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. No, no, we're not starting with that. Not now, not this time. The thought is, this thought is over. Raise your sight. In the snowing mirror of the bay, you see Martinez reflected. Tall edifices of ruins reach into the water like shimmering towers and the shacks too. Pine trees and motor lorries upside down. Islets and posts like stepping stones lead into the water in front of you. Go, step in. It's been too long. Shake your head. I feel like we missed something here. Do, 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 do. Need to put fuel in the thing. Green paint flakes off the mono block. Oh, aluminum cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, and even a keyboard. Run your fingers across the keyboard. The keys rattle like teeth. This keyboard hasn't been functional in decades. What is this then? The console of an anti computation device. The lieutenant points to the wires running into the machine. The generator upstairs with wires coming out. They terminate here. Could this open the blast door? Possibly. He inspects the dials. Urgence. Overt. Alumer. Radio diffuse. It sounds like this device was used to control electronics here. Maybe it still does. This device was used to control the electronics in the room. It could open doors, control lights, function as a radio computer. Turn on. Emergency open. Sorry, turn, emergency open, nothing happens. We need to restore power before using this officer. The generator that he looks upstairs, it didn't look like there was fuel in it. Then he looks in the dim light, dim light to his right. We should look around outside. There are barrels all over. Maybe one of them still has something in it. Or we could get some from the boat engine. Failing that, we could go back to mainland and get some. Not in agreement. The console looks on. Blah, 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 blah. All right, we have some already. Let's go, let's go do it. Pour fuel into the tank. Intent assists you holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown viscous fluid pours out and the room fills with a chemical smell. I actually kind of like that smell. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The tenant flicks the, the switch. I like the smell of gasoline. Anyone with me on that? The recoil starts. The recoil starts wakes. The recoil start wakes. Hmm. Maybe that's right. I don't know what a recoil start is. So maybe that's probably correct, I'm guessing. Wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old war horse before selling down to a rattle. That should do it. A dim golden glow animates the console faint like a ghost light. Urgence over. Okay, yep. Yeah. It's on. Turn emergency open. Slide. Radio dial. The dial slides under the dusty glass, dark and silent despite the power being on. You make out the defunct stations of the UKV frequency. The words Feld Insular are written on the on the band. An idea lights up in your head. Maybe we could contact Suna, the programmer lady. She could open the door for us remotely. Lieutenant inspects the indicator. This is an air gap system off air. I think they call it. That won't work. Are you sure? No, I'm not, but it would be very... But it would not be a very good military technology if programmer ladies could control it remotely. Also, it's ancient, incompatible. Push, light, interior. The lighting in the room turns on with a sizzle, a dim ambient orange. Turn, emergency open. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as this light shines in. Okay, well, how's the person on the other side of this? Unless they've learned how to climb around and we haven't. Wow, this is taking a while. Still not done. Okay. After you, Lieutenant gestures at the opening. Before, outside, when we were walking across the sand, I felt someone watching me. So did I, not back there, but I felt it since we came here. What's there? I point to the door. I don't know. A thin wisp of smoke rises from the charred black fire pit. The wind picks up, the, picks up, then dies down again. What if we get into another fight? Don't worry, he takes out his sidearm, checks the barrel, then holsters it again. I have a gun. My gun is out of bullets, by the way. Then it's extra good that mine is not. Okay, give, give me a, Kim, give me a bullet. Kim, Kim, I've missed every shot I've ever fired, but give me a bullet. Come on. Come on. Kim, 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 Kim.
So this is from Kalipu. Look at that clean line. Clean lining? Clean line work? I'm not an artist. Look at that. Where's the yeah yeah yeah? Where's the yeah yeah yeah? There's one here. Where's top volley? This is cool. I like this. This is how everyone is deep down, right? Everyone is is a pile of a uh, pile of instincts. Kind of. I'm only half kidding. My skills talk to me every day. They really do. It's just not laid out as uh, as blatantly as the game is. This is awesome. Thank you, Kelly Poo. Also, thank you, Macho Man Randy Sanchez. <laughs> For the new sub, welcome to the to the to the wrestling weeaboos, or the weeaboo wrestlers, whichever one you like. Macho Man Randy Sanchez, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for this. Inside each wrist there are two wolves. One wolf is named Toby, the other wolf is named Toby. Both wolves are named Toby. I fucking love that man. <laughs> Alright, is this it? Is this the final showdown? Is it going to be someone we know? Is it going to be Gart? Gart's going to be here with his fucking bird. He'll be like, ah, detectives, you finally found me. I'm a secret agent. A rubber dinghy. It's deflated. Broken. Small white flowers blossom all around you. Who the fuck's that? The air smells sweet and scary somehow. Okay, I got a bunch of theories, but they're all like half half cooked, so who gives a shit? We're not going to say anything. We're just going to go and see what happens. But first, thank you, Rainadon, for the new sub of Prime. Welcome to Prime Time. Welcome to the Pickle Jar. Thank you, Rainadon. Thank you, Anonymous, for gifting a sub to um, Nacho Man Randy Sausage. <laughs> Welcome to the Weeaboo Wrestlers, Nacho Man Randy Sausage. <laughs> uh, was that planned or just a happy accident? Like It's a response, clearly, but is, was it a planned response? The Deserter. An old man wearing an old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth. <laughs> and spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids to meet yours. And clouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. Are you the fire guy? You've retained your eyesight. Did you close the blast door? Nice gun you have there. Sir, I need you to put that, that 
put down that gun so we can talk further. We're with the police. I'm with the police. You can keep the gun, but keep it down. Not one move. Proceed. Are you the fire guy? Oh, what now? I can't hear you. Did you really tell? Did you recently tell two kids to put 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 out their fire? Two twins. I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. The position sounds like a hiding place. Fire guy, regressive bourgeoisie henchman, can't even talk like a grown-up. Was he spying on Classia through through the through the through the scope of his rifle, and he saw someone that he recognized and was like, "Fuck it, I'm taking him out." Is it just that simple? You retain your eyesight. My eyesight, yes, <clears throat> helps me see all this shit. Did you close the blast door? I did, and you opened it. How? I feel the generator, then use the console. I should have burned that console down. She shakes his head. I mean, like, we have a boat. We just could have come around. How did you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music playing on the water. Told you we shouldn't play sad FM. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't say that, Kim. <laughs> I did. We've entered a world where where he said you shouldn't. It's the, it is the only world. It was not rock and roll. It was sad FM. Sad FM, huh? I always hated that station. Oh, he knows Plague, it. magic, counter-revolutionary dirges. Sadness is a mental illness, a weapon of the bourgeoisie. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate, hip-gyrating mental illness music. Okay, when you're, when you're starting to say the, the fascists had a point, I think you're too far gone. Nice gun you got there. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. Gets the job done. Is that a Belmar grave? It's a Dragon 446. A Samaran rifle? How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Xinyao commune. Military aid. He pats the rifle. The, Hin the Hin Hinziao commune? You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk wiped from a board. His gaze turns inward. I'm with the police, you can keep that gun, but keep it down, not one move, proceed. This seems aggressive. No. Who? Who? Kim, did you just roll snake eyes? No, the lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's head and says, Put it down now, sir. Or you're going to blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. Oh, okay. Maybe he wasn't the one that shot. It's out of bullets. The old man lays the rifle down carelessly, then looks looks at it lying there. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound, a strange sadness like a song. You should listen to Sad FM. What did you say? The future teaches you to be alone. The present. Let him say it. The present. To be afraid and cold. The old man pulls back the hood of his plastic cape and looks up into the sky. It's blue-gray, the same color as the sea. Those words the future teaches you. Real music, real prolet kilt? He nods. That's r la revacholerie, not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chason, chanson de soldat of the black and whites. You need to address that remark. I'm not a misanthrope. I'm a half-dead police officer That's who's just doing his job. The job of a shit -licker. What is the La Rever Colliery? It is the anthem of the World Revolution. His eyes are fixed on the sky, one of three. In grad, they sang Brave Children, Favorites of History, and the Hins Yao it was. And in Hins Yao it was, he struggles to remember, then gives up. So Samaritan shit, I guess. La Rever Colliery, I heard that name somewhere else in a dream. How does it go, the song? How did it go? He looks, up at, he looks at the gun on the ground. At his gun on the ground, and she said slowly, Something about shooting rabbits, I don't know, I can't remember. It doesn't matter, it's gone now. He waves erratically, with his hand annoyed that he can't remember. A little tremor passes through him. Pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stocked and patched in places with tape and wire. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a like a crutch that's seen too much trouble. Travel, not trouble. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. 
On the butt, you see Vespertine writing burnt into the wood. Triangong 4.46 millimeter, made in Hinziao. It's as he said, it's a Triangong made in Hinziao. No one said it has to be a Belmar grave. The lieutenant does not take this, take his eyes off the old man. We were just passing. Why is he being aggressive? Maybe he's pissed because of what happened in the city. From ballistics, it could have easily been a Triangong too. Doesn't matter if it was made in Shanth. Shant, whatever. All it has to do is use jacket ammunition, and it does. This uses jacket ammunition 4.46, the right type and the right caliber. Lieutenant nods, glancing at the gun. So the gun. The old man keeps following your motions with his gaze. His left arm twitches suddenly. Some kind of involuntary response. Something is slightly off with his motorics. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It can be used against him in a conf to get a confession in time. Who are you? My name, he looks across the water, then back at you, is Yosef Lilianovich Dros, political commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachal. And I don't know that the war's over. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. His eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. The Commune of Revachal. Lieutenant forgets to close his mouth. Do you mean the ICM? You're a holdover from the from the Insuludian Citizens Militia, the Army of the Rev Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07, trained in the École de Control Arienne, and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit in the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 50, 43. <laughs> You've been on the island for 43 years? No. He looks into the fire. A wisp of smoke rises from somewhere between the charred logs. I've been on other islands too. I was on resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was on E48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was, he thinks, 22 years ago. Again, you've been hiding here for 43 years? 43 years and 10 months. That's insane. It's not how a human being should live, but I had to. He grimaces clearly in pain. I couldn't just forget. I couldn't just forget what I saw. He just couldn't. You can give up. He nods, but he can now. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting? He looks across the water. Where the afternoon grows late. On Rue de Cinque Slime, people walk home. Streetlights will soon be lit. Further inland, the, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children. Street hawks and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. Alt alto cumulus clouds form above the Precinct 41. I think I'm saying that wrong. Two police officers step out of the Whirling and Rags cafeteria. Satellite officer Jean Vicomer inspects a series of burnt black letters splashed across the plaza mosaic. Oh man, they remembered it. Patrol officer Judith Monod points west of the fishing village. She glances at her she glances her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. The officers go, leaving behind the writing. Still smoldering. One day, it says, I will return to your side. Always waiting, the old man turns his eyes from the shore and back to you. For what? For her to return. Her who? Girl Child Revolution. Girl Child Revolution. Dance Dance Revolution, as always. I'm afraid she's gone. She better come. I too have given my life to Mezovian socioeconomics. I dare not dream anymore. Nothing in history is guaranteed, but revolution is still a possibility. Girl Child Nation is too strong for that. No, this is a vulgar criticism. He blinks his black eyes. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try, whatever I do. What has he done? Perhaps a confession will lighten the load. What have you done then? This is not the time to push. The old man suddenly looks around, confused. What can I do? What is there? You said you deserted your unit. I was just 16 years old, 15 when I was volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. He clears his throat. And of courage too. Lapse of faith? You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took for what? For reaction to take hold. What's reaction? Petty bourgeois terror. It's all in, it's in all men. It wasn't reaction. You were just afraid. Yes, we all have a tiny bourgeois person in us trying to run away. <laughs> I understand. Communists are natural cowards. Quantity over quality. And when was this exactly? Number one. It's not. The, it's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. It's impossible not to be afraid. It remains unclear what it is. And he makes leaps. He makes leaps. He doesn't expect you to follow. And this was when the lieutenant instinctively looks to his notebook, but does not take it out. May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. He looks north. The horizon was black with coalition airships. The petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like like it formed. 
the clouds, storm clouds, when they started shelling, it was dark magic. That's a cool image, dark magic. The combined might of international capital all at once, all the green and terror in the world torn to Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in in the flak tower, he gestures toward it. Huddled on the floor, the artillery was 80 kilometers away in ozone, but I knew, I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room, he looks east. A terrible shame still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it, the shame and smallness of what he became. You didn't go to the map room. No, I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland. In the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak, a mouse frightened of the ordnance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. T -t 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 -t. He looks at the sky. What was that? Airships. I climbed out. He closed his eyes into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had, I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too, shattered. <clears throat> They'd all drowned in the lower levels or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. He opens his eyes and stares right, right through you. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from the, from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone, everything you love, all the hopes and tenderness in the world. In in the word, it has to take it off just just for one second to do the deed, and then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. He's silent for a second. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know that the bourgeois are not human. You've lost your mind. I've always suspected the same. That's definitely not, that's definitely enough now. Say nothing, let him finish. I had, I had to, I had to fight it. I had to never stop. The old man falls silent. His black eyes keep piercing your skin as he looks to some great distance behind you, shaking his head slowly, retreating from it. What is this place, this island? It's not an island, droit, droity? He looks around. It's a defensive fort fortification of the commune of Revachal, and I am its last surviving defender. Who was it used for? The congenitally deformed king Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachal. We captured it in O2, retrofitted the fort with an, uh, an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. You mean the landing we taking in Revachal? Coalition military called it Operation Death Blow. He winces. I later found out on the radio they called it Death Blow. You're one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? Okay, we had 50 million people on Kalu alone. First, I'm not one of them, coalition military. Murderers, I know what you mean. You don't know, you haven't seen it. He shakes his head slowly. Iblis, Iblis? The black-eyed angel, he nods. Satan, Satan, Ahura, the darkened one? How have you, how have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? He looks at his worn running shoes. I steal. Now hold on there. That's a choice. You could become self-employed. Create the system. You're insane and grotesque. Everyone steals. Vegetables, supplies. It's the life of a dog. He coughs once more, then puts his hand on his belly. How's your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. He does seem frail, gaunt for his age. More like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. The RCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. I need to die. A droll smile stretches across his mouth. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. We have Dramamine and other opiate-based patients painkillers you must be in pain this is a serious situation you need to be looked over and we can do it number one a light goes on in his eyes he smacks his dry lips i have been running out of that stuff how you cope mentally i haven't i have holes in my brain years missing others filled with pain only a decade of his eyes roll into a skull and back i don't know what inferno not appreciatively i also live in hell i also have holes in my brain point to your head you know so is about to say something I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult mentally to live in isolation. Traitors, it's better alone, he nods toward Martinez. I watch the people of the, of the city turn the lights back on, more and more each year, ruins glimmering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. He looks down at his shoes, his face parched from the sun and the wind. There's a wince of pain in there somewhere. How have you concealed yourself? all these years it was hard in the tens he shakes his head i didn't have partisan training there were they were searching for stragglers those bloodhounds he closed his eyes floodlights on the water at night there were posters campaigns we communards still hoped and still hoped and they needed to snuff that hope out the east capulate cap capulated um 
no, capitulated. Sorry, capitulated. Martinez and Cole City were turned to dust. He turned. He looked south, but Jamrock, Falberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Mazov coursing through their veins, and others too. Some cordons of Revachal were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. He shakes his head. Soon they all went silent. The frequency's dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? At night, I used the dinghy. He nods toward the deflated tire in, in the reeds. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot. The commons, too. They start snitching. In the city, you move underground. From bunker to bunker, he nods. Oh, could you get the door open? Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... He falls silent. His, his gaze fixed on the, on the shacks huddled together across the water. Why don't you just walk there? The weapons cache under sink is line 22B. Point to it in the basement. Have you been there? He looks at you, then pulls the raincoat tight around his neck. So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Belgraves, right? Belmar Graves, right? They were damaged beyond use, I know. So you've been there. Sleeping, he coughs. Some nights, ammo scrounging and other on others. Those Margraves were shit even before they were before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting, little dots on the map you walked across. Why don't you just walk there? I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. There's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker? He coughs. I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker. They stored leaflets there, broadcasting equipment to made broadcasts. I think. Propaganda officers, I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys killed themselves. A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. He stares at the ruins of the Feld building. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the, on the ground. One more question. Do you smoke Teomotori cigarettes? I do, he coughs. I ever smoked them on the mainland, point to Land's End. They're good, he nods. Plenty of tar. I like that boy on the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century. Tell me another thing. The old man looks across the water. Uh, you said this is your termless surrender. You were the RCM. He waves in your general direction. The coalition-appointed mob that reinforces bourgeois morals. Bourgeois G morals in Revachal. <laughs> We're not coalition appointed. We just try to help people. That's right. We're with the good guys. We enforce the law. We keep these animals from killing each other. I know what it looks like, but I have secret plans to turn the RCM into a Mazovian revolutionary unit. Nope, we understand the economy. We're with the RCM. Let's leave it at that. We're not coalition appointed. He stares at you coldly. You're the RCM. You represent the moralist international, the enemies of humanity who took the city. I represent their adversary, Le Parti Communiste du Insulendi. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to, to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. His hand shakes and he breaks into a coughing fit. A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. Rene, the royalist on the coast, said, You never signed the Revachalian instrument of surrender. Liberal re reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. He draws his breath. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? He just wipes the blood from his from his chin. Honorable. That's insane. You're insane. Yep, he stares at the fire pit. Radio shows, speed racing, sporting goods. None of it is real. So you're a communist, sold, communist soldier from the communist army. No, I'm not a soldier. I'm an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not not the army. But you said you were trained and assigned to the defense corps. Trained, he nods, in historical materialism, then assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. Wait, what does a political commissar do? The old man does not answer. He tilts his silver head and looks at the reeds. You see a small tremor pass through his legs. The lieutenant speaks softly. His job was to assure the army answers to civilian control and follows the, ideolo the ideolo ideology of the commune. Scientific co communism, the tracksuit clad old man is suddenly reanimated. A commissionaire politique is a night philosopher of the revolution, a future human, awakened from shutdown by the promise of ideology. That means you're a trained communist, right? He nods slowly, then another tremor. A trained communist? Damn. I'm also a communist. I'm a nationalist. I'm a nationalist, by the way. Point to yourself. I'm a moralist. I'm a revolutionary, too. Today, the real revolutionizing is done by entrepreneurs. I'm not really into politics myself. Say nothing. Yeah, number five. You're an ert lumpen with a gun. Detective Lieutenant gives you a stern look. We do not. We have not come here to discuss ideology. He then turns to, to the old man. What else is there in life, Kim? We have come to ask questions regarding a murder investigation. Kim, you don't have a Twitter account. Clearly. The old man spits into the fire pit. He does not say anything more. A jitter passes his lower body. 
The expression on his face is unreadable. There's some sort of interference there. Neurological? I have another serious question for you. There's nothing serious in, in, in this world. He looks at the gun in your hand. It's a farce. What have you been using this gun for? I've, I've used it for killing people. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're that's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property? I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Interesting, Lieutenant nods. During or after the war? There is no after the war. He shakes his head and smiles, his teeth rotten black. Class war is never over. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay, okay. This is it. You can feel it, like battery acid on the tip of your of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while, but but what? This is what you live for. This is the shit. The great serotonin jackpot. The solution. Going straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. So you're saying you kill people after active fighting stopped? Did you use that gun to shoot and kill Colonel of the security contractor, Colonel? I know you want to tell me. Have you killed anyone with that gun in the last week or two? Wait. So, wait. So which do I say then? Nothing comes to you. Silence as black eyes look at you. And in them a chill, like electricity running up your spine, crawling into your skull. What? All is not as it seems. Detective, Lieutenant turns to you with well-disguised impatience. Damn it, ask it already. He wants to say. Let's go with one. What did I just say? He keeps shaking his head erratically suddenly. He brushes something out of his eye. What did I just tell you? Don't drop the ball now. I know you want to tell me. Hmm. There was a line that says he doesn't like euphemisms, but like number three isn't really a euphemism, but it's not as direct as number two. Fuck it, two. The who now? He leans in and cups his ear. He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it. The corpse in ceramic armor hanging behind the whirling in rags. Did you shoot him? The fascist death squad who took a bullet in his mouth on the night of March 4th. His name was Ellis Cor Cortenaire. He was part of a security detail here in Martinez. A beautiful strong man sent here by the honorable private military company, Crennel. You know who I mean. The fascist. Oh yes, that one. He looks up, the up at the sky and clacks his tongue. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? Lieutenant takes a sudden step toward him. I'm a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Remishal. He, he spits a big one at the lieutenant's feet. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. A drop of blood in the saliva. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The scent of blood in the air, but what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks? Suddenly all those tracks are so confusing. Go with something else first. I don't need your cooperation. I've got this. Show him the Triangon 446. We've done the ballistics. Point to the tower. The shot came from this island. Come on, what am I forgetting? Hit yourself on the side of the head. <laughs> uh, okay, let's back off for a moment. Tell me this. I want to do composure. Are you... F For a 60-year-old man with stomach trouble who spent his entire life on an uninhabited island, he seems surprisingly fit. That's it? Squinted him. Can we level up our composure? I don't think we can. He's prone to erratic hand gestures and clearly malnourished, but that's it. You can see no more by looking at a such frame. The moment passes and you say, that's it for now, old man. Stay put. I ain't going anywhere. Can I level up composure? Nope. 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 Oh. All right. Minions of capital. What do you want? I don't need your cooperation. I got this. We've done the ballistics. Went to the tower. The shot came from this from this island. I saw you poking around there looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead f faces. A jitter passes him. Did you like the view? Reddit it, but give us harmonic coins. No, it wasn't 97. It wasn't 97. It was 92. You only get a million harmonic coins if it's 97. 
you had direct vis visibility. There are embrasures in the concrete specifically meant for a top faller to use, and you had a long range rifle in your position possession. Lieutenant softens his voice. You've been here a long time, Mr. Droz. Too long. You clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. The man interrupts him, then coughs. I've done my part. He's practically admitting to it. Dead faces for faci fa fascist. He's done his part. Just one thing remains unclear. The rifle does not seem to have a scope. One thing. Where's the scope? How did you make the shot without a scope? We have everything else. View is perfect. With a pair of binoculars, I could have seen in the room. Because it's a sniper's nest, you stupid fuck. Radio Gosh is right. You have worms in your brain. Another sudden twitch, then one more in his right eye. Almost. He almost burst there. Keep piling arguments. Anything. Where's the scope? Forget, forget about your stupid fucking scope. I don't know where it is. Find it yourself. It's your problem now. He lost it. He just doesn't know where it is. Forget it. Push on. You said faces? You're admitting you killed him? You're sad for a fascia brother, aren't you? One twig got broken, now the other now the other are sad. He waves his hand, there's a twitch, then one more then one more one in his right eye. Almost, he almost burst there, keep piling arguments, anything. Don't need your cooperation, I got this. Heh. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around around that use military granite great ammunition, are there? It's a real gun, he points to your sidearm, not like your little musketeer pistol. I've seen you prance around with that, jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons, he chortles, going against automatic rifles with those toy guns. Of course you've got those boys killed. He would have a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. So he saw you, okay. So what? Don't let, don't let it divert you. We saved a lot of them. Elaine, um, and that musician. We handled it. Stop changing the subject. We had the murder weapon. Point to it. You know what? Lieutenant looks at the weapon demonstratively. You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? Dramatically ask. You think we have the murder weapon? <laughs> I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. Lieutenant takes out his notebook and draws a single line. This feels good, doesn't it? Tying things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. The old man does not say more. He just glances into the reeds and then twitches once more. Like a marionette on some invisible string. This pushed him, but not enough. Just a little more. Come on, what am I forgetting? Hit yourself on the side of the head. Wait, here it comes. The goddamn, the goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clash's roof. Oh, yes. There were Maybells in the grass when you got there, and Maybells on Classia's classes balcony. And nowhere else, nowhere in all the Martinez have you seen them. Wait, don't forget the footprints, the diagonal prints and the dust in the secret space behind Clash's bedroom. Now they're gonna come up. Of course, thank you, Head, thank you. You got it, remember, the footprints were, were like no modern soul. Maybells behind the victim's window. I saw them growing here, point to them. Damn Maybells, he looks at the blossoming field, the whole highland is turning white with them. So many this year, too. The spring is coming. No, it's already here. Wash the filth away. I haven't seen these flowers anywhere else in Martinez. Only here. They blossom on the islets before. We fertilize them with our blood. He looks to the water. Resurrection was snow white in May, before they ruined it. South, the Bay of Martinez is dotted with little freckles of islets turning green with white flowers and white snow. The coast, too, before they piled their containers on top of it, filled with broken, useless trash for fat-fingered bourgeois children to play with. You must get around a lot to stay undetected all these years. Lieutenant's voice is soft, friendly. Do you know any secret paths? Pinball workshops? I may. A curious tremor passes his face. A young woman called Classia. Ring any bells? Flowers like these were behind her window. Classia. He knows her, but hasn't heard her name. Maybe he got her documents. Yes, Classia. You hadn't heard her name, had you? My ears don't reach the city. You know her, right? She had, she had intimate relations, relations with the victim, the mercenary. With the victim, he turns his sight from the whitening field of flowers and falls silent. Then the muscles in his jaw twitch, spasm. There is a small tremble, looks like a smile, a crooked smile, yet isn't quite voluntary. He's about to burst. Don't leave any loose ends. Get him on everything. I wonder what brand of boots you're wearing. Everything is brands with you, individualists. Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa. He looks at his running shoes, covered in mud. Some shit. Show me the soles, please, Mr. Dross. Fucking imbecile. The old man stretches out his leg. A black and white spiral pattern covers the sole of the worn out old running shoes on his feet. The marker is Sansarik. The model is Corabiel and the skies is 43. These are not the unusual horizontal pattern shoes soles you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. The size fits, but not the sole. Lieutenant comes to the same conclusion. Wait, maybe it's simpler than that. Oh, sure. All right. Fuck you, game. 
Sire, he doesn't have to be wearing them right now. People change souls doesn't mean you weren't there near the room where the victim died in, sneaking around. Racking those brains, are you? He squints at you, black pearls gleaming with hatred, desperate to report something back to your masters. They must have really loved that dead fuck. The attendant gives you a quick sideways glance and nods to acknowledge. The prints were his, you can see it in, in those eyes. He can't keep them from flickering, looking for something. The old man stares at his sewn prints in the ash around the fire, silent suddenly, some strange process within him, a, gu a gush of wind, seagulls in the distance. He suddenly jerks the life. You know who he was, a coalition trained murderer, armored and armed. He wasn't human, a blunt end of a hammer dripping with blood. He was a rapist, I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. He was a killer, but he was still under the protection of the law. He was a soldier too, he was a man. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy, he breathes in with strange animation. You hounds get so thorough when a company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years, you know? Maybe I should have killed, killed one sooner. Got your attention, he he looks you dead in the eyes. In diet dead in the eye, people shaking. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds, he breathes through flared nostrils. This is it. Shot him, shot him, say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity, he closes his black eyes. One parallel military lesson, Revishal. You can almost see him sneeze a tear out of his eye. <laughs> Sorry, squeeze a tear, not sneeze. His fists begin to tremble from anger. Lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. Hush, he does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. While Lieutenant listens, holding, holding his breath, hold your breath. I had them in my sights, both of them, him and the whore. I was breathing with them in phase, and I pulled the trigger and, f and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. He begins to smile. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face, the small quivers, and his dick still in her. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning, there were May there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white, all or the or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here, I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Lieutenant just looks at him for one, maybe two seconds, then breaks the silence. Mr. Droves, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Yes, a single word is all he gives. Lieutenant takes out his notebook slowly, very slowly, and you were looking at them, the victim and a young woman having sex through the scope of your rifle that night before you shot him? The old man nods. Why? Because that's what because that's what they were doing. He shrugs and smacks his lips. The motive, this is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. Lieutenant's pre preparing the ground. I don't understand. He turns to you. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Why were you looking at, looking at them that night? I'm always looking, he cocks his head to the side, then turns his eyes to the city. Another tremor passes his, side, his left side, lower in, in, lower in intensity. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? He explains, I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. And if you don't like it, you pull the trigger. Yes, he looks at you in the eye. Think of it as a form of critique. I just like to shoot into the city. And this is what I did that night. He will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do. Exploit it. You got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. Start with when he first saw him. It will give him a chance to ramble. When did you first see the deceased? Three weeks ago, when the rich hag came in on her galley, her honor guard came in tow. Joyce, he means Joyce. By that you mean Joyce Messier, the Wild Pines rep? Wrinkled up whore, he nods. Whore, good strong word. I use it often myself. What is it with these whores and pedras? Aren't you a communist? Lack sexual morals or a bourgeois ploy, he gargles in a, a, he gargles a spitball. As to ped, ped, pederasty, the party legalized it in 04. My party, not your liberal masters. He spits it out on the dying coals. So don't you ser sermonize me, you racist shithole, he adds. Wow, yeah, okay, sure. It's still bourgeois when the bourgeois does it, fiddling, fiddling with their sexual organs. <clears throat> Lieutenant coughs, <clears throat> cough, moving on. The victim arrives sometime after her. He nods toward the city. They moved into a deserted apartment above the roundabout. Radio equi equipment out for all to see. Reactionary radio playing sloppy and drunk. I've seen their kind during the landing. Those occidental and mesca phalang phalangus weren't con conscripts, boys like us. They were whites. All they knew all they know is to destroy and hunt whites, barely alive. They like to kill while they're on their drugs. After the landing in the burning years, I would take shots at them and them, the worst ones, if I had a bullet to spare. 
I could see they've returned now to show their real face, the face they don't dare show their bourgeois voters back on Monday with their families and polyester clothes. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them fucking, he looks at the charred wood. I didn't like that. Okay then. Splat, a bloody spitball lands on the firewood. All right, you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the reaver enjoying himself drugged out, sued in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. For him to stop reacting to stimuli, to be broken off from the world, cordoned, cordoned in dar into darkness. And I wanted her to see his head explode. He nods, he nods that too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second, writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head, he squints. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her, but he shrugs. He can't have everything. This man has seen past her like you did, and now he longs to see her covered in blood, to punish her. How long had you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez, I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the felled building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just a spot in the night moving. Past the felled building on the coast, what was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She... She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. What do you think she hid there? Her passport and tickets to Villers, Villa he coughs. And from there, cash her broom. This is the hidden boy she told us about. You looked into it? He nods after she was gone. Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submers submersible? Submersible, yeah, it was empty. Now you don't censor- well, no, it, mean, it means cigarette, in that context. Like, the British call call them cigarettes? Most Americans note that, don't they? No, why would I do that? I didn't need tickets to, to Villiers, I put them back. If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. Some Canadians call that that too, but not that many. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Also, a little inconsistency here. You're surprised to hear her name class here before. Would you not have seen it in documents? Are you sure? We checked the submersible. There was nothing there. You saw her name on the passport, but before, when I said her name was is Classia, you didn't seem to recognize it. It didn't say Classia in there. He shakes, shakes his head. Are you sure? We checked the submersible. There was nothing in there. He looks to the reeds, confused. Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to. I'm not going to Villiers. There it is again, the strange neurological state he's in sometimes. Oh, please unlock the thing again. What did it say her name was in the passport? It was something he stutters. I don't remember. It was dark that morning. I only remember her face on the photo. Moving on, did you continue watching her after this? I did. He almost smiles. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks and a body hard and lean and bruised all over, black and yellow. I could see she's, she's, she's taken a beating. I could see who she was too. He nods, a spook on the run. Revishal's the... Cloessa of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and to ha and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook from the documents. She had different color hair on the photo and glasses, forged some sordid bourgeois affair. I've heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises, you can't make that out on the scope. You could see her bruises through the scope of a rifle. You can't, you can't see bruises on a scope, it's just a blur. He shakes his silver gray head. How does he know about those many, many details on her body, about her body? It quickly comes to you. The bruises on her body, any chance you've seen them through a hole in the wall? Oh yes, he smacks his lips, cutting those drugs into her, of hers into little lines with a knife, masturbating. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. Okay, was she masturbating or were you masturbating? Were you both masturbating? Good for listening in too, for hearing the moaning and the snorts. Wow, this guy's a real piece of fucking work. Ever see her through a roof on a through a window on a roof? Like that like that too, yes, he nods, bending like a, a bow against the glass or bow against the glass. You've been through the secret route behind the whirling in rags. Those were your footprints there. You just changed your shoes, move on. I've been through all of Martinez, every nook and cranny, and that too. Yes, that too. Did you have your own key, or can you pick locks? He shakes his head, almost in awe. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. He explains, funny the way light works. You turn it on the turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the, in the 20s, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do, do some shit, but he keeps shaking his head. Those two took the cake. 
You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen, a quick glance at you. One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. Then at the then at the man, how did you get in there? The hidden pinball workshop. I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you they think I'm an I'm an antisocial. Closing hours a good time, the kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door to the kitchen. How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know. 15 years ago, he left spare keys all over and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. He points toward the whirling in rags and he found use for it. A spare key like the one hanging behind the union box window. You want to punish her, so you killed him. You had feelings for that woman. There's, there's, he sighs. There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. He looks at the city. It's weakness, I know. There have been others? Was that why you left the dried flowers behind her window? No. He starts to shake his head again. A sunflower on a withered stalk. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying like a child in the corner of her room on the floor. Like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I'd killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes, he looked, looks at the charred logs. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. It's as if some, something put the thought there to leave the flowers. Oh, he must have failed to check. You wanted to console her. You wanted to manipulate her. Something put the thought in you. He wanted to console her. Maybe. He lowers his head and just stares at the logs. I told you I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. He wipes his eye. In the silence, Lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more one more down you want to punish her so you killed him she practically breastfed that man you wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her he shakes his head and stares at the ashes you stare at them too in your mind her innocent her innocence day still turns to leave airport bag in hand silks flowing in, in her wake the dream see you tomorrow harry her voice rings in the evening air burning you saw through you saw through her so did i you're delusional there's nothing to see in the soul of the bourgeois woman it's the same as the surface sick Hedonism and desperation. She did deserve a good punishing. I hate women too, you know. I'm not like that. I don't think I don't think like that. No one gives a shit what you think, the old man spits in the ash. You and your cronies kill ten working class men a day. I've heard the statistics on channel eight. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him, it was about her. Her, he repeats, staring at the ashes, then the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. You hear a low frequency hiss barely beneath the audible spectrum, then it's gone. The tent nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it, motive, we have it. The old man looks at you, suddenly remembering, remembering something. Where is she, that class? I haven't seen her there for days. We arrested her. Locked up with your masters, like I'll be. Maybe we'll meet, he looks to the city. She kept staring into the scope, you know, in the end, like she knew. Staring at the island, the fort, like she knew I was here. He adds, no in particular, it doesn't matter. Across the harbor, on the south bank of the river Esperance, the air stands still outside Precinct 57, a two-story box of dura aluminium. Dura aluminium? Dura aluminum near the gates of Terminal H. Look east. Inside a cell, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates, and alcohol all at once, uh, while two men in brown suits wave insane clown posse badges at a young police policeman. She hears the door open and knows it's over. They come for her. Outside it's springtime. The river flows blue and green into the Bay of Martinez. There on a dilapidated jetty in a nameless village, two police officers and one special consultant look across the narrow strip of sea. The ruins of a sea fort stick out of the water, built in, built by Philip II, II reappropriated by the commune, then lost in the landing. He's there doing what exactly? I don't know. Satellite officer Vic Amir points to the, at the ruins. Behind that anti-aircraft something. That's why we can't see him. Special consultant Hadelstam is optimistic. We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place where his voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. Damn, look at all the compromised people in chat. As the men go, patrol officer Mignot looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. We could get more. Lieutenant uses the opportunity to tell you in a lowered voice. We've got him talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. Nice! You can get more out of him. He likes talking. Nice! Here we go! How can we fail? Yeah! What strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain or the cough or the malnutrition. It's precisely what you could not see before. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild, he is surprisingly okay. Indeed, he speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. Animated by what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost, too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings, bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system 
of dementia. You've seen demented people before. This feels similar yet different. When his thoughts move, they're they are lucid, keen even, not senile. Mr. Dross, are you okay? How is your memory? Finish the examination. He waves his hand, chasing something that's not there. No, I'm not okay. I ship blood and I'm surrounded by insane people. There it is again, erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and a stomach thing too, of course. Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. He shakes his life. Druggies, prostitutes, and rentiers. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again and straightens his back. The familiar put 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 of hatred. More specifically, specifically, the whole city is a tr is a ch charnel house, not carnal house. Charnel house, stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez, he shakes his head in grave disgust. Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to racing radio shows in the ruins in their lorries. He points in inland, pump full of steroids. And Radio Revishal 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Yes, the fly larva in his container. He lets some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philip III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. Anything more? Not since the serfs of ancient Perikinesis has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins, intense like animals. He points to the church, like those boom 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 morons. Sorry, boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. He keeps shaking his head with sorrow for the sight he missed. That all? The worst of them is the blood drenched so Socreant on her yacht. Socreant on her yacht licking her lips the old whore is gone now her gun-toting porcelain men are dead so actually no the worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform throwing balls all day it's not enough that the, that the racists and liberals are dancing our, are dancing our graves the old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins too every morning he's there he's deed while the parasites he fought to protect are off in ozone or croyant moraine or some other island they've built their palaces on feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children say nothing Okay, then. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frizzle is now dead. Mm -hmm. Now I have some questions about this. Just nod. We did good when we pushed him under that horse car. If only in the 30s, those disco whores. <gasps> How dare you? What follows is ominous mumbling. You cannot make out a single word. There was something about a statue. A nihilistic advertising agency people might be worth investigating. Ask about that cock on parade too. Make sure you get everything here. Disco whores? Whores is all he says. Even that word has to be pushed through his teeth with great force. The rage seeds too hard. There's something about the statue of the roundabout and syphilis. Syphilis is a disease full of second contracted in a whorehouse. He fires quickly. The statue is an abomination. Abomination. The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions on sparkling wine, cocaineum, and monuments of himself. His son Philip III Philip III the insane contracted syphilis in the womb. He breathes in with a wheeze of hatred. And he still went on to govern Revachal for 25 years. We lost 2 million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues too. Hundreds of them. But it's still there. What a keen remark, he sputters. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you, do you know why? Because you forgot to take it down? Forgot, he spreads his arms. The party had each of their of the 141 Philippian monuments detonated with plastic explosives. We were pedantic about carrying out the order. No, he, tore, he points toward the city. Some advertising cockroaches used their accumulated capital to wreck some, to wreck some a new hmm, ironic version of it. He shakes his head in disgust. Art is a bourgeois establishment. It's an affront to humanity. Wait, something strikes you. Perhaps it was not as it seemed. Actually, it was not deconstructed so much as captured in the moment of the explosion. What are you talking about? An ancient commune art cocks his head. It's not a monument to Philip III anymore. It's a monument to. The, it's a monument to the. It's a monument to the monument of Philip III explode. Philip III exploding. What? What is this madness? A dim light comes on in his eyes. Oh, suddenly he... What the fuck? I love art now. Lieutenant 2 has cocked his head and is looking at you with a strange expression. It's not madness. It's a monument to what you did. To your program of destaturing de Revachal. So you're saying it's a communist monument now? Not only. Yes, and furthermore, the design bureau people are, are probably left-wing too. They often are. We did always have the prettiest posters. Maybe you're right. His eyes fill with understanding. That is how diet... 
dialectics work, but understand this. Art is still a bourgeois institution. Oh, okay. He coughs, then adds in a gravelly voice, and they should all still be sent to Yakokata. Of course, straight to Yakokata. Mm-hmm, Lieutenant Hum, straight to the open pit mine, or cleaning up radiation and sever severnaya zemdlaja. <sighs> yes, well, the ancient commune art sizes you both up, not sure what to think of it. The smallest doubt takes root in him. Perhaps this cop is... No, it can't be. This has helped your standing in his eyes. That's it for the statue, then. Tell me, Mr. Dross. The fat union man let them put it there. Corrupt as he is, probably got a fat check for it, too. Shared, shared with the law. Accusations of corruption. Push them aside with a sharp change of topic, officer. Put the heat on him. By cock parading in his colorful uniform, you mean Rene? Every fucking morning for 34 years, he grinds his teeth in rage. Why didn't you kill him? Throwing that ball, one ball against the other. I've always loathed that game. That is a, not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. So what? he just played, he just sat on this island and played God, just judging everyone for fucking 44 years? What the fuck? Royalist ghouls, ghouls play, play it like it was life itself. Click clack. He makes the sound of balls connecting across the water each day, and that uniform like a parrot's plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race, a petanic maniac race traitor. Just nod. I remember him, he points to his black eye. I remember him from La Lenosi, not him personally, his make and model. Uh, there were tens of thousands of them. I thought we took them all out before the liberals came to the rescue. We missed one. <laughs> With a shaky finger, he points to the city toward the crater near the plaza where a lonely pine tree stands that one there doesn't seem to be a single person under the pine today not even gaston alone there's no one there fat and plump like a pheasant he does not hear you just begging to be popped off a grin stretches across his face as he said and he says very softly please mr Dros, shoot me you'd like to kill him the smile lingers not yet i like to look at him strut around place the crosshair on his medals right on his face and just fiddle the trigger Think about it. Let the bomb bomb melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later, Lieutenant asked cheerfully. He is a juicy bomb bomb, that one. A real treat for the black day, the blackest. When I put that gun in my own mouth, I think, no, don't waste it. Put the sled in that cock, Rene, for the boys he killed. And then I look at him and throw the... I look at him throw those balls and I suddenly feel he lets out a wistful sigh. Better. I even hid one bullet so I'd always have one for him. The lines on his face straighten as he looks inland. Haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must have been down with our down with arthritis. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. He's dead. Hearing it may destabilize him. You sure you've gotten everything from him? Rene is dead. He died of old age a couple days ago. No. Yes. The old communist looks at you, his blackberry eyes shaking in disbelief. I waited too long. I waited too long and now he's dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Dross. The lieutenant says softly. I understand you knew him for a long time. They're all dead now. He just shakes his head. Fuck it. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have He would have done. There must be a... a must have been a thousand black days on these islands, his health his health ailing. You had a thousand chances to kill him, and I blew them all. What does it matter now? He's gone, ancient dust. I'm sorry. Fuck you, the old commune art says, staring at the ground, seemingly to seemingly to the island you're on. Are you okay, Mr. Dross, to go on? You think I haven't seen people die? It's all I've seen them do, fucking die. This is a long conversation. All the other plans we had to love to colonize the pale, it's all fucked. He's not okay. This is just another black day in a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together, making him endure. An idea told to him by grown-ups from radio towers and leaflets in beautiful print when he was still a teenager. Everything is possible if we fight. And then he lost. So did they all. Uh, you mentioned the union is social democratic and Mr. C Mr. Clare is a farce of, social, of a social democrat. I don't want to talk about goddamn social democrats. Traders are all they are. Brain dead. He waves his arm, agitated and despondent at the same time. I'm glad we talk about this now. I want to ask again about the people you don't like. Yeah. Yosef Lilianovich Dross, you are under arrest for the murder of Ellis Cortenaire. What? The old man. The old man's eyes fill with sudden, unexpected terror at the words, but you said I would be taken to the... The wind picks up. What? The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. Lieutenant continues like an incantation. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the pro prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? The deserter. Do you understand? But do you understand, sir? No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, eyes submerged in growing terror. He's a brave man. Why is he unraveling? Okay, what's what's going on here? He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. 
Your confirmation is not required, sir. The ten turns to you now. Onto the boat. There is again to your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it, what? Something completely different. It sounds like a, a, a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin made of reeds and rushes. And then it's gone, drowned out by the lieutenant's voice. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Shush, Kim, do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this? The old man's voice drowns in a sudden gust of wind. Really us? Your skin crawls. The fucking Phasmid? I'm getting frisian so hard right now. So hard right now I'm getting frisian. A delicate, a delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds limb by limb to then just stand there moving its side like arms in ghostly silence. Blink. It's still there, an unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin, hovering in place. What is that? Point to it. The old man looks at the reeds, then at you. What are you talking about? The giant stick insect. He looks confused. There's nothing there. Kim, the stick insect, the stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. I finally gone insane. There, There is. I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. <gasps> Kim can see it! Four simple words, thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. But that means it's really there, spinning slowly in absolute silence. It's limbs long and slender. But if, if, if he can't see it, how did he make the shot? Be very, very careful, Lieutenant whispers, and takes a step toward the giant anthropod. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. I love how Kim is like, okay, fuck the murder, what the fuck is this? Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the, from the strings you heard before. It says something else in lower pitch. Lena's childhood experience. Your corpse will be marked by, your corpse will be marked by stars. Laid the th pheromone on thick. Listen carefully. Tick 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 hiss 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 tick 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 whisper. This is the Insulidian phasmid. It is. The lieutenant whispers behind you. You hear the familiar ring of his jacket unzipping slowly, painstakingly slow. You glance over your shoulder. The man holds a piece of milled aluminium. He pulls it toward the toward, he pull, he begins to pull it open extremely carefully. It's the camera. No, the flash will scare the creature off. Warn him now. Kim whispered, the flash is loud. It won't like that. We need a photo. No one will believe us. Damn, voice acting. He continues to pull the lens open. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmin's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fill your ear. Fills your ear. Stop, let me approach it first. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. He has stopped fiddling with the camera, but does not put it down. He's letting his pride get in the way. You see the phasmid turn to him, its mandible antennae reaching out. The motions are quick, sudden. Whisper, who cares what they think, Kim? Understood. He comes to he comes to he comes to abruptly understood, of course, he says with a nod. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you, its antennae listen, talking taking their measure of the air slowly. Say something to it quietly. Something like Hey. Don't be afraid. You exist. A sudden chirp fills the air. The walking stick moves its whole body, limbs working independently of each other, like the parts of a masterfully constructed machine. Something in its body language has changed just slightly. All right, we can't lose a 97% check. Nice. Too close for comfort. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. 
Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to, to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowded by, sorry, is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Raise your hand slowly. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who, who I am. Raise your hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly there's silence. Raise your other hand, too. I want Kim to have the picture, though. Oh, man. I want Kim to have the picture. Raise your other hand, too. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if as, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white like stalks of porcelain knitting above you. Praying to you. That's right. Pray. Don't pray to me. I'm nothing. The reed creature does not stop its stridulations. It towers above you, parting the reeds, like, reeds that emerge from tough-like structures. Still rustle on its joints. Hello. I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You are right. Little bubbles f form on the mouth parts of the creature. On its segmented lower lip, it looks to be foaming slowly. The foam is white and yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never smelled, like, like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Whisper, Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. The lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade like burnt caramel as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst one by one, and then we die, letting out the same smell like summer burning. Apricot blossoms, white blossoms erupting, a sensation like cold hands on your face. Tell me, what are you doing? I exist. I exist too. I am a detective. Is this a dream? What is happening? What exactly are you? I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. Fire burning. It's wonder bar. I'm ill. If I tell you what will happen. Fire burning. Fire where? Inside. In the city. All around. It's going down. On the horizon. Pale fire. This thing we're both sensing is coming to an end. Inside. I do not have fire inside me. In me there is not even blood but lymph like sap from a wine palm. Now I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit half -lit images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist, intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms, all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of, the, the, of a narrow funnel, weightless, so light it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I am nothing. I certainly do not have a soul, and if I did, it would never burn. You're the type of animal I would like to be. I'm glad to be me. An incredibly sensitive instrument. The fuck is happening to me right now? <laughs> Number one. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Why do you ask? Sometimes when, when molting, I regrow a lost limb. One time something went wrong and a small leg replaced a missing antennae. That's absolutely, that's absolutely nothing. A small leg, that's horrible. Yes, the leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. You don't have a foot there now. Yes. Thankfully, someone ate it. The next time I molted, I grew an antenna again. I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. Uh, what were you born to detect? Also that. The killer. He is in a bad state, deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. You're destroying him? Very slowly, and only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads, but he has looked at me too long, and I am destroying him. Oh. Is this a dream? What is happening? No, you are awake. I am real. Light is form forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All this around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lilies. We need to know. Perhaps it is sent to us by God. I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth, or a reed. Yum, yum. Wait, so? So you look like a reed, and you eat reeds. Yes, they don't mind. <laughs> Have you accidentally eaten another reed, Phasmid? Yes, I, w I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. What exactly are you? I am an unknown species of the order Fa Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insulidian Isola. For the last 350 years, I've hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molding, molding, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. 
I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the settlers in the land purveyors of the suzerain, also by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. In the Seminese islanders, even the Seminese islanders who came here first but did not stay have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the citizens militia in Revachal, District Martinez, March 51. That's insane. No, you are. The moral of our encounter is I am a relatively medium life form. While it is you, well, it is you who are a total extreme madness, a volatile simian nervous system ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The synodarians do not. The radial, the radi the radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost un unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale is human made. It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality, a great unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You were a violent and irrepressible miracle, the vacuum of cosmos, and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Given enough time, you would wipe us all out and replace us with nothing, just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life uh, 2.6 billion years ago, when organisms first started breathing, only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Worse how? Oh, wow. Everything your eyes touch goes... Everything your eyes touch goes back there behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day? Or just forget, have I always thought this way? No, you're only thinking it now. This is a revolution. But I want to blink and undo 12, 12 billion years of matter expansion. Simeon Butcherer, soon one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that now. What does it look like? You're just staring at it, he whispers. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay, after a second, Lieutenant asks, is it somehow related to the case? Sort of. I <laughs> No, I told you what it's about, our fate. The, the case? The case is meaningless compared to this. Laugh nervously. I have totally transcended the case. Sort of. I think we should take the picture, and then you should back away from the unstudied species. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No, there is one more. No, there are no more thoughts. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the kindest. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the scariest. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the most beautiful. I'm going to say kindest. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. What? What woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you, it smells of fire so awfully far from so awfully far you were prepared to go in her presence end it i will she was middle class it doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that So she doesn't have her neck, then she's not having one. Okay. And you'll hear about it soon because she's gonna get cranky. Alright. Okay, Kim, take the picture. I think she's, I think we're almost done. She's not crying. I put her in, but like normally she if she doesn't cry right away, usually she's fine, but she might cry a little bit. Okay. Okay, with a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it to eye level. There is no change in the insect's motion while it is being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three, the man whispers, his voice tense. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, man, look at that. What a great picture. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like a blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light, head turned toward the lieutenant. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as a creature's shape develops into, onto photo paper in his hand. A polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reeds in the sky, and you as a shadow before it. Legendary success immortalized. Nice. So I reach out and touch the creature's whisker. Carefully pet its scythe-like forearm. We got it. Back off. Um... Um, are we gonna die? <laughs> Carefully pet its side like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push, foot push could tip the creature over. It's hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning! <laughs> 
Put, run your hand up to the, sl the slender limb. Higher. A small shudder passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes, eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The inter invertebrae is starting to, to is regaining control. Yeah, we got it. Back off. Yeah, we're done. We're done. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life like a, rec a record continuing where, where it left off in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasma mirrors your movement, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its f feather weight without breaking its surface. Well, that was amazing. Imagine seeing that just running out around outside. And just like that, it's gone, skating across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Lieutenant looks north, with his, his hand raised to its brow. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes, like a water strider, only he shakes his head with amazement. I've never seen anything like that in my, in my life. What's that in the reeds? Clash's documents? He squints. Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He put He's put his hand onto the ash. It's dirty and black. Our suspect... Our suspect not looking so good. Is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Fairweather T500 helmet. It's fucking like Fallout power armor. The rifle scope. Class his passport. Wow. A uh, common 30 millimeter sniper scope attachable to almost any bolt action 4.46 caliber. It uses an older style non dotted range finding reticule. Seaweed is still stuck on the lens and it suffered water damage from its time in the Phasmid's dowry. This well traveled passport with visa stamped in it is issued by the Republic of Ornia. You found it in the Phasmid's nest on the island. You can open it for more details. This passport is issued by the Sovereign Republic of Ornia. Yeah, okay, blah, blah, blah. Class is hidden documents. The lieutenant looks at it in your hands from the empty boy. Look at the photo. It's Class here with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger, younger somehow. What was this doing in the Phasma's nest? Maybe our man, Mr. Dros, took it from Classia's or whatever her name was, hiding place, or perhaps for some blackmailing plan. I think the Phasma took it. The Phasma took it, and I sensed it do so. I saw something open up the boy with spindly legs point to your head. Like a magpie? He looks around. What a coincidence. Then it would also collect the other objects, which would be highly unusual. So by now, Lieutenant... By now, Lieutenant accepted your usual unusual methods. I can see how the helmet could be washed, could could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mister Dros lost it, but to seek out this would be, but to seek, but to seek out this would be very unusual behavior for an anthropod. There we go. It says Caterzine Alagi. He opens his notes. She said it would be for Amok, blah 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 blah, whatever. Caterzine Alagi was supposed to be her real name. Where class she comes from? Remember? God damn it. I told you she kept on lying to you. She's probably lying to someone else right now, another detective. Katazine Alagi was supposed to be her real name. She lied to us. Maybe this is her real passport, not a fake, because this is her real name? No, she lied to us. Her so-called real name was not her real name. Somehow she's, she's managed to lie to us about that too. He almost smiles. What was her real name then? I don't know, but it was not Katazine whatever, or Anok Major Smith, or Klasia, whoever she is. She's Leon. When we get back, I need to warn our holding cells. We need to double the security around her. Put the passport away. Oh, that's cool. We finally get the... We could get the other armor piece. What Ooh. is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. Sir, how could you not see the Phasmid? 
See, he stares at the, as the re at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Dross, the man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glaze over and bulging from their sockets, his gat tooth mouth shaking. Snap your fingers under his nose. Wave your hand in front of his eyes. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. He's going to some kind of psychomotor immobility. Lieutenant inspects him gently. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. He looks at him and then you. I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. He looks at you. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Quite a few things about that health check system you did on him make sense now. He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reads for him. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. Could it be there's something hormonal in his relationship to the, to the phasmid? I talked to the phasmid. It said it's destroying him. You should be more careful, detective. Are you sure it was having an effect on you? Maybe. Anyway, it's only trying to remain unseen. The degradation? Degradation is a side effect. A valid hunch. Long-term exposure to something like that could be neurodegenerative. Also, please be careful when, you're pro when approaching unknown species in the future, detective. He nods. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone and with little with little hygiene and medita medication, I would expect worse. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasmid. He does not seem to be animated now. Now, once it's left. Eh. He looks at the sea. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. He takes off his glasses and cleans them. When he puts them back on, he's still staring at the sea. He can see it, Kim. It's just the reeds for him. That could be part of the shock, but you're right. Something is off here. Mr. Dross, he touches the man's shoulder. No response. Maybe this is how the phasmid has stayed hidden all these years. Then how did we see it, he thinks. Oh, you mean whatever whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunk sightings are brief and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it, yes, you forget it's there. Mm-hmm. Lieutenant inspects the man. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be in, to be in, to be the reeds? The, the, the man, old man stutters. The doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advance for a nurse. He's been here for such a long time. Who knows how much of it in its company. He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like, may, like he didn't want to leave this place. And the insect, maybe. He looks at his notebook. I have absolutely for, I've absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all this. He shakes his head in disbelief. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. No one will leave you without it. We found some things in the phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should. Show him the ceramic helmet. Nothing. Just all staring. Not even rage left wherever he is. If Kuno kicked it into the sea as he said he did, the ebb would pull it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Jost could have could have picked it up. Or the phasmid even. If it did, this is incredible. Show him the Orny's Orny's passport. No reaction. His breathing is slow and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. This is an old man at last. No longer a tin soldier, but the broken down remains of a man. Did you take this passport and other papers from a boy on the coast? He blinks and continues to stare at the reeds. The spirit. He hears us. The spirit. No reply. He's gone again. Try something else. We got him back for a moment. Show him the detached scope. I. He turns his eyes to it. I lost. You lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope, then it somehow made its way over there with the help of a magpie phasmid. The lieutenant observes lens observes lens sparkle in your hand hmm. this sight is a t9 mr dross was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot silence not even a sigh i'm going to let you rest now mr dross the plastic cape fl flaps around his face in a gust of wind his back is slouched and his mouth open the blacks of his eyes are receding his pupils are returning to normal hang tight leave we should Think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. Surely one of us should stay with him. Kim, surely. Surely one of us should stay with him. Wow, it's not ending here? Uh, thank you, Varnus, for the 14 month resub. Um, we haven't read subs since we started this part. Um, thank you very much, Varnus. Still can't watch because I because I want to play this game so bad, but hope you're doing well. Catch you, catch you next game. Maybe watch the VOD and you hear me say thank you. If not, um, you know, just sending good thoughts out there. Hope to see you in the next game.
Uh, Artist 4 has resubscribed for six months. What the hell happens to the portraits? What do you mean? This, these are the portraits. This, these are the portraits in the game. What are you talking about, Artist 4? That's just how it is. Uh, Ralph calls you 100 bits to say, maybe you should play XCOM next, JPH Pickle. Oh, yeah, XCOM would be really entertaining for you guys. I would hate it. But, um, yeah, it would be very fun for, for uh, chat, for sure. <laughs> Thank you again for the resub, Artist 4. Uh, Donut Boy Zero has subscribed for the first time. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Dragon's Den slash rub dub Club Sub Club. Damn, messed it up. Messed up my own greeting. Thank you, Donut Boy Zero. And last but not least is the Love Falcon who subbed uh, a minute ago. Best YouTube content by far, no contest. Love the Danger Rompus streams. I rewatch the highlights all the time. Uh, that's the message of the four month reset. Really? Best YouTube content? Okay, I'll take it. I don't I don't think I deserve it, but thank you. Thank you, the Love Falcon. And uh, um, yeah, the highlights are pretty entertaining. It's fun seeing like a, a whole big stream condensed down that far. Also, thank you, Ricky on for the 23 month resub. Really enjoyed your Delante Sanatorium streams. <laughs> Looking forward to you streaming enough uh, to affect my productivity. Me too. Me too. This was a good time. I enjoyed this. This is a fun game. Thank you, Ricky on. Is this game of the year for anyone for 2019? In chat. Quite a few people saying yeah. Hmm, interesting. Just want to ask real quick, uh, the people saying yes. Um, what is it like to have such bad taste? The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's, we're done here. He says, adjusting his glasses as he looks over the water. The sk <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of an aimless village, looking at the small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb uh, out of the skiff. All right. You're quite the tide brought in. Says the man without sunglasses. Suddenly his expression changes and he tilts his head. You look like a fucking clown, Harry. Not like a funny police officer, but like a real life, full time, pie in the face, unicycle riding circus employee. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the Whirling in Rags. But where is sunglasses? Wait, you're the man with sunglasses. Forget about all this. There's a giant, no one else seems bothered by my style. Who are you people? That's right. And you're some kind of a urban scarecrow thing. No one else seems bothered by my style. Bothered by it, Ari? You're a goddamn cop. They're afraid of you. Oh, that explains it. Yes. That has always explained. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the first time he's seen you all decked out in Wacko. Calm down. Forget about all this. There's a giant. We are not forgetting about anything. Look at you. He points at you with both hands. Who are you people? Hello, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. Are you a lawyer? I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicmar. And this is your special task force, or what's left of it. Special consultant, Trant Heidelstam. Patrol officer, Judith Mino. Hi. Hey. We have come to scrap what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Precinct 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. The scene is making is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. He adds, suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that, he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. Thank you, Lieutenant. Way to feed me to the wolves. No, Kim, you gotta have my back. Let's destroy them. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. She smiles warmly, flashing Kim the tiniest of smiles. Letting the Lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to fall, about to befall you. What is this about? Move on. I 
Harvey, we want to help you. Trunt, I believe this is where you come in. This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that, but it was beyond idiotic. You should never address her using those words again. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology he makes on a quotes. merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. Oh, I'll see you later. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid, what an interesting moniker. What's a shit kid? You, shit kid, that's you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case, despite all I've done. No, because of all that you've done. How'd you know I was here? You aren't the man with sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. <laughs> you, not the civil officer. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you before. So, Trant Heidelstam turns out to be special consultant Trant, Trant Heidelstam. Duped again. No one's who they say they are. You mentioned a task force? Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. After all that silly stuff, he betrays me. I saved his establishment and he still betrays me. Turn and face the general direction of the whirling and yell, Damn you, cafeteria manager. You betrayed me for the last time. I understand. Okay, Gart told you. Um, and she looks around. People on the street helped us too with your whereabouts. You're a legend among the drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. You aren't the man with sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. Guilty as charged. He exchanges a look with the special consultant. I heard you lost your mind and your memory. I want to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. That There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. Actually, I suspected something was off. Maybe if you hadn't been so sarcastic, I would have realized I knew you. I don't like being lied to. Okay, I had that coming. Number two. I'm clinically depressed, Harry. Sorry if I wasn't in the mood to butter you up after you told us to fuck off. Actually, I suspected something was off. Did you? He adjusts his tie. Or did you literally not recognize my face? We've been partners for how long, Harry? Don't answer that. You don't remember. He's right. Don't start guessing. Now's not a good time. You, not the female officer. I'm sorry I don't recognize you before. It's okay, she sighs. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. She gestures toward Vicamer. We're just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work and when you or when you do but stink you're a worry fest she's worried about you i'm worried about you even special consultant backpedal is worried about you everyone worries instead of working he's got a very very solid case there actually solid case there actually i've been trying to find a good moment to tell you you're worried too yes you often sound like a brutal idiot so Trent Heidelstam turns out to be special consultant Trent Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trent Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't Trent Heidelstam. Wait, it was over the kid. Oh yeah, it was. I was sorry. I was like, huh? You look familiar. Where have I seen you before? He was standing outside the the the, the closed down factory. Okay, what was it? What was up with the kid then? Mikhail. Mikhail's my son. Oh yeah. What was up with all the interest? All the interesting history spying on me? No, I was just interested in the Feld Building and the Martinez Beachhead and. And Mikhail wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. So what are so what are you special consulting here? What indeed? He looks at the dilapidated shacks than you. I was asked to share my my take on some of the more obscure theories developed by uh, Koenigstein in the 30s, like partial psycho psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He's smart. Let's move on. Duped again. No one's who they say they are. Kim, are you even a police officer? Duped, hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Gardner, scab leader, this turns to the lieutenant. Tell me at least you are who you say, said you were. Yes, I'm still Kim Kitsuragi, still lieutenant from Precinct 57. Still caught up in, hit, in this crossfire too. You mentioned a task force? Yeah, major crimes unit under Lieutenant Dubois and Vic Amer. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory. Who else is in this? Refresh your memory. It's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Judy, Judy, Judy or Judy, Trant fucking Heidelstam, and Gu Guillaume Bevy. He stares at you. Okay, listen, you understand that I've lost my memory, and you're still giving me shit for it. Like, what, oh, I can't believe you don't remember this person who's lost his memory. Fuck you, Jean. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Fuck you, you're part of this shit show. Yeah, um, first, who's Guillaume, Guillaume Bevy? 
Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. He's not smiling. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Eh. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here and entranced because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial sunglasses? <laughs> See there, he wags his finger at you. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me. I'm G. Bevy. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage, and and, and not so not so much anymore. Okay, so what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the, the desk of cases, so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We're shit tier now, Harry, because of you. They're your posse. Or what remains of it. Hand-picked, hand-lost. Nice, hand-lost. The 41st isn't. He trails off, not wishing to finish the sentence. Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. He shifts his weight, crosses his arms, and looks at you in the eye. You told us to fuck off. You said you, you said we're cramping your style. You're a detective god. Fuck everything. All will all will all will burn. Detect or die. Wait. So you left. So you let let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson. All will will burn. Solid officer Vicar. Make no mistake about it. Apocalypse cop. Uh, why didn't you detect or die then? Why would you leave a literal police god? I said all those things. I'm not like that anymore. Wait. Just teach me a lesson. It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was going to be a tribunal, did we? I said all those things. I'm not like that anymore. Yes, you're sorry. You're the sorriest cop who ever lived. Nothing has changed, Harry. I've heard this rep repentance shit a million times over. None of this is ringing any bells. Move on. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Tr Trent, he turns to the blonde. This is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors, he talks without slurring, he can drive a boat, he's standing, reasoning, all good signs, but com complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic, meaning you forget, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, isola, pale, and so on. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him, and I don't want to be a snitch, he makes air quotes, but, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, he turns to you. What do you think happened to you neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Wait, socioeconomically? You think I'm so poor I lost my memory? Not when you phrase it like that, but I don't think... But I don't think critical theory, I know, what? I don't think critical theory, I know everyone thinks this is far-fetched pink academia, but still, I don't think it should be off the table here. Okay. What? He lost his memory because of capitalism? No, not like that, but I'm not, but I'm not talking friend or fort school here. But Harry, I asked you, what do you think happened? I drank so much I lost my memory, and I'm now slowly recovering it. He is, he's getting better, and I can confirm that he drank a lot of alcohol prior to it happening. I believe he drank, he turns to you, people do that, especially this one. What they don't do is forget their whole life because of drinking. But Detective Vicamer, he, he she interjects, she interjects, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple times. After some of the more serious benders, she pauses, remembering. One was after the, the two drunks case, the other one we looked into that mural. So you don't remember. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. The two cases in your ledger, the unsolvable case and the new the new world mural, those were recent. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea. Yes, practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here's my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. He gestures toward the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon, listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world on the world tape. To borrow a known metaphor, Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market, he nods confidently. He just needed for it to end. Okay, Trant, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the Major Crimes Unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He is not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as then as a line detective. Leadership, now. I'm ready to lead again. Line detective is good for now. He's wrong. I'm not too far for work. Fuck all of you. I don't want to be in your unit. I'm ready to lead again. No one even, no one even mentioned that he looks at you then at Trant. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the potty or do we need to get him on a disability pension? What now? Proceed. Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? 
No, we're, we're now we're going. To, we're, now we discussed that. He points to the water. What the fuck did you do to our motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Oh, we couldn't do all the choices about why we ended up the way we are. I'm sorry. I thought we could go through them all. Hold on. In the ocean, feign ignorance. It was stolen by Jacob Jacob Ur. That wasn't me. It was stolen by traffic hooligans. I drove it into the ocean when I was drunk. I thought the killer would be underwater. He wasn't. Tequila sunset. I also jumped the canal, by the way. I don't know. I don't know what it, what it's doing there. I drove it into the ocean when I was drunk. So refreshing, he just admits it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying a forty five thousand real of destroying forty five thousand real of police property that's coming out of everyone's pay slip. It doesn't matter. He exhales to to calm his breathing. Your badge, Harry, show me your badge. I've got my I've got my badge right here. Show it to them. What I do have is this futuristic armor, tap your queer ass. <laughs> In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain the grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Catch it. No! You juggle the badge for a second unsuccessfully, and it lands on the ground some two meters away. Ouch. You're st <laughs> Ouch, you strained your elbow trying to catch that stupid thing, damn it. He found it. The patrol officer picks it up and gives it, gives it back to you, slippery and cold. He found it, Gene. It's it's his badge. The man stares at you, unimpressed. And your gun? As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. What is it with these, these material objects? Gun, gun, just repeat gun. My gun is right here. Show him the Villiers 9mm. I upgraded my gun to a rifle. Presents... <laughs> My gun is right here. Woo, he has it, and he didn't drop it. He wipes his brow in mock relief. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. I didn't lose my gun. I have my gun. Show him the gun. So it doesn't even matter that I found my gun? I quit drinking forever. It's only me in this boring hellhole now. I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then, huh? He's wounded. He looks at you. It's been a long week, and he's handled an actual corpse. No idea what you're smelling. I washed death off me. Yeah, I handle an actual corpse. Yeah, it's been a bit of a week. I'm sorry I smell bad. None of this matters. My o odor situation, it's meaningless compared to what I've discovered. Yeah, I've, I've handled an actual corpse. I don't believe you. He squints. You're drunk. You let suspect escaped a certain ruby because you were too drunk to take her in. We've read the reports, Harry. Lieutenant Kitsuragis, we know. She didn't know anything. It wasn't a big loss for the investigation. You're right, I fucked up. We walked in blind and she got away. That's on me. She caught us in a pale latitude compressor. You know how much that hurts? I let her go. It was an act of mercy. She was going to shoot herself if I didn't. It's just a small de detail in a huge case you know nothing about. That doesn't matter. None of it does. We were looking at the at the oxygen holocaust. I was a quadrillion. I have come to know the final fate of the man of man in the universe. Number three. Oh well, if it made you if it made you boo boo, he rubs his face in frustration. I'm not even gonna get into the 80, 80 other suspects he failed to arrest, or the fact that you're ever Everett Claire's little peon now, doing I don't know what for him. That's a that's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote compared to the nine people who were gunned down. The streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It, it was a it was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could, Lieutenant interrupts him. We did, we did everything we could. The company hired unvetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a, not, a, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Yes, what he said. I also solved the case. It solved. All of it. Yes, yeah, it was a massacre. We got wiped. Where the hell were you? The firefight is trivial matter compared to the greatest discovery. I'm just sorry. Number two. Detective, it's better if I do that, he says in a lowered voice. It's so much better if he does. A million times better. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. He thinks of apologizing but decides against it. He brushes a stray strand of hair out of his eye and coughs. My jaw is starting to hurt from reading out loud so much. You spent the week with him on this case. What is your take on this on the case? On Lieutenant Yafrida Dubois. Well, he pulls up his collar, the drinking, the gun the gun losing. Also losing the badge. That's all true, although he has not been drinking on the job this week. See? One week. Then there's the self-flagellation issue. He likes to apologize profusely, making it sound like he's guilty of at least first-degree murder. It's not a good communication strategy for an officer. It's... It's worrying, especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio socioeconomist. No, no, I'm not. No, 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 no. I have money. Look, I understand the economy. No, no. He wants to liquidate the ruling class, which again, for a police officer, is quite odd. No, no, really? 
No, fuck, no, fuck, no. <laughs> oh. You should yell something. I am a policeman of the state to come. That's not a good idea. Yes, let, let's let let the big boys talk. Otter still is he is also a full-blown fascist. What? No, an ultra-nationalist woman hater. No, I'm not. And more than a little racist. No, no. How he reconciles those two points of view. He shrugs, but he's a vocal about what? No, I'm not. This is a, I'm mad. This, I'm not this at all. What? And then there's the motor carriage in the sea. Something I was not present for. He breathes in sharply, but despite all this, he's a great detective. One of the best I've seen. If I no, I'm not. I did not v fucking vocal any of that shit. No, I'm actually annoyed. I'm actually annoyed. You can you can talk human beings into telling him everything, and he doesn't stop. In, in all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tange tangential. Uh, tangential? Tendential? Yeah, there we go. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikramir, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. Okay, he did something. On the other, on, other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. He pauses. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species. A colossal stick insect. It was on the island. Camouflages the reeds. It unfolded from the reeds. I think it may, we may be dealing with the Insulidian phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the, the glossy rectangle in his hand. You hear gasp beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate. Uh, invertebrate. Invertebrate, right? Not invertebrate. Invertebrate ever discovered. No, maybe it's an invertebrate. Invertebrate is different, right? Hosanaya? What? Boom shakalaka, motherfucker. <laughs> So, as you can see, I'm a pretty okay detective and an absolutely giant communist. No, I'm not. Boom shakalaka, motherfucker. Fucking hell is that? The man cranes his neck, still looking at the photo. Is this somehow connected to the case? Detective, he turns to you. Boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> yes, I believe the pheromone in the midst may be responsible for the killer's mental degre degradation. The old man was not aware of the Phasman's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected. I must say this, he points to the photo, it's absolutely extraordinary. It's, I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to, hard to fire the drunk. His tired eyes follow the photo as the lieutenant puts it away. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Aww. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. <clears throat> I also started a nightclub in the church. <laughs> also, the fans of this female reserve's nest. The killer, Lili Lilianovich Dros. We have a strong motive for him. And I also fixed the strike situation. There was a dead man on the boardwalk, a missing person I found. I also looked into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. I confiscated drugs from Chino's dad. So what, so what do you say? Want to take this hot ship back? Uh, let's go to number three first. Lianovich, a special consultant, raises an eyebrow. A revolutionary matronym? Matronym? A revolutionary matronym? The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, the revolutionary saw this as a chauvinist atavism. Atavism? So they use matronyms derived from the, mo the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lillian. He's Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Ravishal. So it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. He turns to you. You said you have a motive. Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. He killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. He killed the mercenary hoping to start a war between the company and the union. He killed... Rage, uh, number one. Jealousy. I thought this Lilianovich was an old man to have been hiding for 50 years, 70-something. A strange psych psychosexual fixation, aggravated possibly by, prox by proximity to the phasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason, said he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Way, way 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 more it's more than that like a perfect folding mechanism like the phasmid it's way more than that it will win me dora back <laughs> 
It's my masterpiece. They'll teach this in cop school. I did all I could. Every second was a struggle. I'm still not completely satisfied with it. It could just be a little neater. Number one. Perfect folding mechanism. He rolls his eyes. Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. Doesn't it ever leave? It is there, like in your bones or something. It will pass in time. Uh... Dead man on the boardwalk. Yes, yes, fallen through a gap in the boardwalk, drunk. How'd you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, she says quietly, good work with the missing person detective. It's still a point for you, no denying it. Alright, do we want to do we wanna do all of it? Like Reads her SNES female, which makes you think so. You have to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female and the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. He turns to you. It's interesting. It's interesting time. Forget about the, the rest. It had gathered items in its nest. A helmet, a scope, and a passport. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. Hmm. The bow collector. They're, they are for attracting mates. I still think it was female. It could have been male, actually. It must be robust if it can move a helmet with its limbs. He trails off, lost in thought. I think it reproduces by parthenogenesis, as in cloning itself. What makes you think so? Just, just a hunch. Well, then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bower would be rudimentary behavior. Would just be rudimentary behavior from before the parthenogenic mutation. That makes sense. Yes. Very interesting. He looks around, quickly assessing the coast. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We pro we're probably looking at con conservation efforts here. In his mind, he's already planning a nature reserve and knows a good guy for that. It has it had mandibles that look like hair, and it was completely white on the on the inside. Yes, but also reed colored, be beige and brown, a little green on the outside. They've seen the picture. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that look like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible, he repeats, turning to Vic Vicamere. The PR value of this is exceptional. A cop discovers new species, maybe even discovers the Insulidian Phasmin. No, that's too much. This would really help with some of the problems we've been having. Absolutely, this is great. This does not say vigilante murders to me at all. This says science, news, human interest. He smiles. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it, he shakes his head. You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. Quit while you're ahead. Or no? Yeah, we need to quit while we're ahead. Um... Yeah, let's do the mystery of the Doom commercial area and then that'll be it. He shrugs. All I know is, all I know, all really? I don't know what a Doom commercial area is. Rue Sink is Lane 10, a commercial building where all businesses go bankrupt. I looked into it. Why? That's not what you're supposed to do here. There was a fridge we needed and a possible witness. He was just ch chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. Of course, she turns to Vicomer. Call it community outreach, right? Dodged a bullet there. For a moment, it seemed like you were just wasting time. Oh, that's it? I also started a nightclub in the church. What was that? He cups his ear, the wind blows. It sounded like you set up a nightclub in the church. Yeah, I reinvigorated the local nightlife. Yeah, I did, I did some kids a solid, turned their lives around. Yeah, I discovered a hitherto unexplored ent entrepreneurial phenomenon in there too, a two millimeter hole in the world. That's great. Entrepreneur is great. Is a great new career for you. After police officer, I don't care. Go live in the pale. Four kids were living in a tent on the ice. They were going down, going to drown when it melted. It's not optimal, but the building was abandoned, so he put them in there. It's okay. It's not that okay. Get off the subject now. And I also fixed the strike situation. How? It seems to be ongoing. I see red banners in the gates. He didn't quite solve it. He cross-pollinated information between the company rep and Everett until the rep came to see that the union desires war, at which point Miss, Mrs. Messier decided to, he shrugs, what, hang clear the terminal? It was an accident. I did it for the world revolution. I just told some people some things. No big deal. They are calmer now. I masterminded a solution to an unsolvable problem. Sounds like you got played, Harry, because you were off your tits on Al Gol. Hey, how'd you know about Al Gol? It doesn't matter how I know about Al Gol. What matters is you're Everett Claire's peon now. Just as I said, he's a mob boss, did you know? It's not quite like that. The move allowed us to stabilize things here. It was not bad for Martinez, and we don't owe anyone anything. Okay, slow nod. Silence, good. The man doesn't know what to say. You know what? I think we did pretty well here. I confiscated drugs from Kuno's dad. Who's Kuno? You don't want to know. You're right, Lieutenant. I don't. He turns to you. You snorted the drugs. I know you did. It's all right. I mean, at this point, anything is anything is but the drink. Nah, I gave him to the kid. So what you say, want to take this hot shit back? Point to yourself. 
I don't want to, but you discover a new species and solve the murder. He shrugs. So I have to? Jude, a quick nod. Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. You haven't been drinking, she thinks, so maybe this time. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too vulnerable, too valuable to let go. I think I think Judy likes us. Wanna be the new Dora? Okay, he sighs. We have vehicles in No 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 no. Kim is the new Dora. Kim is the new Dora. What am I even thinking? Kim is the new Dora. Okay, he sighs. We have vehicles in the square and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Wait, I have a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward impatiently. J jingling his car keys in his pocket. Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but, but before before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Koron. She looks around. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe? That does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the shot put, your inexplicable facial hair, the collection of fallen sportswear I've amassed. <laughs> your love for retro style dance music, how you're able to perform a 360 degree spin kick. Oh god, contact Mike! It's coming back! Contact Mike! Of course, contact Mike. He's been on about Mike again. The detective shakes his head. I hate that guy. Contact Mike is a... <laughs> is a reprise of the most inspiring basic sporting principle of open competition. A 5,001 rank outsider. <laughs> oh, you don't say. He arches an eyebrow. Does he also does he also vaults an imp impassable gulf of finance and privilege? It is. It is getting cold out. She looks around at the dilapidated fishing village. When was this? When was I gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s. You've really let yourself go since then. He looks you over. You said Koron? I was a gym teacher there? Yes, you taught gym in Koron. I believe that's the term. Taught gym at, high, at a high school you were a high school gym teacher the smell of sweat and glue the worn floorboards high school harry you're coming you're going on with kuno andre a seal the whole thing on the ice that's why you're so so juvie okay are, are we always were we always a gym teacher or does this change depending on our choices why did i join the rcm then the regular you found some chick she inspired you to fight the big fight but be more than you are all that You every morning walking from Voyager Road to teach gym, she leaving for the academy with her spring coat on, the air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries, an incredible hope, an ocean full of hope. Hope, Hajime, hope. Okay, I see now. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest to god gym teacher. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you're drunk. You're a drunk. Some chick who, what she called Dora Dubois? Dubois, he shakes his head. It was Dora Ingerland, I think. You said her name, but you weren't married. You were engaged. Wait, Dora Ingerland? Something like that. So we weren't even married. No one is married anymore. This is rubbish all. When was this? God, I don't know. He thinks six years ago. She was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it. What the hell is wrong with you? Six years? Yeah, or seven? You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Too old two old years equals one normal year <laughs> that and Dora Ingerland really tore you a new one a big one who was she incredibly bangable huh figures extremely fuckable Harry gorgeous a gorgeous bourgeois woman wayfish like a welkin basically snow welkin blonde welkin heartbreak welkin I've only seen a picture but it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was when you never recuperated from look she turns to face to see the sun is going down it's time to go home I think she taught in the Academy the Arts east of the river, way east. Hard to say what came, which came first, the middle class chick or the drink, egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist, several degrees harder. <laughs> is there is is there's something harder than a psychiatrist? He pauses to think, a forensic psychiatrist, go talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Okay, am I a dirty cop working for La Puta Madre? No. No, because the suspects seem to think you're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No boss, would, no mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. <laughs> Man, I love the writing in this game. I told you it's not that bad. Precinct 41, what kind of station is it? Us? We're the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? We're the bad guys, no one likes us. That's not true, Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You're just understaffed, and everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant, you're being kind. It is an understaffed station, and the district is too big, which is why we need to. He tilts his head northward. Get back to it. We left Torson and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. Torson and McLean? Mac the Torso Torson and Chester McLean. She arches an eyebrow. They're not fit to, to run a wing, believe me. Things are shaky as it is. 
They are damn iconic though. Torsten and McLean. An iconic duo, I take it. Yeah, not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. Where's the contrast here? We're garbage. And the C wing is... God, he sighs. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and you and I reconceptualized. Oh, that's where I got it from. It is a task force. It was a mistake. There's a lot of outside help involved. Not only me. He smiles. Other losers too. He's anything but a loser. Although he would like to be seen as one. It's cooler that way. And Price says... Ptolemy Price. He's the son of, the, of Old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the forest. You're lucky. Somewhere under the curved roof of the former of a former silk factory, shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him a coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood in the, on the streets in May. Did you recently shoot up a church by any chance? Point to the church. So he remembers that. Yes, there have been many. There, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. What happened? Why did we need to go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church. To the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit here right now. You have to wait for it to go up. He means it. The RCM and its enemies will not be discussed on the co on this coast. Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of Union headquarters. So I work. In the bloody murder station okay it's not the bloody murder station it's an old converted silk mill with the green desk lamps and, and a coffee corner a lot of good people work there hard every day jamrock is the largest ghetto in revishal Falborg, technically it's but it's divided into 11 districts jamrock only has us the press will the press will blow over he says in a reassuring tone jamrock is lucky to have you and it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. The Fazman, I need to tell Lena about this ASAP. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock, remember? A cryptozoologist, she lives in Jamrock on Tabernacle Road. She told me about this Phasmid. Tabernacle, it's on the way over, near where you live on Perdition. She looks at Vikamire. Vikamire? Vikamir? I'm saying his name wrong, aren't I? Fine, if we're gonna drop you off anyway. She and her husband were conducting the search for the Phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. She is going to be over the moon. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone ever has ever seen. It will have to be a, have to be good to cover all this. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain about what? About being transferred. Transferred to the 41st. Kim, best bros forever. Best bros. Pulls up his collar and looks around. The cold spring light reflected in the lens of his glasses. Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revishal. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be... A hard, going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price. I'd rather not ruffle feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work in Precinct 41. Work with Price? A crooked smile quivers on his lips. I'm flattered, but I don't know if I would fit in. Am I crazy enough? Can I take the, can take the stress? He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Flattered? You're Lieutenant Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. The man turns very serious all of a sudden. I would have to tie things up in G-R-I-H first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. And we, will always have a huge and we always have a huge caseload, Lieutenant, she says with a smile. The piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. He returns her smile. He's really considering it. <gasps> We're in! We're in! I'm ready, and, and, good, she looks at you, then Vikramer, fuck it, let's go, the man points down the street, T Trant brought his motor carriage, it's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock, this is, this is too happy of an ending, let's, let's go tell Lena about, about the, the Phasmid, and it turns out that they've killed themselves, this is too happy, under the evening sky, the great district turns on its lights, a chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls inside, fire traps as far as the eye can see, from Main Street to Precinct 41 atop the motorway, to Boogie Street forking into the dark horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark, a lone woman sits by a factory window dreaming of meteorite strikes, on Rue de saint Guillaume, a square bullet slides into a square shaped chamber, in Old South a man Without eyelids, smile. Spring has come. It's time. What? Torsen? Yes. McLean? Yes. Hiddlestam? No. Vikamer? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scottlib looks up from his list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing, Captain. But tell me Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in the office and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Mignot? Of course. 
wonderful. The woman looks north. Then can we please just go back to, go back to Jamrock now and... Huh. Undertale. Okay, so I really like the ending, but I don't like the last scene. I think there should have been some one more thing that happened after that, after that conversation. But I guess the real ending was on the island, and that was just kind of like an epilogue that mops up some of the questions and judges you and everything. I just feel like I feel like the, it, it ends very, very strong. But there should have just been like one more scene after that, where I don't know, like a, a little moment with Kim maybe, or like maybe Kim can die, and maybe that's why there's not there. Like I don't know. Like, there's just just. Just something. Something like the boat, you know? But it's a very strong ending overall. Like, it, it's just... My only problem with it is, is that that's the last scene. Like, I, I would prefer to have just one more thing after that. Oh man, okay, so, um, is it too loud by the way? How is it? Okay, I turn, I turn it down, that should be, should be better. Okay, so, um, this is easily the best written game that I've ever seen, ever. Um, like the only thing that probably comes close to it is, is Planescape Torment, I think. Uh, but even that is, is just like, no. Like, Planescape Torment is, is, is more of a... Uh, I, I have to play it again, it's been a long time, but like this this was a lot more creative than Planescape Torment. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think I think this is comfortably the best game that the best written game I've ever played. Um, is it is it the best story? Probably not. Um, <clears throat> best characters, that sort of thing. I, I don't know. Like, there's probably better stories, but um, like the amount of choices that it has and everything are, are really impressive. I really like them. I'd like to play it a few more times to see all the different things and the things the choices you can have. Uh, it, it reacts to uh, many, many, many small choices in, in really unexpected ways. Damn, Chris Avalon, nice. Um, but yeah, it's really impressive. Um, this was amazing. Very, very good. So I, I stand by that it's 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 a it's a dense, staggering work of genius. It's very good. When you say written, you mean the way it's told, right? Not just the way it's told, but also also like okay. So I talk about this in the Witcher video. Surprise, surprise. Hold on, is there a post credits thing? Lizard Blaine shows up again. Mankind, be vigilant. We loved you. Okay, so there's different there's, there's different things that you can mean when you say something is good writing. Um, there's there's story construction, like like how well you plot things. Um, it can even just mean simply simply like just diction. Uh, how you have constructed your prose, like uh, or <clears throat> your characters or your characterization and how and how well those are written. Um, dialogue could also be separated out as well, but I would say that's probably how you're constructing your prose. So uh, a game or a, a a, a, a piece of writing can have really, really bad characters, and it can be really poorly, poorly written in terms of like prose construction. But it can still be a really good story. 
Um, and the opposite is true too. So you can have a book that is a really bad story, but it has really good characters. And the, w the way that it's told is just like, it just has gorgeous paragraphs. You know what I mean? Um, it it's really rare that you're going to get something that hits all, all of them. You know what I mean? Um, so that, that's what you can talk about when you say something has, has good writing. Um, so I would say that Disco Elysium story probably isn't that great. Uh, it's probably around average. It's r amazing for video games, but in terms of the story, um, like it, it's hard with video games because there's all these little side stories too, right? So the side stories are, are, are really good, but the main story is kind of unsatisfying. It's just, oh, it's just some guy that lived on an island. You know what I mean? So maybe th that's supposed to s s represent something I don't understand right now. I need to play it some more. It just feels like there was like this this evil evil god left over of, of, the, of the past, you know, uh, reign that was just spying on everyone for decades and just killing people that he didn't like and judging them. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. And that's a cool idea. I like that. But in terms of the story and setting up of the mystery, uh, it's not very satisfying. So what it was like, m my gut feeling was correct that there, there was, it wasn't a mystery you were meant to solve, you know? It's thematically fitting. No, yeah, it is kind of thematically fitting. I just don't know if it's satisfying, right? So, eh, I don't know. Um, but then there are the parts like, s like setting up, setting up uh the scene with Dolores Day uh and then it, it being Harry's ex-wife and then setting up the phasmid to show up in that moment how all those things kind of kind of fit together um Seinfeld does this really well on, on a small scale if you ever watch uh some of the best episodes of Seinfeld how they will have multiple threads and stories going and then at the end it'll just all come together in these unexpected way and you'll be like whoa what the fuck it's all linked that that's that's the kind of storytelling I really really like and this game did that and I don't know if it's still would have done that if like someone said that if I hadn't slept in that bed I wouldn't have seen that scene with with uh with Dora someone's I, I don't know if the phasmin still shows up if you don't go phasmin hunting I have no idea so like I, I maybe there's some other ones that show up if if you if you um that I missed I have no idea uh like how the doom commercial area was linked to the church like all these little things are interconnected and, and it just comes together to be like um, it's very hard to tell what's side content and what's main, con what's main content in this game. Uh, and that's kind of how like Witcher 1 and 2 are actually, not Witcher 3 though. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it was, so does that count as, as story construction? I would say probably, yeah. So if that's the case, then the story in Disco Elysium is really, really good. But I, I feel like the main, main, main story is, is the big one. And I don't think that's very satisfying. Uh, but yeah, I would say it has, it has great, has great dialogue, uh, great writing. Um, in terms of uh, how it's constructed, like the sentences, they're, they're very, very good. Uh, they're very entertaining. They show a lot of mastery. Uh, I learned a lot of words. Um, uh, the characters, eh, I only really like Kim. The rest of the characters, I guess there were some good ones, but um, I don't know. There weren't that many good characters, so I, I would probably give it less credit on, on, the, on the character stuff. Um, press escape, why press escape? Why press escape? Turn a little bit. Everett and Joyce. See, Everett's barely in it. I, I, Joyce was a decent enough character, but I don't know. They're not really in it. So I guess maybe that's just a flaw of the medium that the characters can't be in it for that much to, to, to show off a bit. Uh, like the uh, standout one for me is, is Kim and, and also Harry, but the real characters, I guess, uh, like are your thoughts, right? Like those are your cast of characters. You had what, how, how what was it? Like, uh, f like, is it, was it 20? Or was it 24? How many how many skills are there? Um, like you you have like all those characters just riding around in your head. Those were those were quite well done. You know what I mean? But you didn't always see them in, in many of the conversations. But that, that was a good part of it. So I don't know. I I would probably give it less points for for great characterization. But mm, I'd have to think about it some more. Maybe it would still get it. But yeah, it, it was fantastic, fantastic game, absolutely fantastic. Uh, not flawless. It has some problems. I can give you some problems right now. Um, it didn't run all that well as a technical problem. I noticed quite a bit of flickering that was going on in some scenes that was a little distracting. But I just eh, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes that don't bother me much at all. Um, most of them I don't really care about, but they should still be fixed. They should just so people don't get tripped up while they're while they're reading them. Um, I think that. Uh, some characters had dialogue choices that went on too long. I think that some of that could have been trimmed down a little bit, you know, says the person that's 
going to release a 12 plus hour video soon, you know, like, but whatever. Um, I feel like that could have been trimmed down a little bit. There were some characters that I was like, oh my God. Um, like the, the clothes system, someone said in chat, thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, the, the clothes system um, is really bad and there should have just been a button that you can just auto optimize it or something. I don't know. Um, I know that people could just not use that if they don't want to. Um, sometimes the rolling felt a little unfair, but I don't know, maybe that's a good thing. Uh, it's also very overwhelming at the beginning, having just all those skills and all these choices, and you're like, oh my god, what the fuck? Um, but then again, they do give you a recommended build at the beginning, right? So, the three of them, so I guess that's fine. We just built our own. Um, what else? There's There was a big one that I can't remember now. It could kind of be slow to get around at some points. They have to patch in holding the mouse button to, to move around and it still doesn't look like it works all that properly. Um, some of the voice acting was a little off. I wish more of it was voice acted, uh, but that's it. I don't know. Um, but like, those none, none of those are big problems. None of those are big problems. Yeah, I really like this game. I thought it was really great. Uh, I don't know where it sits on my list for 2019. Uh, in terms of like story experiences, it's number one for 2019. Really, really good. Uh, Undertale is still better, in my opinion. Uh, but this is a lot denser and a lot more mature than Undertale. But Undertale, I enjoy for for uh, other reasons than this. But like, this is a much more of a grown-up game. I don't know what this game is trying to say about politics, so we spoke about this last time. It's definitely political satire. For sure, it's political satire. And and for me, I, I will read into the satire that it's it's so political that it's apolitical. It's making fun of everyone. It's making fun of, of all ideologies. There's no ideology that can't, comes out of this game looking good. Um, so that's what I read out of it, but maybe someone else will disagree. Oh, I don't like that, that just because I entertained certain thoughts that the game decided that I had said them out loud and, and Kim Kim judged me at the end. Because I don't think we said a single racist thing throughout the whole entire playthrough and Kim thinks that we're racist and that kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Um, like, the, just having those those thoughts and looking at this, that stuff in considerations, I don't know. I also think that sometimes you could want to say a line sarcastically and the game thinks that you're being uh, being genuine about it, but then I guess that's a limit of the medium. Like how we're going to have like a little check mark box next to every single conversation choice. I mean, this sarcastically now double all the ramifications of this. Like that would be bad, but yeah. The game lumps nationalism and racism together in many situations. I got some bad news for you, buddy. I got some bad news for you. Now nah, let's not get into it. The fell building shivers check is very annoying if you have low physique, if you're in a position where you want to continue the story, but you can't. <laughs> that's real. That's real life, though. Nobody knows what you think. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but I feel like maybe there should be a line to say to defend yourself instead of just like in, in the, at the end there. It's like, oh, he's he's a he's a raging communist, and it's like, and then your only line is, yeah, shout out, I'm a communist. It's like, no, no, I'm not a communist. No, Kim, you don't understand. Or K Kim saying, hey, he's a little racist and he hates women. It's like, no, no, I don't. No, I'm not that at all. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of accepted the race theory, even if you didn't do the thought. Yeah, but I didn't ask chat if if getting the thoughts was n no problem. Hmm. Like, we didn't think it through. Maybe chat was wrong, or maybe I'm misremembering. So, did you leave Harry a better man than when, than he was when you found him? Yeah, I think so, yeah. That scene with, with Dora in the dream, that was amazing. That was the best scene in the game. I would say that was probably the best part. And then the, the Phasmid showing up was second best. Um, finding the, the car in the ice was really great. I wasn't really that fond of the church scene. I'm sorry. I know that was hyped up a lot. I saw, I saw people in chat when we were doing it and they were like, here we go. Best scene in the game. And I was like, yeah, it's all right. But eh, I don't know. I really liked the, um, the, the lizard Blaine, um, interludes. Karaoke was pretty good too. And I liked the, the, um, the boat ride over to the island. There were a lot of good moments. Um, yeah, it was good. I liked that everything came together. How much did I miss of side quests and stuff? Did I do pretty much everything or what? Classy interrogation. The the top the top volley uh 
uh, check in class interrogation was really great. Yeah, there's a lot of really good moments. It's going to be hard to, to think of them all. Only missed like 10%. Contact Mike was the best character. Contact Mike was pretty good. You got pretty much anything. Top. Fuck top volley. You messed up with the tribunal. Yeah, we messed that up, but it was okay. We were able to, 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 to roll with it. Okay, so it has been um, over six hours. Uh, I'm absolutely exhausted, and I haven't had anything to eat today. I'm starving. Um, and I think it's going to take at least half an hour for us to do a voting of which of these um, of Disco Elysium portraits are, are the best. So I don't think we can do that right now. Sorry. I think I'm about to, to, to fall over. Um, I think the most recent one is the best, though. I think this one's my favorite. Surprisingly. I like this one. Wait, that's illegal. Next stream is on the 18th, right? Yeah, that's next stream. Next stream is on the 18th. Uh, I'm taking I'm taking a week off. Uh, we might try and do a Q&A stream next Saturday if we can, but um, probably probably not. The reads in the background. Q2 knew. He knew. He was in the know. He was in the know. Thank you so much for doing this for us, Q2. Let us never forget. Never forget. Tell69 says, use 100 bits to say, you said at the beginning of the playthrough, if the game maintains this quality throughout, throughout, I will be really impressed, but I don't think it can, or something very similar. Do you feel like it maintains that quality? Oh, uh, mostly. Mostly, yes. Mostly. Okay, so there were... I have to play it again, but I, I get the impression that there that there are less branching paths than, than I suspected when I first started playing. Um, there's optional stuff for sure, and it reacts to that, but there's less branching, and I thought there was going to be more branching uh, from, from what I saw at the beginning. So mostly, yes, it does. And, and that's great. It's really impressive. Um, but, um, like... I had a thought, and now it's gone. Shit. This deserves a 1 million IIA fund. What, Q2's art? Q2's art does. I played the game twice and the experience are fairly different because the builds and skills that pipe that pipe up tend to be completely different. Yeah. Maybe. I'd have to play it again for sure. To know for sure. Yeah. Q2, that's up to you. If you want to take a million off, we'll take a million off to celebrate. Or you can donate a million to literally nothing. It's up to you, Q2. It's up to you. The choice is yours. Feels like branches out and then collapses back into the final point. Uh, I, I would describe it more as um, maybe I already have. I would describe it as uh, like like ripples. I do support Ayaya, but I won't hold it hostage. That's good enough for me. If you if you support Ayaya, then okay. A million taken off in your honor. There you go. A million gone. Okay, I don't know if we got any uh, rewards or cash-ins today, but uh, I'm too beat to do it right now. So I think I think that's it for me. Joe is so sentimental, so much hate. I actually really am sentimental. 
Not even a joke. At our wilds, daddy? No, not next time, no. Um, we're not starting that just yet. I don't know what we're going to come back with. We'll Maybe we'll do some roguelikes. Um, I don't know what we're going to play. We'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll decide. Uh, uh, probably uh, three hours before the stream starts on the 18th. Yeah. Anyway, see you guys later. Thank you very much for watching me read through Disco Elysium. Sorry for stumbling on some words now and then. And I uh, hope it was enjoyable. And um, if you're watching on, on YouTube, this on YouTube, uh, in the future, uh, I hope that you liked the Witcher video. So, see you guys later. Have a good one. You're done!